Do, do you know what Steve said when he saw that, Carl? Go on. He said, it has captured Carl. Hmm. What do you mean? Well, you just look utterly gormless. <laughs> In the picture, it's, it's captured you brilliantly. <laughs> you know how like a good photographer can do that. You can capture the essence of someone. <laughs> That's good stuff. This is what the phone message he left me Wednesday on my mobile. But I just uh, is chatting about certain things that are going on at the moment. Uh, what he does need to know. Um, oh, Duncan, who mentions is my agent, and you know you you understand a few other things. But this is the sort of message I get from Carl, right? Windsor. Old messages. Alright. Ten past twelve. Wednesday. Um, just getting loads of f***ing people calling me all the time about sh**. Yesterday, DVDs signing for BBC London. I don't work there, but I've been dragged into that. I've got a woman on, uh, leaving a message from Talk TR, going on about, do you, do you want to go and see Pop Idol again? Alright? They're just saying, uh, you, and some listeners can go, so I'm sure you'll love that. I've got Jim Benner wanting you to introduce the tin buckets at the Astoria, so can can you just like let Duncan know that I'm, I'm doing his job whilst he's sat on his ass with his thumb firmly up his ass? Can you let him know that I'm running around like a <laughs> here, sorting shit out for you? All right, see you later. <laughs> Message left. So do you know what I mean? I know. But that's the kind of phone message he's leaving. But that, but, do you remember but, who he was before but, you- But he's even with annoyed that he gets a phone call. I remember he got a phone call for you to do a voiceover and didn't yeah. pass it on. You missed a voiceover. That was yeah. thousands of pounds. No, I did, I did it, pass it on though. I told you. You I did. Said you said someone had phoned. Yeah. That's not good enough. But who's that? Well, she, she didn't say and I didn't ask. But of course she said. She didn't say. Rubbish. So you didn't take the number down? Just when she went, oh, could you tell Steve to call me? And you went, yeah. Yeah, well <laughs> I just thought you'd know her already. I should have known it was a woman, so I should have known. He's having a go, you see. Unbelievable. I don't know how he's come back on me. You're the one who was picking on it. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying. I'm defending. Why is he having a go but at you? He because... never picks on Ricky because he knows you are his bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you know what I mean. The only reason he's got Mondays off is because you're still doing this show. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's scared of you. That's why he's like he has a go at you on the phone, but he always picks on me because he knows you know I'm a pusher. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> he's scared of you. I can't believe- I don't know how it works. Is that true? Steve, I'm always sorting you out. I look after you. Mm. Sort you out with tickets. I'm not saying you don't, but I, I, I've got you to do. Why are you thinking What do you mean you're sorting out tickets in lager? What's this? Right, whenever you want tickets. Yeah. yeah it's all right. I don't want to use this as like moaning time and that, because yeah. I don't like to moan. I'm busy and that, right? <laughs> I've, sorted, I've sorted you out tickets for gigs. Yeah. Right? Well, somebody doesn't even turn up to. Yeah. yeah we won't even go on about that. Yeah. Right? Lager. He was sorting out the cure. He complained it was boring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was that big drum of lager that yeah. you had, and you said, oh, put that in your room for me. Yeah. Because I don't want to carry it home. Right? I'm lazy. So I said, all right, then I'll put it in my room. It goes missing, it gets nicked. Mm. Then you have a go at me because it got nicked. Yeah. I get you another one. You make me carry it around town for you for half an hour, then you say, oh, I can't be bothered taking it home. Can you take it back to work for me? Yeah. Yeah. But interestingly, this is like a year ago, so it's, it's, obviously, it's still- Still pressing on you. Oh, hang it? on. And I forgot the one when we had an argument over 50p. <laughs> yes, when I went out for a coffee. You didn't want to give me 50p back that you owed me. Oh, uh, that was the d same day you've given him about 40 quid worth of lager. But, see, this is my problem. This was my point at the time. It's not the 50 50p in terms of money is not what's important. The fact that you think you don't have to give me money back because it's only 50p, that was the point at stake. Mm -hmm. I, it's me who makes a decision, oh, don't worry about the 50p. Not you. It's only 50p. I'm not going to give it to you. Do you know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. got to be rules. Otherwise, it's chaos, Carl. Come on, mate. All right. I don't want to fall out about no, it. No, it's not right. <laughs> <way. laughs> should we kiss and make up? Do you want that? Do you want oh, that? It's all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, should yeah. we play a little record and come back to this? Because I can't believe it started with you slagging him off, Rick, and I've ended up as the monster. I know. Bit of Ariam. Yeah. It's best if if you leave it. Well, we're not going to leave it. We're going to get you on the poster. Yeah. I mainly have to see myself on videotape this morning. That's oh, I, I showed him, um, um, I, you know, uh, the animal show I did, the show. Yes. I'm doing a video and I did behind the scenes footage and I've got a, uh, you've seen it, haven't you? I feel a little bit of Carl on there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's lovely. He can't believe it. He said, is it playing slow? <laughs> He's so slow and I come into the office going, all right. It, that's how you I'm talk. I'm as well. I look like I'm looking into a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy with it. I just think that if we're willing to 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 uh, <laughs> if Ricky's willing to use his celebrity profile for the sake of the show, yeah. I'm willing to look like a, you know, let's say a fairly handsome kind of cool customer. I think at least the very least, Carl, is that you appear on there as well. Yeah. You could dress. Are up you smart. are you worried that you'll look the worst out of all three of us? Uh, who am I standing next to? Am I next to Steve? 
<laughs> I'm, pr I'm fairly confident. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way it's so predictable. You pull the string because you know what it is. It's not <laughs> you pull the string. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Still arguing. This time about having help from me and my dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not. I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type of thing where we're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending. We're not we pretending. Are you are arguing. Yeah, I know. I know what people will think we're messing about. Oh, right? that wouldn't have thought so. We just need to. We can talk about it later. Sort it out. Hmm. Yeah. It's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not stressed. But and he doesn't really understand that you know. You know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week. He's just got one job. Yeah, but and we sort of rely on people getting messages to us, you know, as soon as they get them, you know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Whatever. Don't get all moored in again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah, this is annoying. Guess what? Think of this, you little slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that's so in his arse, that's so in his arse. Right, apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We what? should point out that Carl is, uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide parting. <laughs> 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 Um, oh, you know, um, um rubbish. that's rubbish, Carl, those places. You, you, I'm ashamed to give them away. Carl, you know our mate Johnny, he's a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Do you remember, um, he bought, um, uh, the Doctor Who magazine, um, and, uh, he went, um, to the toilet and Steve got post notes and put geek on every page. And Johnny opened it on the tube, right, and it had geek and everything. And Johnny bought in the, the new Doctor Who magazine, I think this week's or this month's, right? And they've, they've, um, they've done the perfect Doctor Who fan. Right, what the geek is right, and it looks exactly like Steve. All right, don't have a go, really. It does, and, he went, and I, I've, it, I, I'm going to try and put it on the website. It's amazing. It's got your hair, glasses. It stands like you. It's sort of dressed like you, and it's only. And it's, it's hilarious, and he's, he's, he was. I mean, I'm insulting you now. It's, it sounds like an insult, but if you'd see it, you'd laugh. Player. Well, Rockbusters, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Just a little um, bit annoyed. Just uh, three clues. Uh, <laughs> Energy in this show, aren't we? Well, I'm just, I can't get over that insult. I'm just a little no, 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 I tell you, you're gonna go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably gonna see some bands that are gonna make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Go on. There's only one person to book. Go on. Me. If, if you, you know, you have perhaps yeah. something to do, uh, um, uh, cause I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a top well, DJ I, I, on the radio, I, but where my, where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club environment. Well, you told me you were DJing, uh, I didn't go to it, uh, DJing at a party and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring. And I loved it. Uh, Carl just, just said he was there and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl, they because you know very well that when I was put, I'd put on a tune, they'd cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night, they would have done that whatever you put on. That's nonsense! No, they, they, said they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they weren't having a good time. It was your party. It was- it was alright, but they weren't going mental like you're- you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. No, when I put on the no. proclaimers, they could not believe their luck. No. No. <laughs> they- they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> was it good though? Was he- were they really- what were they doing? Were they dan- they were dancing, were they? It's dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going, you know, more and all that at the end. What's about- Oh, Take wow. on me came on. They, the the big, the big cheer went up. Oh, I don't know to believe. I've been there, done it, Steve. I've, I've been the DJ as well. I don't oh, know. it might be jealousy. It I might think be like professional a, jealousy there. Like a, yeah. I think it's because my fortunes are on the up, and these are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had uh, people making, making music, music his happen. DJ outfit. Didn't happen. Did didn't. I did enough? I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment, <laughs> and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> It's- it's one of them things, innit, like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like, the elephant man or whatever. <laughs> yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny, do you remember the f- the, 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 the first- Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, <laughs> then you get used to how people look, and you don't- <laughs> 
No, no. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. I'm gonna, you can't just play a record. No, but- Cause that's- <laughs> Who's the winner? The winner, very lucky, Sandra Cassidy of Leon C. She gets all those great prizes. You know, we've actually had people emailing in saying, this is the worst Rockbusters ever, because it was too easy, it was boring. Oh. Well, uh, 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 this is just, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, dear. Other people saying, um, it what? really has run its course. Some people genuinely agree oh, with Ricky. Oh, Carl, this must hurt, mate. Stinging attacks on you. Um, some people just slagging you off generally, saying that you, oh, win, you whinge all the time. Looks like Steve like. was right when he, um, sort of like, poo-poos your ideas. So... When he, uh, when he wheeze on your so bonfire. Other, someone else, I like, swear to God, someone else emailed in and said, don't bother sending me the prizes, take them to a charity shop, or pawn them, give me the money, I'd rather have it. So I don't know what to say, Carl, I just wonder if it really has run its course now. Alright, well, well, we'll see what you come up with next, where you well. don't. Let's, <laughs> see, let's see what you do, let's see what you come in with. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. five to one. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you'll be popping in with an other hip-hop track yeah. full, of, uh, yeah. full of effing and jeffing. Well, no, no, I, won't, I won't bring it into you, I'll do it myself at home, because obviously that makes it easier. Oh, dear. Obviously you can't cope. Oh, dear. Are you actually going to be here next week, or are you still going to be in Cornwall? No, you see, there again, I'll be back, I'll be back in time. Oh. And in the in the week, when I go to, you know, Cornwall to see the monkey world, Yeah, you're two-day past the monkey world. That still works. Yeah. <laughs> still work. What? Thought what you're going to interview some of the monkeys. What? Get I some love stories. That. I love that. You, you were going. Could a monkey live without bones? And so I'm going. Carl, shut the. F please, just look at the monkeys and eat your ice cream. And that's work, is it? What? Um. Anyway, I just thought I wanted to say really. Here's tragic. What's tragic? What, what did you want me to say about that song? Just your opinion. Your own opinion was fine. It's, it's in fact, in fact, your own opinion is better than anything I could really hope for. W without doubt. Whenever I ask you a question- You constantly surprise us. Yeah. You're- it's- it's wonderful. So only ever- carry on telling the truth, carry on saying exactly what's on your mind, and I think this could become a great- You're like a man who was frozen <laughs> in Victorian era, <laughs> and has been reawoken, and he's kind of discovering the world. Some <laughs> things make sense, other things yeah. don't. It's beautiful. It's As opposed to one that was made in a castle in Victorian times, like <laughs> Steve. Oh, that's just- Oh, I've joined in with Carl. I can't believe it. I'm oh, sorry. Side. Yeah, no, it was- it was this though, wasn't it? Mm. I'm really sorry. Should we play a record? I mean, I know what Steve's like, he is tight, right? He's, well. he's, he, no, he is. <laughs> and you know that, don't you, Steve? Financially, I mean, I'm not, you mean? Well, no, I mean, just the way you are, you're very sure. sort of, you know, you, you're not- I'm careful. You're not wasteful with your money. I'm careful. <laughs> no, I'm not wasteful, absolutely right. No, no, but to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. No, no, no. no. Look come after on, the pennies, the pains will take care of themselves. Alright? Simple to remember, good advice. Yeah, Alright? but the thing is, right, um, I know that I take the mickey out of you for like, you know, the way you look and stuff. Sure. Right? Well, I'm right back at you. But the thing is, you can't help that. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'll tell you something that women don't like. Sure. And it's fellas who are tight with the money. Sure. I'm not- I'm not frugal with money with ladies, I'm frugal with money with you. <laughs> well, I've I have no reason to splash money out on you. I've never seen you splash money out. Well, you've never been out with me. Have you ever, have, Steve? Have you ever splashed out on a lady? Um, no, but I hope to one day. <laughs> the right lady. <laughs> Play a record. See, strokes someday. Now it was a better, better choice wouldn't it, to start off with. Um, oh hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. Steve Mitchell. No, come on, let's get my name right from now on. That- that novelty's worn off. What is it? Is it- Steve Merchant. Oh yeah, they- yeah. that's the wrong one, isn't it, Mitchell? The Guardian got it wrong, it's Steve Merchant. And the more I say Mitchell, the more people are thinking- Exactly, might be it Mitchell. might be Mitchell. Oh god, sorry Dave. Um, <laughs> but Carl wanted to start off with the stereophonics. Oh, loser. Cause it was a newer track. And Carl now, we've made him what he is, he was nothing when Nobody. we found him. He's right? like work experience. And now he's going, oh, so we should start off with the stereophonics. I'm going- Trying oh, to tell you what to do, right? If I want anyone's opinion, I don't. <laughs> Basically. But you'd probably come to me, I imagine. Would you? <laughs> before, I'd be the first person. Before Carl, yeah. I'd consult you, Steve. Thank so you. just keep it. Just because he uh, was in the was it pill yeah, his mobile music. Disguise, I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I literally can't wait. Should we do it now? Well, I'm tempted to save it because I just want to mention to people um, that uh, they should be very excited because uh, it's going to be Carl's special night tomorrow. You excited, Carl? Oh yeah. Oh, this is yeah. Um, uh, me and Steve because we were nominated. We get a guest. For the BAFTA uh, Awards. Um, and it's, uh, it doesn't say guest, it actually says, um, you know, uh, partner. So I'm taking, um, my partner. And, uh, Steve's taking Carl. Yeah. But what Carl doesn't realise is, 
you will have to pretend you're his partner, otherwise you yeah. wouldn't be we'll able to- Yeah, we'll have to hold says, hands when we've got the red carpet. Is this your- is this really your partner? It's not just a guest. They have That's to- That's how it is. Neither we go in like that or we can't get in. You have to- you just have to be with him when you go up there. I mean, you have to- uh, d does yeah, he have to- you should, we should hold hands, but I think what we should do is just to make sure that there's nothing at all that, like, it's gonna go wrong, we should just do a little kiss. Just like, and just or, when we or, get or be the seen sort of like cheek to cheek, just to show them that, yeah. you know, you're not- he's, he's Like not Elton just getting, John and David He's not just Finnish. getting his mates in for a free meal, you are actually partners. No, I'm not- I'm not up for that. Why not? Well- Because we know we're not actually gay. No, but- but yeah, but- So you, it's not a problem. You've come out of it looking quite good because you've got a good looking fella. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm- I meant to look like, you know, I mean- I'm not gay, <laughs> but if I was, I don't think I'd go for your thing. Oh, he's done you, Steve! It's turned on you again! I cannot believe- We were trying to get in- Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I have got the cream of London's totty <laughs> phoning me up, trying to get an invite to the BAFTAs, yeah. right? We have very graciously asked you if you'd like to come along. Well, that yeah. worries me even more. Like you've got women calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Carl, I can't choose between them. If I let one of them down, I'm gonna- they're gonna destroy yeah. them. Is they, yeah. they'll, they'll be- they'll be ruined, their yeah. lives will be ruined. It's better for me to take you and not, you know, ruin the lives of any of those poor when, women. When- when he told them he was taking yeah. you, it was like a scene from Graceland. There was just like- There was women, weeping. They were crying, like- It was horrible. Hundreds of them. And really? he just went- and I got he, upset. He just had to say, look, just chill out, bitches, didn't you? I did, I just said, you know, you're all my hoes, but yeah. I can't choose between you. So I'm taking Carl. So I'm taking Carl. You know he gets- he could get you a discount frocks. No, I had a letter from the people that- there's a- no, no, listen, Carl, there's an organisation that sponsors the BAFTA Awards yeah. in terms of clothes and fashion. They sent me a letter, they said your partner, they've not specified the sex, they've said your partner can come along and choose yeah. an outfit. Now, I suspect, by the look of it, it is a woman's outfitters. I'm thinking we could get you a lovely trouser suit. Well, you have it a may look suit, feminine, right, but I think people will be fooled. It'd just, be, it'd just be a little bit roomy in the hip and That'd probably now on the shoulders, but you're a bit skinny. Why don't you take it? Because it's a lot of an insult. And maybe just some pearls as well. <laughs> Be lovely. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't well, you? Uh, I haven't got anything sorted to wear yet. See, you're slagging me off. You're likely to be end up going in a tracksuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, I don't know what we we're talking about there. So we've got the film thing. Going. <laughs> I don't know what we were talking the about. Film. What were you talking about earlier about glasses as well and Steve taking his glasses off? What was that? What are you saying that in front of him now for? Was it? Oh, was it an insult? It wasn't really an insult. Carl, what were you up to? No, what was it? I genuinely don't remember. I I genuinely don't remember. I just- right, Steve, I'm not- I'm not having a go, right? Um, just saying our people, um, it's a bit weird that you've got glasses because you've got a good pair of eyes on you, right? <laughs> that- that isn't an insult. What were you talking about, though? What was it- why did it- It was the fact that people who wear glasses always look a bit weird without them on. It's- it's like, you know, they- they were- they should- they should wear glasses. I- okay, why did we get round to this? What was we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that was. It sounds like an insult, even it wasn't no, intended as well. it wasn't. It, it sounds wasn't. like an insult, Carl. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, it wasn't. I should be like to punch you every time you insult me, though. No, but I'm not. Oh, I'm doing go. it. I'm gonna give you a dead arm. Look, Steve, it's, it's you. Like an you always even if it wasn't, you intended it to be one. Well, what you... <gasps> oh! That was real. Play a record. Yeah, but it's that's mad. Every time you insult me from that's now. mad. Oh, is this the cardigans? Great. Brilliant. I didn't even say anything. It makes me feel better, it makes me feel better. I can enjoy the rest of the show. You went in, there was George Best, one of your footballing heroes was there, a that load of other good. big names. We- you sat there in a prime position, you came backstage with a load of other big names. Hey, you had a lovely bit of grub. You were filming this thing for the DVD we were making. That's you, that's you, a cameraman on our DVD. And yet you think, oh, and you- now you look grumpy because you had a couple of pints and you- Oh, I can't believe so it. So tell us why you didn't enjoy it, because the ceremony, what didn't you enjoy about that? Fuck. It was interminable, wasn't it? Far too long. Wasn't it awful? Three so boring. I'm hours. I'm sorry. I thought you were gonna say something. Really? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Three hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose for you two, at least, you know, you were gonna get something. Sure. Yeah. But, <laughs> with me, it's like, I mean, I've never graduated or anything, so. Have you not? I'm trying to think of a situation. Basically, I sat there for three hours knowing that I'm not gonna get anything out of the night. Yeah. Right? Now- <laughs> <laughs> no Did you- sorry, me. when we invited you and you said yes, did you think you were up for an award? No. <laughs> I thought- I thought we were gonna be sat round tables, having a nice yeah. bit of food- Yeah. Whilst people are going up there winning awards. Yeah. But three hours of the same thing over and over again, I mean- 
if a film's three hours in the cinema, yeah. you go, well, it's long, but, you know, I wonder how it's gonna end. Yeah. But this was just like the same <laughs> thing over <laughs> and over again. Some guy going up, thanks a lot, cheers for the bit of brass. And then going down, sitting down, the same thing over and over again. Mm. I wouldn't, I, honestly, right? I, I'd say it was one of the worst things <laughs> I've ever had to do. Cry, <laughs> Lincoln. No, we enjoyed the night afterwards <laughs> when we did have a bit of lamb and the nice bit of veg and that. That was yeah. all right. And I went home and I was happy. And I got the the little freebie bag that you're talking about that we gave yeah. away. Yeah. Um, which wasn't much good stuff in it. Oh, oh all right. Christ. No, what, Suzanne, what would you have done right. on that Saturday night? Suzanne What would you have done if- or the Sunday night, rather, what would you have done had you been at home? I would have stayed in with Suzanne, right, watching telly, having a nice bit of pâté on toast or something, cup of tea, watching 24, but instead I had to buy an expensive suit so I didn't show you up, <laughs> right? Jesus, <laughs> Yeah. And what did you spend on your suit? Well, in total, right, because, you know, the shoes and the suit and the shirt and the tie, it was about 600 quid. <laughs> that's the most expensive evening ever. And that's, well, that's what I'm saying to you. And the daft thing is, it's dark in there. I don't know why you've got to wear a nice suit. You can't, you can't wear a track suit, for it's goodness sake. It's dark in there. Oh, oh, oh. No, just the shirt and that. It doesn't oh. make you a better person wearing a suit. No, it doesn't you know make you a better I mean? person, no. We're not uh, claiming it made you a better person. No, well, that annoyed me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was an experience, innit? That's why I went, because you think, if I didn't go, if I would have said to you when you invited me, no, Steve, I don't want to go, then I would have never known, right? Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've, uh, that, that's my sort of thing in life, right? Yeah. If yeah. something comes up, you should take it, even if you're not gonna like it, it's a bit of an experience. Right. Do you know what he said to me? I phoned him up because we had to meet up, yeah. and obviously he had to pose as my, uh, gay lover. Yeah. Get in, right? Yeah. He phoned me, well, what do you said something to me like, I bought a suit, I'm looking good. He said, I'm looking good. People will think, how on earth did he end up with that good looking guy? <laughs> so he got into the yeah. role. That was what he said getting, to me. He started getting into it. Such an insult. Fire record. Oh, okay, dear. So I'll just go back to insults briefly. Go on, You know, goofy. saying. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I, uh, see, that's- Goofy, that's no, not No, 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 because that's- that's what he said, it's in my head, I, What I, do you mean he said no, that? When did he no, say that? No, no, I mean- When did you call me Goofy? No, he didn't. I he said about what's in my head. Hey, no, when it's- Come on. come off it, don't what, start- Who's calling me Goofy? No. I'm not even Goofy. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No, yeah, but you can sort your Lanky. account, I can't. What yeah. do you mean I can- how can I sort my lookout? I'm not even Goofy, you've that's got, not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just needs sorting out a bit. I can't help it if- if me hair's not good. It- do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. I'd like to rent you out to people. See me, I'm different. <laughs> I would happily leave him now in the bottom of the cupboard. Mm. Until quiz With the scale electrics. <laughs> Until the old pub quiz night, <laughs> when there's no one else who will have you on the team, sure. and oh, suddenly you want to be your best mate. Done him again! Huh? Ma yeah, where's his mum and dad then, Carl? Mm. Yeah? In yeah. Bristol. Yeah! Me and Steve were having a little meeting yesterday over lunch about, you know, planning stuff for the show, and, uh, Gary Kemp came up to me, started having a little chat about old times, and, uh, I went, oh yeah. As he went away, Steve said, right, think of this, he said, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, Remember that sentence, don't take this the wrong way. So there's a right way and a wrong way I could have taken this comment. He went, nodded to sort of Gary Kemp and went, he's aged better than you. I went, well how could I take that the wrong way? Yeah, it's uh, not offensive. No. Well the, the point is this, he, he does, because he didn't know me twenty years ago, so he's actually saying, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, he looks better than you do. Yeah, well he does. But why say that, Carl? What? Did you, did you really say that? Yeah, although, can I just get, just backtracking for a second, I love the fact you said you bumped into Gary Kemp and you reminisced about old times. What old times did you share with Gary Kemp? Well, no, Kemp? he came up and said, did we drop the pops together? I went, no, I did razzmatazz. I said, oh, we did razzmatazz. I think he was thinking, had he ever met me before? But he, he, he hadn't, because we hadn't, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 And, uh. But if you had to make an objective analysis, I, you know, I wouldn't. I think that's out of order. Sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, you're always slagging me off, but apparently no, you, you can't well, well, make a value judgment on something else. No. Oh, what? Well, because you're, you know, you're morally all over the place. You don't know, you, you know, oh, you don't know where you're coming or going. Yeah. Leave it. Sure. You should hear what I say about you behind your back. So, are you? Would you say you're better looking now than you were, or <laughs> than I'm what? W would you say you're better looking now than you were than I was when? Well, like, like you know, have you aged well? Yes. You've aged well. Yeah, I've kept my looks. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bit of dando. Bit of dando. This would be lovely. Yeah. Hello, welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with Guardian Unlimited, back where it all started, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello, and of course, Carl Pilkington. All right.
the internet phenomenon that is Carl Pilkington. Ah, now ah, this could be interesting. That, now that noise, do you, you want to explain, Steve? I will. I've just sent a text to this number that some of you may have heard of, 63336. Now apparently this is a number you can uh, send a text to and it will answer any question that you have for it. And in the past, for instance, I sent it um, quite some quite profound questions. I once asked it, um, should they have dropped the second bomb on Nagasaki? And it had a very thoughtful answer. So we've sent it a question, perhaps equally thoughtful. Carl Pilkington believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? Now, we sent that because this is the Halloween special. These podcasts are, are three one-off free specials, and they're free because we want to thank people who, uh, who paid um, for, the, for the audio books we did, the, uh, the last two series. So thank you for that. I've just bought a, a flat in New York, and Steve's just bought a lovely BMW. Mercedes. Oh, is it a Mercedes? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't dumb, seen yeah. it yet. Yeah. Carl's have his kitchen done and his boiler replaced. He's still not happy. But, um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, the back catalogue is still available um, in audio books on iTunes, but these are three free ones. Anyway, the question we asked, 6336, Carl Pilkinson believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? And this is the response. Unusually, producer Carl Pilkington is both an idiot and a comic genius. His humour is not to everyone's taste, however. That's <laughs> amazing. That's the response. But it's curious because it doesn't really answer our question about ghosts. Send them, do you believe in ghosts? Okay. This is the Halloween special, of course. That's why we're talking about ghosts. Carl, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen, like, a proper proper ghost. So why do you believe in something that uh, there's no evidence for? Yeah, you but what, what, why are we here then? If, if it is just sort of, you're born, right? And when, I mean, we are useless, at least other creatures, when they're born. Well, you speak for yourself. No, but they're born, other creatures are born to do a job, aren't they? When a bee's born, you know what that's going to be doing. It hasn't got any <laughs> options. That's got a job to do. And it does that job and it dies and the next one comes along. Oh. We asked it, do you believe in ghosts? The existence of ghosts is not proven. Many experiments have claimed to identify ghosts, but none have been scientifically sound. Excellent. See, yeah, that, that, that's that, just, that's but that, but that, that's a sensible, intelligent, logical, thoughtful answer. Weird things have happened to me when I uh, mm. was living at home and I uh, was in bed one Where night. Where do you live now? No, but I was at my first home. Your mm. parents? Yeah, my mum and dad's. Mm. So I'm in bed and uh, I'm lying there. And you know you get that sense of like, uh, oh there's something going on. Right. And uh, I sort of look over my quilt and there's nothing there, thinking it's weird that. So uh, turn me back on it, I'm thinking I don't want to know. If there is something there I don't want to know. Right? <laughs> so I'm turning me back on it, but then there's like a really high pitched noise, right? Sort of the hairs on my back are like going up a bit. And I'm like, oh, I don't like this, and it's the, the high pitched noise. Yeah, the hairy back, even as a kid. No, but you know, everyone's got little I hairs on them, aren't they? Everyone's got little tiny hairs on them and mm. stuff. And uh, and I thought, oh, I can't stand this. And, and I turned around, put the light on, legged it downstairs. Mm. Right? And my mum's saying, What are you doing? I'm going, Oh, I don't know, there's something up there. So she said, All right, then watch the telly. So I stayed up for a bit, mm. uh, watching the telly, went back to bed, the high pitched noise had gone, went to sleep, get up the next day. Charlie from next door comes round, he goes, Hilda's dead, mm -hmm. right? And uh, my dad said, oh, when did that happen? He said, last night at quarter to eleven. Right. That's, that's when I was in bed. So? What, what are you telling me for? Because it's weird, isn't it? It's that thing of... Uh, Would, what, what do you think would be weirder that uh, no one ever died at quarter to eleven when you were in bed? No, but that's when all the weirdness was going on. That's when the tone was happening, my back was getting itchy and stuff. And Coincidence. And I went down and watched telly, went back up, gone and that, but that's when her spirit had sort of... No, no. Ah, okay, right, interesting. No, this, this is where we get into the facts. So Hilda's spirit... Had left was whizzing round, whizzing round my yeah. bedroom, because my bedroom was right next door to theirs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm just saying, that's, that's one. Why, that's did they, why do they whiz round? When they, when they die. Why do spirits whiz round when they die? Because they're going, where am I going? Are they? And they're whizzing round, aren't they? Am I going down? Am I going up? No, no, it's Carl. Oh, no, no, but I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, but it's, n it's not going to be easy, is it? How do you think it works? It doesn't work. But once again, it's not proof of anything, Carl. Mm. Beyond the fact that you were a child, in bed. Why did your dad ask what time she died? 
No, it, it just sort of, you know, what do you say to someone when it's it's awkward, isn't it? When someone gives you bad news, so you just think, well, what can I ask? Oh, oh, what, 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 what time did that happen? Sorry? No, just, what, you just go, oh, Exactly what, what time did you die? Uh, my, no, wife, my wife passed away. Yeah, what, what time exactly? <laughs> no, not exactly. He just said, oh, oh that's bad. When did that happen? Right. What mm. time? And he said, well, thanks for asking. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. I remember what say? What did they say last night? Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Convenient, aren't they, all these it stories? Is, or is it, or, yeah, I mean, it's either that's exactly what happened, Rick, or he's, he's misremembering the, the yeah. actual I don't, I don't, I don't know which one <laughs> to plump for. But, I'll tell you this, though. Go on. You know, if we're talking about ghosts and that. Yeah. Mm. Now, Ilda. Yeah. Uh, choose your bog standard old woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I hope that's on the gravestone. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> no, did you, just, did you do the eulogy? No, you know. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> you, you what can we say about Ilda? <laughs> Bog standard old woman. Right, there's sandwiches at the bar. <laughs> That's the most insulting thing you could ever say. There's nothing. Let's just think about Hilda that lived her life. <laughs> Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Hilda. Who died at quarter to eleven specifically. And was a bog standard old woman. <laughs> Are we burning or burying? But anyway, but she lived to be quite old. Mm. Which annoyed you. And but yeah, no, in but, a bog standard way. But this is what I was saying about us all living too long and stuff. Mm. It just, it just makes it worse when it does come to us being a ghost. I don't know what you're talking about again. That sentence made no sense. Just, if you are gonna be haunted, right, say, I know you're gonna say, well, I don't believe in them, so I'm not worried, so don't be going on about it. Mm. But say, like, you know, your new place that you've bought, you move in, and you go to bed, and there's something moving about the room. Mm. You see it, mm. it's a ghost. Oh, no. Okay, no, let, let's, for the sake More of More likely, a Siamese cat called Ollie. No, because that's probably got its own room, on it? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, would you prefer to have an old person moving about looking at you, or just a young person. I'd prefer a youngish person who looks normal and is sort of floating about and you go, all right. That, do that looks normal, floating about. No, but, but an old woman would really scare me. Some ghosts are always gonna have a bad reputation because they look scary because they're old. So that's- You talk absolute shit. That's all I'm saying, so- Can you believe going... we ever charged for this? No, but look- <laughs> If, if we are going into another life, right, after this, Which we're not we move yet. on to another life, yeah. we're not gonna move on. That land, say if it is like another world, where we go and we plough fields and we grow crop- it, crop- Croppage. We grow crop. Crops. Uh, crops, if you want. Yeah, um, well I would like to use the English language. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's too much fruit about, so just a crop, just something we need too to get back. Too much fruit about. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. That's so we grow some crop. Yeah. yeah. So you grow your crop, and uh, now if we're all going into that other land or world or universe, mm. old, who's going to do the cropping? <laughs> 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 oh God! Oh, you! I, I've never heard so much crop in my life. <laughs> it's a load of old crop. I, I had to go for a an ultrasound, right? Isn't that what you do if you're pregnant? Yeah, but the the do you know I've had. Kidney stones. Are you expecting? That we talked about like it in, the, in the other podcast and that that we've done, right? Uh, I've had a kidney stone. I don't want to go on about it. Uh, but it hurt. It's painful and that. Well, you are going on about it. Yeah, yeah and there was no, nothing. No, but I'm just saying. It's routine. Don't worry about it's it. It's not routine. Well, uh, well, why do they have to keep going back? Then? Why do they have to keep going back? You're, you're yeah. questioning me. You're getting into a routine. Out. Keep going back. It's better than working it. You don't want to have to you know, the sell the book. No, no. Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? I don't know. I just say that we've got a book out, right? The World of Carl Pilkington. It's, it's, it's out now. When he goes on holiday, the first week, right? Uh, he, he's in and out of hospital. He's doing no good. He's got to go in again. He goes away with his family like twice a year. Goes away with Suzanne's family twice a year. Yeah. He's now said he doesn't want to do any press for it because it's boring or he doesn't want to. Why don't you, why don't you plug in the book? Well, I mean, if, you, if you're an author, you've got to put, get behind I've it. bought books without hearing someone telling me to buy stuff. No, you're, you la buy you're stuff. lazy. You're no, lazy. I'm, I'm not lazy. It's just that I'm sick and tired of putting telly on or the radio and having people telling me, oh, you've got to buy this, you've got to buy that. No, I don't have to do anything. I'll have a look myself when I'm in a bookshop. Let them just find it. But there are hundreds and thousands of books, Carl. They may not find it. Well, just You're trying to look. direct them towards it. I'm, I don't want to direct them to it. I just, you know, if you come across it. But most why of have the you books... put all this work into this book? All these illustrations you've done in extra I material. Because I enjoyed it for me. Right, but you don't want anyone to read it. Yeah, so why just put it in a drawer? They will read it. They'll they'll find it. People will find it. It's in the shop, isn't it? 
I'm always finding little books on different things and what have you. Yeah, you don't read them. You read the first couple of lines and you get it wrong. What, you know, it, it- So I went back, right, and I had the, uh, the ultrasound thing where they, they're looking to see what else is in there. Mm. Uh, and, uh, when I was in the waiting room, there was a woman there. I reckon she was about 98. <laughs> <laughs> now, why, why are they rooting around in her? To see what's up with her, just let her let her die. Do you know what I mean? If she's not in any Jesus. pain, no, no. All Such I'm saying, I'm just saying, how long does she want to be around? And the, the the problem is, she went off. Right, I was sat in the waiting room. She went off into the little cubicle to put her uh, a gown on, and because she's old, she can't bend her arms and that. So she came out with it all open <laughs> on the back, <laughs> and it was horrible. It looked like like a a chicken that hasn't been looked after, right? <laughs> it was all leathery skin and that, right? Now the thing <coughs> is, it's all very well keeping people alive, but the surroundings of the body isn't meant to be lasting that long, is it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? The actual skin of, of a body, it's all very well keeping the heart going, checking the kidneys and all that, but we're not meant to be around this length of time. Yet we are, we're messing with it. Yeah. Just do the gown up. You never do, you never get you never see insects or anything like that that look old. You don't go, look at the state of that. Because <laughs> they live about four weeks! Yeah, but maybe that's the way it's meant to be. In the same way, we maybe we were only meant to live to be 40. But why did you go in for your operation then? Why didn't you just think, well, this is it, about the time. If they're looking after an old woman who's about 98, I'm having a go. <laughs> well, Cause of course. Because you want to live on. She, she might have been figure. flirting with you. No, she was... Keeping it open. Just so you can have a little look. But I'm just saying, is that right? Is it right that they are going in there rooting around and stuff? I didn't like it. I didn't like having it done. You know, I don't like going to the hospital and stuff and the doctors and all that. And she was pushing the uh, the thing down, and she said, "Oh, you can have a look if you want." So what? Well, down where? On on my kidney. She was pushing like this little scanner thing. Oh right. She was going to have a look, I was going, I don't want to have a look. She's going, what's up with you? I said, I don't want to see me inside. Did they, have a did they put a tube down the Indian up? Yeah, they did all that. We've talked about that in the, in the other... But you were unconscious, weren't you? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? If you know it's going on, it still bothers you. It's because you're asleep. Well, not really, no. What do you mean? Well, why does it bother you if you're asleep? Well, that's like saying, oh, I woke up and the house was robbed. Oh, it doesn't matter, you're asleep. Well, no, it's but... It's still going to bother you, isn't it? <laughs> but you knew it was happening and you, you did it willingly. What? It's not pleasant to go in and be made to go unconscious. That's the unpleasant bit, isn't it? And the uh, pain. Well, and no, it's more it, the idea of it, isn't it? That's why, you know, doctors telling you everything they're doing. It's like, don't tell me. You know what you're doing. Just do it. I'm well, not yeah, going to have so a go at it. You know, it's not like DIY people coming around and going, oh, well, what you should have done there is, and you can go, oh, I'll have a go at that next time on my own without calling you out. Forget kidney stones again. I'm not going to go, oh, I've had it done before. I know what to do. I'll stick it up there. Doesn't happen, does it? But I can't, what was the saying? So anyway, <laughs> so she, she was pushing the, the scanner over yeah. me kidneys and stuff. Yeah. Now, it was weird with her because at no point did she make eye contact with me. Well, I don't understand what that means. Was she meant to wink and go, your kidneys are fucked? <laughs> no, yeah. but it's, ju it's just weird that she probably spends her days looking inside people more than she does talking to people. I just thought it was odd that she, that's, that's how she sees people. When she looks at people, she probably sees kidneys. What, the, this doctor? The woman doctor. The well, doctor? Uh, yeah. Right. So, what you're saying is, the strange thing is that she often spends more time looking in people, because she's a doctor, than chatting to them. Yeah. And I is just... it weird that Jonathan Ross is the other way around? Because he's a chat show host. He spends more time talking to people than looking inside them. No, but even when I was asking... Because he's got a different job. <laughs> when I was asking her questions, saying, uh, you know, does it look all right? Uh, what's it doing? Is it moving about? You know, asking her questions about my kidney. She could have quite easily just turned around and, and give me a bit of eye contact. But she, she was, say, looking, she was looking, I'm but but she I'm was at looking at the screen in order to answer your questions. Yeah, she's at work. She's doing something. No, but just- If she was here now going, Carl, what are you doing with that microphone? You'd go, shut the fuck up. I'm doing a podcast. Did she run this scanner over your head? <laughs> <laughs> and if so, did she find anything? <laughs> We'd like to try and educate Carl, Rick, as, you know, as we have done since we've known him really, and mm. he doesn't really seem to absorb any information. No. And, um, and I, I was asked recently, when I was going back to Bristol, if I would come and talk to a classroom of school children. Oh, right. 
you know, just talking about careers and particularly my career. And uh, I went down there. It was in Bristol. It was an inner city school, quite rough area. You're a son of Bristol. You're uh, exactly. They love me you're down a there, celebrated right? son of Bristol. You've done. You're a Golden Globe winning uh, person who's returned to the homeland. It annoys me when I go down there that I'm not met as I get off the train like the Beatles used to be when they came back from America. By you know? a mayor and a brass band. <laughs> Hordes of people, ticker tape. Forever this day will be called Steve <laughs> Merchant Day. <laughs> exactly. It frustrates me that I just sneak back into town and there's no yeah. fanfare. <laughs> yeah. But um, basically they asked me to, to come talk at this school and I sort of batted them away and said I'm too busy. And so um, they, I foolishly left them uh, the opportunity to, to ask me again, which they did, and I didn't have a decent excuse, so I went. And I was expecting to talk to maybe a room of six formers. Um, they were nine, <laughs> these kids, nine, nine and ten years old. But I realised as I was walking into the school, I was suddenly really nervous. I was more nervous than anything I've ever done. Because I realised that I've not spoken to a child like that since I was a child myself. I just, I've never interacted with them. So I didn't know at what level I would be able to pitch this, this talk. You know, I didn't know what they understood, what ideas they understood. Obviously, in my mind, I was picturing Carl. And yeah. then I was ratcheting it up a few years sort of IQ wise. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I went so there, what did you talk to them about? And I was supposed to talk about careers and I realised very quickly that they didn't really understand conceptual Did ideas. they know who you were? Not really. One or two of them may vaguely knew. One of them went, what's Richard Rage like? And I said, um... You've got a deep voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, that was one of the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, uh, I'm supposed to be talking about careers, how to get into careers. And I start trying to explain the idea of being a writer, and I say that it's very important to be able to get inside other people's minds, you know, figure out how they think, and how, you know, and try to understand other people. But this, they didn't really seem to grasp. They started talking amongst each other. You know, they were just losing interest. <laughs> I lost them straight away. I was devastated. <laughs> oh, no. So then, and this is the worst thing, right? I started lying to them. Because <laughs> I realised that every time I told a slight lie, because I thought they'd be interested. That's they were. Great. So I, I know on, like, Justin Timberlake. You're not joking, right? They said, one of them said, I understand you used to be a DJ. And I went, yeah, it's great being a DJ because you get to meet pop stars like Robbie Williams and Beyonce. Never met either of them. <laughs> Never met them. <laughs> and I, they went, one of the kids went, what's Beyonce like? <laughs> and I went, and I went, joking, I went, you wouldn't like her. And I went, <laughs> I said, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. She's, lo she's lovely, she's sweet, she's good as gold. I was making it up. And, oh, but God. they were loving it, and the teacher was going, would you all like to meet Beyonce? And they were going, yeah. And I was thinking, God, well. We'll bring her, I'll bring her down tomorrow. <laughs> well, exactly, but I don't know why I felt the, it was like I wanted to win the approval of these nine-year-olds. That's amazing. Because my own achievements, I realised, wouldn't mean anything to them. You know, I could yeah. talk about the people I have met, but they don't care if I've met Robert De Niro, but they're interested if I've met girls allowed. <laughs> Well, me and girls led some of the times we've had together, <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> but uh, it is fascinating when you have to interact with, with people, with children like that, because I've got no concept of how to talk to children. I don't, to me, I can't grasp the difference really in conversation and chat between, say, a seven-year-old and a 13-year-old. I don't know at what point they learn stuff and pick stuff up. Do they understand, do you know what I mean? It's, I find it really hard. I remember hard. once when I was about nine, uh, the... The, the headmaster, Debbie Headmaster, used to do a little fable. I've talked about him in stand-up, he used to do a little fable. There's uh, uh, one I remember where um, he uh, got a tube of toothpaste and he got someone up, he said, uh, you, um, come out here, squeeze this tube of toothpaste out on this board. And he squeezed it all out, right? And he squeezed it all out and emptied it. He went, now put it back in. And the kid tried to struggle and he goes, you can't do it. He said, it's easier to do something than undo it. <laughs> okay, go back to class. <laughs> like people are going, oh, I get it. I know what he means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're just thinking, don't squeeze all the toothpaste out. Yeah. Just save some. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's no way they're going to take on <laughs> no, that exactly. metaphor at the it's age too of nine. It's conceptual, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just stop misbehaving or I'll <laughs> smack you. That worked. Carl, have you had to have any dealings with kids? How do you get on with kids? Do you relate to them? Or are they just as angry and perplexed by your views as we are? Uh, I mean, it's with everything, isn't it? Everyone's different and that. I can get on with some young kids, all right, and some of them are, like, you know, a bit cocky and what have you. But, um, I'm sort of getting on with a baby at, at the moment, because, uh, I've been made a, like, a, a godfather. Think of that. So, uh... Wow, who did they reject? I know. No, Who's, I mean, it, it, Who said no? Yeah. Well, well I did, no? I did at first, and Brilliant. then Suzanne said, look, you're not, you know, it's not really a choice, you, it's not like a job interview or something that you're thinking about, is it a good thing, so you, you've, you've been asked, you should take it on. But what, are, are they, what if they, hold on, if you're the godfather of this yeah. kid, presumably you're friends with them and they probably listen yeah, to this yeah, podcast, good so now they're hearing, for the first time, that you didn't want to be 
Yeah, Godfather. but I think I think that's good because they can hear that. You know, it wasn't. I didn't just do it because I was asked. I thought about it. I thought it through. Um, you know, I, I was worried. It was kind of like, is this a job? And uh, I was I was just. Well, it's nothing about, but tokenistic, is it? You're not. Well, really this is what I looked into. I said we went back and I said, right, I've been thinking about this thing. Uh, I've heard that it's my job. If anything happens to them, I've got to kick in. And I'd have to start looking after the baby. So I said, right, how many of you are in your family? If that happens, am I going to start getting a phone call or what? And they said, no, there's a big family. You're not, you know, you're at the bottom of the list. So I was like, how many? And just finding out what their age is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and you know, I've only got a small flat. It would have to sleep in the sink or something, right? So I uh, checked all that out and uh, all safe. So this uh, this baby, it's spooking me out a bit because it doesn't blink, <laughs> and that's pretty weird when you're sort of talking to it and you're thinking. It's not blinking. Are you sure it's not asleep? No, it's honestly, it's weird. If something doesn't blink, it's like it's it's evil. Because blinking just makes something look a bit more friendly, doesn't it? <laughs> and I was stood there, you know, talking to it. I just tell it little stories about anything. Uh, it's lying there looking up at me. How old is it? It's about, must be about two and a half months. Well then, why are you telling it stories? Because it likes it. But it's just weird how, like, then I'll, I'll sort of forget the story because I'm looking at it going, it's not blinked yet. It's been about <laughs> ten minutes, it's not blinking. <laughs> so then I forget the end of the story and I just walk away because it's not bothered anyway, it's probably not listening, is it? But <laughs> <laughs> what a pointless tale! What a pointless tale now and at the time. I think it likes it. The kids like stories, like you say, they're not bothered if it's if it's not true or anything. Or if you walk away before the ending because you've forgotten it. That's Brilliant. why it's not blinking. It's so dumbstruck at the idiocy coming out of your goal. No, but you don't need to wear endings of stories. Maybe, like I said That's the you. point. That's the point of a story, isn't no, it? No, it's not. That's the point where people, that's why people like stories because they're hooked into knowing what happened. No, because there's loads of films that happen and they have a funny ending. You leave there going, I wonder what's meant to happen, then you make it up in your own head. You go, well, I bet what happened is that person went off and got married to that woman, mm. and they lived that. And then in your head, it's the truth. It's actually what happened. But but I think that's better. Why are we told everything? Because so what would your end be to a story such as the Elephant Man? Okay, he's rescued from the freak show. He's put in the hospital. He becomes something of a celebrity. Then what happens? He discovered he had big ears and he could fly, and he 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 joined the circus and he was the the main attraction. Um, I wouldn't change change the end that much because at the end of the day, you can't you can't make something up that's not believable. At the end of the day, he's got an head like an elephant. He's not going to have a good life, is he? Hmm. So there's no point making out that he went on loads of women fancied him, and you know he, he modelled hats. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so so he's got to die. The elephant man had to die, yeah. but. At the same time, was shot by poachers. Just show, just for his, show, a, for his a, a, show a few positives, you know, because I'm sure there was good bits in his life. I don't know what they were, but you know, look, look at everything. Uh, what was he like when he was a little baby elephant? They didn't cover what he was like as a kid, but you can get away with them sort of looks when you're a baby. You can be an ugly baby, and everyone goes, "Oh, isn't it nice?" There was some woman in a cafe the other week mm -hmm. that I was sat in. And she came up and she sat down with her mate and she was talking loudly, going on about, oh, the baby's lovely. They said it's got, uh, got lovely big eyes, uh, really big hands and feet. Now that doesn't sound like a nice baby to me. <laughs> I felt like saying it sounds like a frog. But I thought, I don't know her. There's only, there's only so much you can say to, to a stranger. I don't know what kept, kept me from saying it. That's what I was saying before about there's something, there's something... It sounds like a frog. There's something inside of you that stops you. Yeah, that's amazing that you had the urge to go. That doesn't sound like a good baby. What, love? I'm just listening <laughs> to the conversation. That baby you're talking about sounds like a fucking frog. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But something stopped him saying it. <laughs> I just came back from uh, America and uh, they love Halloween. They're obsessed there. over there. I mean, it's a, it's a proper, proper thing out there. Here it's sort of half hearted a few people a few middle class families sort of uh but do you, you think know, it'll get up. more popular here though if we do find out that ghosts are about well that that never happened because they're not no okay? but if they did then but, suddenly that would be a big well Ameri a big america makes things famous now um because of because of film culture and everything so yeah it's it's all it's all 
it's all from that. I, I, I doubt we uh, celebrated much at all, did we, 50 years ago? So I think it's crept Oh, up. certainly over here we didn't. But it's no. been largely introduced over here through commercial ideas, isn't it? Let's yeah. Pr- we can yeah. sell stuff for and, and And film and, and, and things like that. And, uh, but um, out there, it's it, it was... They, they start, like, weeks and weeks before, and they're decorated, like, proper, proper. And um, But I saw a baker's, a little bakery in, um, in, in Soho, um... And uh, it didn't look right with cobwebs all over it and spiders on the buns. Yeah. And but even though it's fake, it just—it's just. I don't think you should do it on a bakery. It, do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's a bit creepy. Like, that, that's, that surely puts you off yeah. the the product a little bit. I, I always know. find it a bit depressing. Like last time I remember going into supermarkets and you see sort of these old women who who you know in their sixties and they're doing this job they don't really want to be doing, but they've been made to dress up. As a hat, I know. As a witch or as, as Cinderella, and it just... Well, they could do it, it in, like, a morgue or something, just to sort of... Brighten up the place. Well, just so people aren't that scared. Imagine that. Imagine you're going to identify your your your, your dead relative, and they go, what's the spiders all over? It's uh, 31st of October. No, oh, but, okay. But just make it a bit spookier and have a bit of fun with it, and let's not get serious about, you know, like I say, passing on. Yeah, but, but those sort of people have to take their job seriously. I remember when um, my mum died, and um, uh, I had to go along, and I was talking about um, uh, the what wreath they wanted, and this this person, uh, quite rightly, had to turn off their sense of humour in a way because I suppose they're so they mustn't offend anyone. So I had to. They spoke like that at all times. <laughs> yeah, at all times. Okay, and what what um, would you like the wreath to say? Um, she was a mother and a, a, a grandmother. I went, yeah, my um, uh, mother, grandmother, and, and uh, what was her name? I said, uh, her name was um, Eva. I said, um, and I made a joke. I said, do we get a discount because her name's short? And she went, well, actually, um, didn't laugh, didn't, didn't get yeah, that at all. She just went, yeah. just answer the question. She went, well, actually, you pay by the letter. I thought, okay, that fell flat. I'll go again. I went, well, uh, a friend used to call her E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Went, I went, I'm joking. She went, okay. Nothing. Yeah. Bad audience. <laughs> bad yeah. time, bad audience. Tough crowd. Yeah, undertakers, so, never known for their... Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Their they don't crack jokes, Carl. A, f- a, f- a friend of mine um, was um, tr- trying to be a doctor, and um, in his first year, uh, when they actually they practice, they intern at the, the hospital, um, he was watching this patient, and... Uh, Two other doctors came in, and I won't say his name. Um, they said, uh, "Can you um, can you go and check on Mr. So and So?" He went, "Yeah," and changed his drip. So he went in, changed his drip, came back out. The doctors came after about ten minutes. They came running and said, "What did you do? What did you do?" And uh, they went in there and they said, "I just changed the drip." He goes, "Well, he's dead. He's dead." He was going, well, "I just changed the drip. I did this and that." And they started laughing. He goes, "No, he was dead when we sent you in there." Yeah. Now, that is almost excusable because it's imperative if you're a doctor Absolutely. to become accustomed to yeah. Yeah. the fact that people die and that it's... Exactly. You know, yeah, it's so, that, so they were making a joke about a, a dead body that means nothing to them other than professionally. Yeah. You know, they were getting through it. He thought he'd just murdered someone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, he thought he just killed someone. Um, but yeah, they have to be desensitised. But they wouldn't do that in front of the relatives. They wouldn't go... I had a laugh earlier with a young <laughs> yeah. intern. Um, when your dad died, we sent him in to change the drip. Didn't even check. <laughs> it was quite good. Anyway, let's get him out of here. No, but, yeah. they do, but they do have a laugh. I heard about a doctor who was uh, working on a brain, mm-hmm. right? Um, and apparently when they work on the brain, it's best if they keep you awake. Because, um, you know, just so you can go, that hurts a bit, and they go, oh, let's not touch that bit again. <laughs> That's right. the reason, Rick. Amazing. That's the reason. No, there is it's certain, amazing. There's certain yeah. operations, isn't there, where they go, you know, we can knock you out for that, but for this one we want to know... It's probably because the awake. brain needs to activity. be active in order to... Yeah, yeah they show activity, thing, but yeah, Sure, yeah, no, so it's anyway. actually so you can wake up and go, yeah, no, that hurt, that, that stings. <laughs> oh, that stings, don't pop that in there. You can't feel anything in the brain anyway. No nerve endings. Really? You what? can't, can't feel it, can you? Well, maybe there's another reason, but anyway, his head's open. He's sat on this chair. Um, the doctor's going... I reckon he was laying down. I thought he was laying down, but in your world he's not. He's sat on a hard-backed I think he's more like chair. in front of a mirror, like a hairdresser type thing, right? <laughs> and he's cut the skin off. Uh, go, go, get, get, yeah, get a bit shorter there. So he's... he's so for the weekend, sir? He's, oh, I won't be shagging with no brain. <laughs> anyway, so he's, he's cut the skin off, 
and uh, you know chopped a bit. And you're always, you're always going to get bits, aren't you? Sort yeah. of whenever you cut anything, you end up with a bit missing. <laughs> but anyway, somehow it's it, it, it does the brain stuff. It fixes it. I don't know what he was doing. But if, don't you? If you, don't know about, you don't know you about don't that. know the intricacies of brain surgery. That I find perplexing. So you're not a neurosurgeon. I don't, well, I don't want. Oh, okay, so they sorted out the problem, right? Mm. And he goes, right. All we've got to do now is uh, stick the uh, the head bit back on. Yeah. Um, That's what it's called, by the way. The oh, head this bit. This happened. This happened. Yeah. The head bit's connected to the <laughs> face bit. Yeah. So he sticks. Nurse, the head bit. <laughs> Doctor, do you need leg bit? Not yet, nurse. Head bit, then leg bit. So they stuck the, the head bit back on, <laughs> and then uh, can you pass me the sharpie, sharpie thing? He was trying to sew it, and he was going, "This isn't fitting this." He's going, I don't know. And, and, and you know, like, because the Right, if this turns out that <laughs> it's someone else's head. Or no, 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 a, no. a toupee from the doctor next to him. <laughs> yeah. Or a cat. Meow! No, You've sewn a cat to my brain! <laughs> it's none of that. He's trying to sew it and he's thinking, why isn't it fitting? And he's thinking, is it because the head's swollen? Because, you know, he's been messing about in it and things yeah. swell, don't they, and messed about yeah. with. So he's messing with it. He's going, I don't, I don't understand this. And he's panicking a bit because the patient's awake and chatting and stuff. And, mm. you know, what, it's difficult to have a normal chat when you're panicking a little bit. I know, bit. there's a queue as well. People want their brain done. And they're, they're, they're reading old copies of magazines. They're going, hurry up. So. I'm going out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to wash it? No, no, no. Just, uh, I'll wash it later. Just, just, just <laughs> take it off, do the brain, put it back on. Anyway, what happens is he mm. has to start rubbaging. <laughs> it's a start rummaging. Sort of rummaging. 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 No! There's no N before the first G. Rummaging. Well, he starts looking through the, uh, he starts having to look through the bin. Because, oh, what? Because he's, he knows he's chucked a bit away of the skin. Right. Oh, where is goodness. this surgery <laughs> where a bloke's sitting up in front of a mirror and there's a bin? Is there a little basketball ring above the bin as well, so when he throws things it goes through there first? I'm just saying that's what happened and you were saying about things that happen you, and you've got a joke about so it. So he's rummaging and what, what happens? He said to him, he said the, the fellow was starting to sense the nervousness and he said, what's going on here? And he says, oh, I'm never going to believe it. I've, I've lost a bit of your skin. Lost a bit and, of your uh, head, yeah. I can't Why did so he cut? I don't understand. Why is there... Why That's is it in what two I mean. Bits? Because because things just break up, don't they? It's like chicken. When you see him walking around, everything's in place and it sticks together. <laughs> you cook it, suddenly it all breaks up. He, he cooked his face before <laughs> he cut it out. I'm just saying how how flesh it sticks together well. Yeah, when he'd, he'd, he'd cooked the scalp before he'd taken it off his no, head. No, but it's he? just an example of how oh, skin okay. can break up with the muscles and everything. So he's rum he's rummaging in the bin and does he find the head? He found the bit and then he's like, oh, sorry about that, and he, he sort of managed to stick it on. Right, he didn't stuff. wash it off or anything. Yeah, I'm he sure he gave it a bit of a rinse, but um, <laughs> but I'm just saying how. Nonsense. You know, you've got to make a joke out of stuff, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it's bollocks. If you're a doctor. Okay, that's good. So where was the joke in that story? Well, at what point did- when- I thought this was a story well, about how jo doctors have a sense of humour. Yeah, when well, did he did make at a the joke? end, they sort of laughed and he sort of said, oh, there you go, it's back on, but, oh, good job we- you know, the bin men didn't come or whatever. And they, <laughs> and they made a joke out of it. I've never <laughs> heard such nonsense! <laughs> I've never God, heard just made such that joke nonsense! Up. Oh, shit, bad that he's only gone and written it down! <laughs> the jingle there to announce- a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, when are you going to write until, Carl? What have you got? You going to do? I've got to do as until far as December, and then that's it. Uh, I don't know. When does the diary end? Thirty first of December, usually. Yeah. Do it the typical, always yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah, that's that's when I'll do it till, and then. Uh... Why do that? Why just? Why be conformist? Why? Why end on December? Why not end on January the thirty first? Weird that you should go. Don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me mam called me to ask me to like. Fuck me, you're right. That like look that should be. Me mam called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified <laughs> flying objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue there as to why you, you, uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's, oh, you know, I mean... Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got news story about how Aldrin, brackets, astronaut, has got some evidence that aliens exist. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. 
six o'clock here, yeah. people are going, see you tomorrow, I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> They've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's oh, over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel! Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in <laughs> Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us, or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it scares she... her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of It doesn't scare her, it, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm knackered today and the face feels dry and spotty. <laughs> oh god, it's wrong. Oh, it starts off! It starts <laughs> off moaning! The first thing he does is start moaning! He wakes up and goes, oh fuck me, I didn't die. <laughs> oh, oh god! I'm knackered today and the face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away. Or it could be all the- <laughs> it could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> that was I'm the gonna Madeira burst. cake. The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? <gasps> well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's <sighs> one of my little pleasures. <laughs> oh, God, put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine from a man. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines, the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines, it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, <laughs> showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> <laughs> why were you looking at the gay magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just that Oh, you were? were? No. I, well, I you were. You studied them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was looking for UFO data. I don't yeah. know where they put it. <laughs> I don't think you find evidence of other worlds down men's pants. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. <laughs> He writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag. But no, no, but I, it reminds you want to be right. me. You want to be specific. Of, yeah. If I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. Oh, still looking for it. Got some posts from Oxfam. They're flogging animals for Africa again. They've got new animals in their catalogue now. They've got donkeys and alpacas. Donkeys 50 quid, alpacas 20 pounds. I don't know if this is a special rate or if I could get one from a ma'am. She's been saying how they've been missing having a pet since they had the cat put down. Sorry, you don't get it. If you buy that for someone, you don't get it. Yeah, but they're not bothered where they're going. Yes, as long they as do. They're then of course money. they don't. They don't. They don't deliver them. It's not like they're in a warehouse wondering, uh, people thinking, I hope people buy this. They're going to put them out there. Yeah. They're they're. But uh, at the end of the day, fifty quid's fifty quid, and they're not bothered. If they're right. sending an alpaca to Africa, yeah, and I'm saying, can you get one to London? To them, that is less hassle. Right. Th that don't, th uh, Carl. That's not how it works. You can't just go and say, oh, I'll have one of them. They're not bothered. It's for charity. Of course they are. You can't buy an alpaca for twenty quid. <laughs> Christ, all that plus posters and packaging. They're big bastards. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. <laughs> it's been the horses regular for ages, but <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> 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 oh God! We've got to publish this diary. There's some dynamite we've, stuff. We've in got here. to publish the diary. I mean, this is never mind, peeps. Can't we put this out next year or something with a oh, special CD? I I, I it just, it's amazing. You got you can't you can't keep this from the world, Carl. I met Suzanne after she finished work, and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus! It's <laughs> always so having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I look tired and fed up. I think it's because I ain't been sleeping. Or the Madeira, okay? We don't know. <laughs> Always been going to every news agency in London, looking at gay magazines. <laughs> she taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed though, because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> Oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. It is such a noisy world, though, isn't it? It is. London is noisy, very noisy. I think just everywhere, just noise in general. They were yeah. saying how, like, every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? 
Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. What do you mean every noise has been used five <laughs> times? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because- I don't <laughs> know. I have no idea. I- I- Every noise once has been used at least five times. <laughs> there's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, the same noises are being used again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker have... when it's woodpecking? Yeah, yeah. Some, some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort. Just because there's, there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct. Outside yeah. an instrument, yeah. noises and are a byproduct. They a machine, they don't go, watch me make this <laughs> noise, make this machine. It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing something. But why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick well, the who's noise. Picking I know. The, noise? the printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah, you so know, the printing... a hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going, oh, can we make this make a different noise? No, it's, it's a byproduct. I it's, know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. You said the byproduct is because of something that's happening, right? But it's yeah. the physical action, isn't it, and the way that that impacts on the uh, the surrounding air. That's what no you know how noises are manufactured. It's when, not a when, choice. When Stevenson yeah, Rocker came, and I went. <laughs> they went. Can you make it go? It's what that's the noise it made. I know, but then. Say like a new frog comes out. Oh, for f what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog, right. it makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was gonna sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises, nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird noise and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken, or it sounds like <laughs> a Ford Escort, or... <laughs> There's only so many what noises. What frog sounds like a Ford Escort? Well, no, there there can't be, be many because you've used Ford Escort twice <laughs> as an analogy here. So you're running out of noises. You've I come can't. up with chicken and Escort so far. I can't explain But the problem it. is a Ford Escort sounds a bit like an Austin Allegro. So I, I know, know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken, you're ripping off the turkey, you <laughs> gun. <laughs> oh, chimpanzee that is competition time. <laughs> I think my worry there is people might get confused with it because that jingle is very yeah. similar to the monkey news jingle. There's aspects of it that's similar, yeah. Yeah. Just some people might have just heard that and they might have just heard chimpanzee and thought, oh great, it's monkey news, but Carl presumably is too lazy to have actually prepared any monkey news. Oh, I've got some good news about monkey news, actually. Have you? If you are craving monkey news, then there is a special monkey news poster in the, uh, in the CD, the three CD box set, um, the Ricky Gervais show. Got everything. It's got the the twelve shows and MP3. It's got the best of, and it's got an extra hour of brand new material as well. And um, the reason we did it on CD is because uh, some people were saying I've heard about this, but I can't listen to it. I haven't got an iPod. I haven't got a computer. So uh, buy that for a friend who uh, who can't listen to these. It's the perfect Thanksgiving gift. It is the perfect Thanksgiving gift or Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've uh, we've signed um one that's going to a lucky winner. We did a competition uh, on the last podcast. Um, to give away one of the CD box sets, the uh, uh, World of Carl Pilkington, and uh, we've signed that, and um, Flannels of the Deep, uh, the new uh, book in the series. Can you remind us, Rick, of the quiz question? The quiz question was, do you want these? <laughs> okay, and what was the correct answer? Uh, it was yes. Well, we've had, uh, it's amazing actually how many people didn't realise that was, we had a lot of people saying no. Uh, I'm not interested, um, who are you, why are you bothering me? But um, amazingly, Rachel Bolland, from uh, Glasgow has got the correct answer. She said yes. Now then, we yeah. need a new question, Rick. Yeah, should we give those away again? <laughs> should we give, should <laughs> let's we give, give those away again. The same yeah. things again. Not obviously okay. these. We'll send these no, to Rachel. Different ones. Separate you separate. get so, so you get. Do you do you want a signed CD, the World Cup Hilton and Flannels of the Deep? Okay. Plus, we can also add to that, Rick, the forthcoming extras script book. Ah, not just a script book, Steve. No. It's got some wonderful pictures but that were taken by Rich Hardcastle of um, people like Ben Stiller and Sam Jackson and Kate Winslet behind the scenes. In their off-duty moments. And it's brilliant. It's really good. We've put some pictures up on the website. Go to rickagervais.com and you'll see, you'll see what you could, uh, we'd be winning. Yeah. Yeah? So we've okay. got that perfect collection of stuff but we need a new quiz question. Okay. Um, okay, th th so, so those prizes, uh, does someone else want them? Does someone else want them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you know the answer to that, then get in touch. Podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck. It's a tricky one.
Oh, good luck anyway, because I never read the emails. <laughs> Well, that's the end of, uh, the second in this, uh, series of three special podcasts. That was the end of the Thanksgiving edition, uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. See ya. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. They're doing a great job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Right. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, and welcome to our Christmas podcast, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering, Rick, if having done so many podcasts this year, because we very much started the whole podcast revolution ourselves single-handedly roughly this time last year. Yeah, that's right. Have we perhaps exhausted the podcast phenomenon? Is it time to pack it up, pack up the equipment and move on to something new? Well, this will be the last one for, for a little while, I think. I think, you know, we've done, we did, uh, I think 24 and then these specials this year. I think we started it about this time last year. Well, I don't we? know about you, Rick, but I'm bored of the whole podcasting thing, and I know that uh, you probably feel the same way. Well, let's stop for a while. We might get back together again, but it won't be for a while. It's the, you know, we had a year. It was the year of the podcast. In a weird year, wasn't it? Go on. No, I'm just saying, you know, when you look at it like that, when you think about all the podcasts that we've done. Yeah. Over the year. Yeah. Just a lot of stuff has gone on. That's Looking back at the year... A year in which we've seen, you know, um, increasing violence in Iraq. We've seen uh, the advent of more fears over global warming. We've seen George W. Bush take a massive battering in the midterm elections. We've seen many major world events this year. Carl, what's stuck out for you? What event do you, if you think, oh my God, if you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? Uh, the, the grub. That was, that was eating biscuits on my windowsill. <laughs> right. That's just a little bit more up there for you than the capturing of Saddam Hussein and his sentencing to death. Just because, you know, it's, uh, I never thought I'd see that this year. So what exactly- What, the capture of Saddam or the grub? No, the, the grub. The grub. It was just, I, I was there on the computer, yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit, uh, I put the biscuit on the windowsill, I sort of picked it up. Why would you do that? What, why? Why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Window because sill. I'm sat next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and so some ruffians stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and uh, I was enjoying it. I put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea. And uh, I saw- Planned like, out. This is <laughs> yeah. bet Well, we read about this later in the diary. So, and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. So I looked down closer and there's an insect that is see-through but with legs. And, um, just sort of running off with a crumb into like a little hole. And then when I looked, I noticed there was loads of these little see-through things. And they were obviously all like, oh, I got biscuit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's exactly what they were saying. <laughs> they were going, we got biscuits over here! But I can't, that, what, Come what, on, what, what it, Like I say, it was amazing because it was, they're miles away from what I'm about, and yet- Not that far. They're, but, but they still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird. That that happened. I never thought that would happen in two thousand and six. <laughs> and that's, that's you never thought that would happen in two thousand and six. That's what's nice, it's isn't it? That's what's mind. nice about the na you know the nature of the world. You know, we can invent iPods. We can bring out better vacuum cleaners. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up. And to see this see through thing, you do eating a biscuit. Uh, that's that's mind? where I've sort of gone this year. I'd say out of a, a, anything. I've sort of gone out of my way to, to learn more stuff about weird stuff that's happening. I don't know what you've learned. You've learned that, uh... A creature which you can't even identify or you name. don't know, right, you, you, you don't know what it is, right, um, look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that, what is that, how is that useful? Just because everything is, is changing. But it's not useful. It's not useful to you, and it's not useful to anyone. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was, but Carl or where thinks, it happened, but, or why it happened. But Rick, Carl thinks that that the grub has an inkling, has, has a taste for McVitie's in the same way that Carl does. That's why yeah. he's from makes. He's thinking, as, I can't believe it. They, we, we both love hobnobs, no, as opposed to just being uh, yeah. uh, taking the star in anything. the flower. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that these things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. 
but they're eating biscuit. <clears throat> and that was never meant to happen. So, so it's changing it. What but I mean is you might start getting fat insects. That should never have happened. You, you, you don't normally see a fat beetle. You go, oh, look at that, that's a bit fat. Put a bit of weight on. And now that's going to happen because they're eating sugary stuff. The, the squirrels in the park, because people are feeding them Mars bars and everything, they're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. <laughs> now, over time, you know, they, they're going to cause more trouble than they what are What evidence now. have you got what that they're getting more violent? But Just because when I'm sat in the park and, and what have you, they, they really like cocky. They come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of uh, attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now, they want a bit of croissant. And that's, that's what I'm saying, they've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub, having a biscuit. Everything's trying different food out. He'll want a gatto soon. Well, in the same way that, you know, you, you look at people around the world, how they're eating weirder stuff. They're running out of, you know, ideas on, on how to cook food differently. And we're eating weird stuff. So our insects, everything's moving on. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish, memories got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were, apparently. Everything's time. Yeah. Time makes you more intelligent. Well, no, they do. That's that's a fact, isn't it? If if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more because more stuff's going on, and you soak it up. And that's what these insects are doing. They're all learning. You know what I mean? No. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> It was on the internet, right, and somebody had, had linked up a cockroach <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to some... I can't even be bothered explaining it, but but, uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, Everything <sighs> everything's moving on. Yeah, but, but Pac-Man's like such an old hat game, man, it's like from the 1980s. Yeah, that cockroach is so come on, God. He's got a date. Get, Get a life, it. man. Hello, PlayStation 3, is yeah, he got Hello. Hello. Yesterday's cockroach. <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. What was he listening to? MC Hammer? Christ almighty. Fucking hell, Pac-Man. Get a life. <laughs> High five, man. I was in the supermarket recently, um, just, uh, just walking past the condoms yeah. on the way to the pornography, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, thought, you know, it's worth perhaps, you know, getting a stock in. You know, you get a stocking. No, getting getting some condoms. What? Put over your head. <laughs> You're not still doing that, are you? No, 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 no. No, I, uh, I thought it'd be worth getting some condoms in. You know, it's, it's, it's Christmas party season, and uh, you never know when you're going to run out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, and I was weird because the, the, the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage in a plastic cage, so it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them. Because I took them off the, ca the the thing and I was trying to open it, so because I thought that they, they would, it, you had to open it. Try know, it on, you, try well, it on. <laughs> exactly. okay, the, this, you know, in case it doesn't fit, <laughs> exactly. bring exactly. it back. Yeah, bring it back. Yeah. And uh, do you do alterations? <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. Yes, five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm trying to open this thing, and, and this guy who works there, sort of with this middle-aged guy who works there, goes, "You, you, know, you have to, um, you have to take that to the uh, checkout, so you can't open that yourself." I was just, because I, I don't know, I still find it very embarrassing, you know, dealing with any of that sort of, you know, prophylactics and things, the novelty of that is still very embarrassing to me. And, uh, so I just left it, I thought, forget it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take these to the counter, because you never, it's like if you get served by a, by a woman, it's, it's still a bit embarrassing, particularly if that's all you're buying. <laughs> you know, because she knows what you're up to. Um, uh, you're gonna fill them up with war and throw them at the students. <laughs> and um, but it, anyway, the reason I mention this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about when Carl bought for his girlfriend for Christmas. Uh, was it a uh, two pack? A two pack of yeah. What was it? Condoms. What, wasn't it about buy one get one free? Yeah. It was a bumper family. Pack, wouldn't it? Yeah. Not a family, obviously, that'd be, that'd be weird. Yeah, a family pack of condoms. <laughs> 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 One for the kids, take them down, enjoy yourselves. Um, but, um, so that was a couple of years ago, Carl, the famous, uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? Uh, not really, they, they were the early days. Um. Do you mean the early days? You'd been going out with her for about eight years, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I, I just think that as time goes on, you don't sort of buy each other as many presents. As oh, so, sorry, that was a bumper year, was it? That was, that was a hell of a, she went, oh, I remember when, I remember when you used to buy me stuff, like condoms. It's gone downhill since then, Well, no, she didn't presents. know she was getting them. What I mean is there's less Of course surprises. she didn't. 
That's what that's what I mean, though. It was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them her, and so there you go, open them. She was not expecting that. And as time goes on- No, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult, is what I mean, to surprise someone, in it over, no, over no, no, time. No, 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 no. But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't- if, if you're- if you always get something good, it's like the three wise men, what did they get the second year for, for little baby <laughs> Jesus? Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like, oh, I've, I've, I've sort of made it hard work for myself there. I've got to get- I've got to get him something better than that now. So it's best to give him the myrrh. And next and year, get him the gold. Step it up a bit or whatever. But don't you understand- because well, what- well, I, I don't want to criticise you because you're a lovely man, but- Having read the diary and read much of this diary, one of the things I notice is the complete lack of romanticism. The number of times Susanna says, book us a lovely meal out, take me out tonight, and you always write like it's a massive chore, like it's a headache for you. Oh no, I've got to spend a romantic night out with my girlfriend. Because it's the same reason I don't like Christmas and stuff, it's the expectations. I prefer it, if I want to take Susanna out, I prefer to meet her at the bus stop, and she comes back from work and go, you wanna go out? But you don't Rather do than, that! No, I do now and again, but it's that thing of, oh, we'll go out tonight, I wanna leave it to you, book a place, da da da, it, it builds it up too much and it can never live up to it. It's like how you, you know how like people make a big thing out of, you know, having it away for the first time, and they go, oh, I'm gonna do that tonight. Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> That's a quote! <laughs> That's an amazing quote! That'll be up there with the uh, Newton and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. No, but like That's I've amazing. Said, like I've said but a you lot. can't just spring it on someone. You have to at least ask, are you up for it tonight? Just see how it goes. That's what I'm saying about Christmas. I might not be in the mood for it on December 25th. For Christmas, having turkey and everything. That's what I mean about, you know, in the last podcast, stuff coming round every year. Don't plan it. If you fancy a Christmas, have it. If you don't, just carry on. It'd be nice to live in a world like that. They say, you know, it's a world of freedom or something. Now it isn't. No, they do, I don't know what that means. No, no, they don't know they just make up things they, they, say, they say. They say, like, you know, today's world is a free world or something. Someone said something along them lines. When it isn't, <laughs> everyone's still being told what to do, when to do it. <laughs> Christmas is a big thing, isn't it, that we all have to go through. And it's stressful. It's You're not a happy time. You're such a miserable sod. You really no, are. No, but Christmas is a big, it's a big upheaval. It is a b it, out of all of those special days that go on, Christmas is the one but that's- But what are you doing with your time? It's the question we return to again and again, no, we why, read it. Why, you're uh, visiting your parents, you're hiring yeah. a car, you're going yeah. down the calf. It's yeah. not like you're, you're taking your work away, you're doing yeah. some important neuroscience work, yeah. and we've had to take you away from that for three days. Yeah. No, but what You're I, not doing anything of any value, no, Carl. But, no. But, no, what I might want to do, but I can't because the shops are shut because you know, they want to go off and celebrate Christmas. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an upheaval. Easter's all right. It, it comes and goes. Do you want an egg? Not really. Don't have one then. You're not forced an egg. <laughs> You're not forced an egg. I like Easter, and everyone can afford an egg. There's no one being left out. Whereas Christmas, everyone like goes back to the family and they have a big meal and all that. And there's there's a lot of poor people out there who can't do that. So it's more of a if you're going to mm. talk about religion and you know the religious sort of occasions, mm. Easter's one that I'd keep. If you plan everything. You probably won't do it in the end. Whereas again, that that as a soundbite is gobbledygook, mm. isn't it? No, what I mean is, say like um, holidays when you know they're coming, you never enjoy them as much as one when it's surprised on you. Who how surprises can, someone with a holiday? Unless you, you win it on a game show. How can you really go? Bloody hell! I'm on holiday. Suzanne did it with me. She sorted it all out and booked me time off work without oh, me knowing. Oh, that's a lovely romantic gift. Oh, yeah, nice. and I went along with it and we had a great little holiday. Yeah, so, so maybe you should do something like that. Fair. No, she wouldn't like it as much and I won't pick the right place and I know she won't like it. You're um, one of these people that washes up badly so you'll never be asked again, aren't no, you? No, that's my job. That's the only job I do. Washing yeah, well, up. it was a... Me uh, but to be honest, that's, <laughs> that's doing me head in at the moment because I've outgrown the sink. <laughs> He talks about himself like a crab! <laughs> oh god! Gotta get a new sink for Carl. Why? Uh, he's outgrown it. No, just he's 33 now and his knees are around his head. Oh, he can't bath in that anymore. No, just my back's been playing up a bit and I think it's because of the height of the sink. But hold on, you haven't grown. I think I have. Well, you haven't. Bit. No, you haven't grown at 33. Well, it's, it's definitely something, it's just not very good. Subsidence? I don't know, I've just said to Suzanne, I said, this, this isn't as good as it used to be. It's not, 
<laughs> this isn't as good as it used to be. Let's wash it up. Oh. He says he's got nothing in the flat. That's why he has to do a shop every day, because he's got nothing in the flat. It's easier that way, isn't it? You don't know what you're going to want to eat. But that's why you get a- but d you don't have a different meal every day of the year, do you? You rotate maybe a, a dozen meals, don't you? So you can get in enough ingredients that any time you go to the fridge and go, oh, am I gonna have chicken? Or am I gonna have fish today? Or maybe I'll have some pasta. I do that every day. Yeah, well, I always come down to one of uh, half a dozen meals. You've got a freezer. We haven't got a freezer, have we? We've only got a little fridge. Oh, you've There's got nothing wrong too with nipping to the supermarket. Hands, There's nothing wrong with that. So you've got too much time on your hands, boy. Uh, you've had one thing, you've had to do one thing this year. Promote the book. Couldn't that be we bothered. Don't, couldn't be bothered, mate. Could not be bothered. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Carl in an interview with him, I haven't seen him on the TV. Oh, he was on the TV, um, a while back on the thing called The Culture Show. Oh, yeah. you too. And I'll tell you what, he was sat there, looked like a little frightened frog in a chair being interviewed, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not being funny, but his head looked fucking round. Did it look fucking yeah, round? Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. looked like a little fucking round-headed twat. Yeah, I'm not doing that. And either. that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Did you enjoy that interview? Not really. Why? Well, I, this is, I met a guy, funny you mentioned that, I met a guy when I was in France recently, and I met a guy, he wasn't a Frenchman, but he was over there, and he saw me, he was a bit drunk, and he came over and he went, Carl Pilkington's got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, and I high-fived him, and we agreed. I thought, isn't that nice? <laughs> you know, uh, even when you're abroad, you can find someone oh who speaks God. sense. Oh, God. Yeah. And they shaved your head more? No. It's just the they way sort they... of greased it up a bit, just to get a bit more reflection off it? No, they, they put a lot of makeup on it. They said, do you want any makeup? And I said, not really. And that's when I was like at the back where they could have done it. And then I, I went and sat in the chair and there's like a live audience there. And the woman goes, no, I best do some colouring in. And it was like, like must she be gave about you a 50 people. No, no, she, she started colouring my head in. And she was like, like had some brown powder, she's doing my head, doing the top of it and stuff. And I was going, isn't that enough now? And everyone's looking and sort of laughing to themselves that I'm having my head coloured in. <laughs> Sure, she was doodling on the top. She took longer than anyone else who she was doing. I watched like other people who were on. Well, she's got more flesh to do. When you do usually powder someone, it stops at the forehead. You just have to go round to the fucking back. Yeah, but the camera wasn't at the back of my head. She was just kept going. No, and but going. the shine, the shine for the cameras that would get the in glare. people's not, eyes. They got to because health and safety. The light will bounce off into the eyes of the audience. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't happy with that anyway. So I'm not doing that again. How do you cope with this newfound um, interest in in you? as a person. I've got an idea, Steve, by the way. You know, my, my, the, for me, I want Carl to be famous so it gets him hassle in the street. Yep. That's what I'm hoping. Sure. When they see him in the yeah, street yeah, with his yeah, little yeah, fucking yeah. round-headed face like a fucking orange. Yeah. Right? I'm going to do a tour um, next year, okay, called Fame, okay, and everywhere I play, if I, I hopefully play to, to millions of people in, uh, you know, I might even go to America, but I, I'll make sure at the theatres I play, or uh, there's a picture of Carl on the seat, right, that they can put in their window. Uh -huh. So next year, I want a picture of Carl or in every window. With. Or what yeah, they're Or, yeah, or whatever. But if you can make this yourself, put Carl everywhere. So, to, have you seen this bald-headed twat? Please yeah. make up the posters. Just send uh, emails to friends. Uh, absolutely. I want to see pictures, uh, on sh if you own a shop, but a big picture of him. If you just, even if you're, you know, uh, uh, your own home, your own flat, get it everywhere. Have you seen this bald-headed twat? This is Carl Pilkerton. He's got a head like a fucking orange. Get it everywhere. I want to see the world papered with Carl's round head. Happy New Year. <laughs> Where'd you get that from? It's handy, wasn't it? Put it on. No, what is it? That's the only he can't thing. hear because he's got his. Put your headphones on. Why? Was it? You'll love it. it. You'll love it. Yeah. That's magnificent. Yeah. That's now Ricky Gervais's theme tune. Yeah. Every time we start the show, we should just start with that. Win, Ricky, win. <laughs> Carl, do you just want to have a dig at me? Because it's <laughs> coming up to two o'clock and you've not really put a lot of uh, effort in today. Slagging yeah, me off. He does it on purpose. No, he doesn't do it on purpose. He's, 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 just, he's just an honest northerner and he can't lie. He's like George Washington. But without the wooden teeth. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think your heart's in it anymore either, Carl. I was alright today, but Steve's really dragged me down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. Wait, 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 I just need to know why. No, do you know, like, yeah. people are being miserable around you. Yeah. I, I was full yeah. of beans when I came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah you yeah. got remember last week, you were really miserable and that really wound me up. Yeah, because he was dumb so to do stuff. Because, the, you know, he'd been let down and they were worried about yeah, the next show. You were in a terrible mood. Yeah. yeah. Looking me like the you songs, were. I wasn't like going off and lying on the settee, looking ill. Uh, talk, 
talking in that voice. <laughs> oh, he's done you again. I said it I said, just now, being quite friendly. Yeah, Carl, Steve. Carl, have you ever tried to get into the monarch for free? Because <laughs> I'll be honest, mate, it's not going to happen for you. <laughs> Come out with me, mate. You got a quid off. <laughs> all right. Oh. Uh, when you can get in places in Camden for free. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's done you. Do, do, do you don't care about the job? I mean, I've got to ask because. You know what I mean? If I was in charge, I'd worry about your motivation or... Because we... Yesterday, we were trying to work out what you enjoyed doing. And we got to, uh, Manchester United and moaning. And that is, that is the two we came I up with. I don't with. know where you get the moaning thing You're from. always whinging. About what? Everything. Wh when? When did I last have a moan? Uh, just before we came on air. Right, and why was that? <laughs> um, I don't know, I can't remember. Because well, we I'll... were in good mood. We were in a good mood, me and Rick. I'll tell you why. Go on. Because you brought a song in at ten to one. Yeah. With a load of effing and jeffing in it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and saying, "Can you edit this?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's your job. You could have brought it in yesterday. No, I couldn't. Why not? I hadn't thought of it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but why? But why? But why are you whinging? That's your job. And I didn't come in ten minutes before. It was a good twenty minutes before. It just took you ages because you were whinging and moaning mm. to even get started. Uh, been very quiet week. I've uh, been checking. Uh, I was looking in books last night and stuff. Uh, so is there the, any monkey news? I, I've I've got some, but just because it's not that good, something else I found out that I thought I'd share with you. Go on. I was looking in the Guinness Book of Records, right, because I thought they'll have something in there about monkeys or something, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's a little monkey, I think it lives in Asia, right? Uh, there's loads of them live in Asia. Might and, just be travelling, but yeah. And, um, something I found out, I don't know if they've got it right. And that's why I want to bring it up. Uh, apparently, it's the mammal, right, that's got sort of the, the pointiest eyes. Eyes that pop out of the red. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is, right, I thought that's interesting. Yeah. Apparently it's, it's, it's the biggest with the sort of goggle eye type thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, go on. Apparently they, they come out of the red, um, 1.6 centimetres. 1.6 centimetres? What, you mean they protrude? Yeah. They uh, protrude uh, from the head at 1.6. Okay. What, how, how long? Have you got a ruler, Rick? <laughs> One point one point six. He's, he's I'd say I'd be a little bit annoyed if the monkeys beat me. <laughs> well, I don't think it has. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Is there anything we can? I mean, what's one point six? Can you? It's about drop your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, um, well, oh, about three quarters of an inch. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have they got it right or what? <laughs> Maybe I should come down to Monkey World with you next week. Uh, uh, so anyway, so that's that's not the monkey news. <laughs> that's just something that cropped up. And sure, <laughs> I do know. Once when we were playing pool in the office, I think Lucy was your partner. Yeah, it was me and Ash versus you and Lucy, and um, you were having trouble because his glasses kept slipping down. So Lucy pushed his glasses up his nose, but the glasses touched his eye. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he started it. He started it. Well, you're the one who joined in. <laughs> no, I know, and I feel I'm, I feel bad now. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me nervous when he goes. Yeah, it's player record. No, I'm just trying to think about which part of your fat middle-aged physique I can pick on. <laughs> the tits would be a good. Yeah, start. yeah. Oh, the belly. Sure. Oh, what do you think of that? Oh, that—that's what is that? How did you meet your girlfriend? <laughs> through work. <laughs> what through her work? <laughs> what, you <laughs> found out and said you work have the same place. Oh, you're right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. You're quite an enigma, aren't you? Could you give us more on that? <laughs> at work. You met her at work. What, she came in selling sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> she was going through the bins outside. What, what do you mean you met her Why at work? are you having an attack on me? You're I'm the one who's sad and lonely. No, oh, not. he's done you again! He's done yeah, you again! Yeah, but what I thought was interesting was no. I just scratched at him and he just went mental. Yeah, no, It's like a bear caught in a trap. It's, it's funny, isn't it? You'll never learn.
Carl. No, I was just interested to find out what the story was. I guess it might be a really romantic story. Well, it's, it's not. All right, jeez. I, I mean, love the fact he doesn't want to talk about, about his love I, affair. I, I, I was thinking about you in the week, and like, <laughs> does it worry you? I mean, you sort of joke about it now, and we're talking about it in the office, you know, like, oh, is, is Steve really touchy about the way he looks? And, oh, what's this? Where's that come from? He's and, done it again. He's done you again. I was walking home the other night, and I was thinking about it. And do you <laughs> worry that when you're old, you will be on your own? <laughs> you did start it though, didn't you? Well, Carl, I'm glad you brought this up. <laughs> because no, no, because I, I mean, for me, you know, a, a lightweight, frothy entertainment show <laughs> on XFM on a Saturday afternoon is exactly the place <laughs> where I want to discuss the uh, desperate, lonely future that's inevitably uh, coming my way. Oh God, I, I tell you what, we'll cheer you up and forget yeah. all that. A bit of embrace. <laughs> oh, one of the most hated men. Do you know when I left the pub in a bit of a mood because yeah. I, I just fed up with not getting anything done? Yeah. Walking down the road, I was thinking, how can I get out of this? How can I stop having to work with them? I'm thinking, I wonder if I, if I leave, I wonder if they'll be funny and they'll go, and then my boss will be giving me stick. I'm thinking, how long, how much notice have I got to give out? How, and all this is going through my mind. I'm walking home and I got in, I said to Suzanne, I'm sick of it. She's going, you need to do it when I get a new kitchen. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, but how big does the kitchen need to be? I was saying, do we need a big kitchen? Can we get a small one? Have we got enough for a small kitchen? Do we need so many cupboards? Can we just have wood instead of steel? All this, try to get out of doing this. Yeah. It's always just, I always feel like, you know, because I, I like to think that I'm not perhaps as bad as him. Yeah, no. You annoy me in different ways. Like right, what? How does he annoy you? Well, stuff, stuff that, you know, I come up with ideas, say yeah. cheap as chimps. Yeah. Uh, rock busters springs yeah. to mind. Yeah. Uh, 15 like Taiwan. Uh, <laughs> 15 Taiwan. Let's just remind people what 15 Taiwan was. It was a little feature that I wanted to give a run, you know, give it a little run, see if people like it. Uh, the premise we'll, being? No, there's no premise, it's just a title. No, we were gonna get 15 sort of ornaments, you'd explain them, and then people would call <laughs> up and say, oh, that one's from Taiwan. <laughs> see, Carl, you just explained why I didn't think that was a good idea. Yeah, By explaining the good bit. No, so, you know, yeah. the funny thing is, Steve, right, I was walking down Regent Street on Monday, Walk past one of these big stores, right, and they've got all famous quote quotes on the windows, right, yeah. and one of them was something like, an absurd idea is often a great idea. Yeah. Do you know who said that? Go on. Einstein. Yes. Which made me wonder, if you were his mate, would he ever have done E equals MC squared? Or would you have said, don't bother with that, it's not gonna work? <laughs> Because that's all you seem to do, everything I come up with, yeah. you put down. Yeah. Well that's one thing, he's negative, right, don't know, I don't know why, I don't okay. know why he's, he is. What he, else? He messes me about, I get him concert tickets for stuff and, yeah. and you say, oh I didn't bother going. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is annoying. You come in, you know, five minutes to go with traps that need editing. Yeah. 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 The little bag, yeah. that bag that was free. Yeah, you got a free bag today, an yeah. XFM little rucksack thing. Yeah. yeah. You were like, oh what's this, what's this rubbish? Yeah. Ricky said, I'll have it, they're great. You yeah. said, no, I want it. Yeah. Well, it's so, free, I need it. Yeah. Mm, I'll give that as a well, gift or something. So, so, I mean, I think on reflection, Steve is probably a little bit more annoying than me. Mm. <laughs> I, I won't go that far. <laughs> you are, you are annoying. If I had to go away for a week somewhere, yeah. if it was a quiet place- so you are again, aren't you? That's two holidays you had this week, this year, I mean. If it was a busy place, I'd probably go with you, because people, do you know what I mean, staring at me all the time and that, if I'm walking around with Steve. <laughs> No, I'm just. <laughs> Can I draw up a list of reasons I don't like you? Carl? <laughs> to be honest. Well, I'll tell you because the list of reasons I don't like you is incredibly long. They're getting longer. Just saying. By the way, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. So, a few more shows. And I, I, I hope Sony are happy. Mm. They should encourage. You know, we've only been radio, you know, a couple of years. Exactly. Trying. They should encourage young. Ta you encourage young talent yeah. like you. Yeah. Instead of giving it to Radio 1 and Radio 2 yeah. and... The old war horses. We just had a quick email, I wonder if you can answer this. It's James from NWL. He says, Ricky, is Carl gonna be on this week's show? Please let me know, as I may listen if he's not. <laughs> um, sadly, oh, he is here. I mean, do. people are already turning against you, Carl, because they've seen what's happened. Yeah. I think they've probably realised that we've I think we gave him too much. Enough. I think, exactly, I think we've got a spoiled sort of kid in our hands. It's sort of like, you know... We we knew we knew how bad he was, but we were trying to sort of bring him out of his shell a little bit. Yeah, encourage you got to encourage sort of um, children like Carl. Well, yeah, exactly. Just exactly. sort of 
fend for themselves. Mm. Um, but, uh, I like the fact that Dickie Anderson had that wonderful rant. It, I mean, it was an articulate email, it was quite long, and he must have typed it immediately. I'm thinking, because he's a fan of the show and he, he thinks I'm a, you know, a genius, we need a PA. Sure. Don't we? Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon he'd come and work for us? Um, well, he can't be any worse than what we've already got. <laughs> I um, know. You know. So, there you go then, we're giving up, we're giving up radio. We're gonna concentrate on television. Carl's gonna probably go back to what, your little, just doing your well, sound. The thing I won a silver for at the Sony's. Funny that, mm. isn't it? Oh, you won a silver, did you? I got a silver, yeah. Oh, for yeah, doing, what was that for? for doing the proper job that I do here in the week. Oh, well, no, it was two of you for a start. Yeah. Well, there's three of us. Can't even get a bronze. Now, who's the weak link? <laughs> right? Well, a bit weird, isn't it? let's get. Let's look. Let's get, let's not argue. We haven't got many shows to do. To be fair, though, this this show is, is. I think it's more to do with the fact that you talk on this show that has brought us down. Right, I haven't said anything hardly today. No, well, this is an award-winning show potentially. <laughs> we'll add this one in for yeah. next year. <laughs> oh. If you could just keep stum, we might have a chance. All right. Well, coming up, right? Come let's on. put it behind us. Okay. Let's draw a line under it. Stephen co-wrote and. Uh, Directed the office and extras with me. Um, you may have seen him in extras as the agent. Uh, you may have seen him briefly in the office. He is a goggle-eyed freak. You referring to the character there, are you? Or? Yeah, whatever. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, well, no, no, it's just a little. Bit I'm just trying to paint a picture for people at Christmas. Sure, Steve. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say goggle-eyed. I think goggle-eyed freaks harsh. You know, these are pretty. These are designer specs. And, uh, right. yeah, admittedly I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit tall, but, uh... Six foot seven. Yeah, but let's not have a go at that. Carl, we've got more like this later. I think we should play a record. We've done yeah, introductions. Pop a little song on. But do you remember well, the first time you saw Steve? Well, let, let's, let's pop a little song on on that, all right? Chat about it in a bit. Mm. All right. Bruce Springsteen. Bit of Bruce Springsteen. Now, uh, it's difficult to describe Carl. I just think you'll have to get to know him over the next, um, two hours. But, um, we have, um... Uh, taking the liberty of getting some stuff ready for you if you want to find out more about him. If you go to rickygervais.com, we've put up a special little page. Go into Who's Carl, and we've put a little biography up of him and loads of pictures. And you have never seen a head rounder than- he looks like Mr. Spoon from Button Moon. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or Bod. Yeah. Bod. Grown up. Like There's it, a yeah. little bit of Charlie Brown in there. He's even Brown. got a little striped shirt. It's perfectly rounded. It's balding yeah. like to- and it's not- it's not a sort of like a-, a Good balding. It's sort of like he looks like a worn <laughs> tennis ball. Do you yeah. know what I mean? He's got a little bit of growth. It's <laughs> yeah. not that sort of Teddy Teddy Savalas cool bald. No, it's just a scruffy little. I don't know what it is. Happy it it Christmas and that. <laughs> 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 what do you think of that, then, Carl? Your introduction to the nation. Well, you know, if we're going to start picking on looks and stuff, like you mentioned before, we can we can go over everyone in this room. What? I mean, let's make it fair. What? Let's have a chat. Let's have a chat about <laughs> about Steve over there. What? What are you talking about? Well. You know, you know how sort of I felt when I first saw you. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, right, don't go mad, Steve. Let Carl speak. Right, this is his platform. No, no, I'm but, just saying you just but, said about painting a picture. Yeah, go on then. I wouldn't paint a picture of that. <laughs> is it? Is what? Is, no, I'm not, Steve. You know I'm not having a go, mate. What, you're a good, what do you, you mean you're not having a go? It sounds like you're having a go. Oh, no. <laughs> well, what did you think when you first saw him, when he first walked into that room all those years ago? Uh, sort of thought he looked like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Steve. You know, you know, but you know that you look a little bit odd. This, this what? isn't like a, this isn't like a shock to you. <laughs> You've had this. How old are you now? Thirty-one. Right, but so I don't you're know. Thir like thirty-one. I don't. I, what do you look like as a baby? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why I, is this a character assassination? No, no, I'm not, I'm not having a go. I'm just saying what it was like. Now, I'm, I'm used to you now. When I see you, I don't sort of double take anymore. <laughs> I just. He's coming out with this. No, but you know, when, when you popped in and that, it was just a bit of a shock. And now, you know, I've, I've got used to it and that. Good, yeah. you're happy now. You can cope now. Mm -hmm. Hold on. You were shocked when you saw Steve Merchant. You told me once you went to school with two fellas who had big heads and webbed hands and feet. Yeah. And they weren't related. Why Why were there two people about your school and yet you find Steve <laughs> freaky? You never said freaky. <laughs> <laughs> you said freaky. Oh you said freaky. <laughs> Carl, just. I. I. I don't want to. I'm not stirring it, right? You, you started a little bit of a war with Steve. Well, you always are have. stirring it. Well, no, 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 well, no. This is what it, this is stirring right now. This is this is the terminology. But do you know that the fellas in your school, yeah. the big heads and webbed feet and webbed hands, webbed hands. Yeah. But but they hung around together, did they? Uh, I don't think they did. And they were nothing to do with each other. No, I think people expected them to sort of knock about together. 
But they, they must have thought, oh, that's, that'd be too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but where did you live? Near a power plant? Well, I mean, why, why did you have- I don't think it had anything to do with that though. Just sometimes you get a little- look at Steve, he didn't live near a power plant. <laughs> No, no. Listen, can I just stop you there, right? No, let me just stop you there because I, I, it always happens as soon as we, we, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a nice day and suddenly yeah, you're having yeah, a go, right? Yeah, I didn't now this has got this got sent on the email, okay? Now this is not me saying this. This is someone who's forwarded a review that was put put on the web. It was a review of your appearance on one of Ricky's stand-up comedy DVDs. Okay, I'm reading. I'm quoting this. This is not me saying it. Mm -hmm. It says that uh, Carl, through a combination of his intriguing way of thinking and slightly less than human appearance. Right, Carl may just be the proof needed to muffle the cries of creationists the world over, as this missing link demonstrates that not only did man evolve from apes, but the process isn't quite finished yet. <laughs> okay, now that's someone else, an external person's opinion of you. But you the, the, the terrible thing about that is Carl's feelings aren't hurt because he didn't understand a word of that. I said the word creationist, that lost it. That, that's it. You, you've got to remember that Carl. You know when um, people say they're talking to their cat and they go, "Oh, look, look at him, look at us." It's like he can understand what we're saying. Well, Carl's got that look, but you know he can't. Can't understand yeah. what right. what you're saying. All right, Carl. All right. No, but all I mean now we're now we're talking about your head and that. Right. When you go back to say your mum and dad, it's Christmas time, right? There's <laughs> a lot of people travelling <laughs> up and down the country, going back to the mum and dad. They probably haven't seen them all year, right? <laughs> when you go back, <laughs> is it a shock to them again? <laughs> <laughs> no. Do, do you know like how you get used to how someone like I say I'm used to you. I see you a few times a week. I don't <laughs> do the double take. But what I mean is when you go back, do they sort of go? There he is. <laughs> Play a record. This is it's I let's leave it then. Let's Ricky's move on like, then because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get angry and we again. haven't even got it's only it's not even twenty five pounds. Oh, Christmas. A little bit of salmon and garf on call. Yeah, oh this is beautiful. Carl, it was you that worked out the maths and worked out I was twenty eight. Because they just worked out I'm twenty seven. You are twenty seven. No way. Yeah, I told- I asked you, didn't I? And yeah, I said- because, no, but what I sort of questioned was, I said, well, if you're 27 today, that means last week you were 26. Well, well done, yeah. That's um, irrelevant. So, so therefore you assumed that I must be 28 then? Yeah. Whereas I- I assumed you were using, you know, your knowledge of maths, no, such as it no, is. No, I wouldn't do that. No, sure, sure. Wow. I, I actually got lost in that conversation because I didn't, I genuinely didn't know what he meant with- would mean last week you were 26. <laughs> I don't uh, know what that <laughs> I meant. I don't know what it meant. Wow. Well, it is Steve's birthday. And he would have been 26 last week. Ah. <laughs> so tells you, uh, you genuinely frighten me because it's those staring eyes. There's nothing behind him. It's this little bald head. Looks like Davros looking at me. Genuine, just genuine fear on his face when he enters into a conversation with another human but what, being. What bit don't you understand? If he was, if he's 27 today, he would have been 26 last week, and he doesn't look 26. He didn't look 26 last week. He looks older than 28 today. You've started on, on his birthday, you're still having a go at him. Carl, I don't look like the kind of hot stud that I actually am. But face facts, that's the truth, <laughs> mate. Yeah, get live with it. it. Get with, with it. Get with it. Jeez. So, what have you been doing this week, Steve? Well, um, I'll tell you what, at the beginning of the week I was, um, incredibly annoyed by Carl. Why? Um, no, uh, well, no, because you, I remember you had a little discussion with Carl a while back saying that, um, you thought he was lazy at times. Yeah. And, you know, you had various criticisms of yeah, his, yeah, his, yeah, his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a call from him, he said, uh, oh yeah, I should have told you, um, I had a phone call, someone said that they were trying to get hold of Steve Merchant to offer him some lucrative voiceover work. Now you know- That is money time. for old it's money rope. For rope. That's it's about, you're in there for about twenty minutes and it's thousands if of pounds. If there are children listening who are still at school, they should definitely, when the careers guy says what do you want to do, Try and get voiceover, voice over work. Work. just become a voiceover artist. It's money for old rope. Yeah. So I can't believe my luck because yeah. you know I love money for old rope. Yeah. And um, I said, well, what's the information? He said, oh, oh, I don't know. I deleted the message. It was on his answer, and he deleted the message. I said, right, when did this come? He said, last week. So he took a week to tell me Why? that he had deleted the message. Why? Just because it wasn't for you? I mean, I don't know how selfish that is, Carl. Is that, no, what happened is, right? I got back off holiday. Mm. I was at home. Yeah. So I called up my voicemail. Yeah. Right, because I can do that. Yeah. Remote access, right? Because I've got to know what's going on at work. Of course. Called in. It was still my day off. I was going through the messages. Yes. Heard one from some company saying we're after Steve Merchant. Yeah. We want him to do some voiceover work. Yeah. Right. Mm. I can't remember the name of it, but Thanks. I thought right, I'll, I'll remember to tell Steve. A week later. It doesn't matter, does it? You still got the message, and they. they what, what, what message? Yeah, but voiceovers have to be done in the next couple of days. But I didn't days. get the message. I got all I got was there was a company I don't remember the name, and they phoned you. They wanted voiceover. Uh, well, how does that help me? There are hundreds of thousands of media companies. I, I you didn't take down a number. You didn't take down a name. Nothing. I, I was more puzzled why they'd want you to voice anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a go. I don't know 
know what? I don't. Yeah, but listen to that voice. You must be annoyed. You must be you annoyed. Wanna, I mean, talk about rubbing salt into the wound. No, but listen to you. Oh, God. I don't know what you- I don't know how you think. I don't know what- how your mind works. Well, I was thinking there must be a tractor sail on somewhere. <laughs> What do I care? What's no, going on? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The I don't care. Turned. I don't care if they want me to advertise, you know, <laughs> the latest designs in pirate fashion wear. I will do a voiceover because it's money for the rope. I don't care what you think of my voice. Someone was interested. They were offering me money. And you decided arbitrarily, oh, they probably wouldn't want it. They probably made a mistake. I, they wouldn't like the way he talks anyway. I'll delete the message. No, the thing is, right, I what get paid. Been a girl? I get paid to sit here on a Saturday, yeah. right? Play CDs and that, help out with the show, get your decent prizes. I think I, I, I do me bit. Sure. Right? It isn't about running your voiceover work. So hang on, so Carl, let me just get this right. If someone was ever to phone me, right, trying to get in touch with you, to offer you work, you'd want me to just ignore the message. That is what you're saying to me. You'd prefer that I deleted the message, I ignored it altogether. That's what you'd want for me to do. That's what you want me to do. What, someone's calling you for some Someone's phoned me. They say, oh, oh, I can't, I don't know, I, I, I'm a friend of a friend, I've got your number, Steve. Uh, I'd love to use Carl Pilkington for a, 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 an well, exciting sex scene. Well, you've never called me, so has it happened? Has well, it happened? well, that's what I'm saying, in the future, if it was to occur, <laughs> if it was to occur, do you want me to just ignore it? Is that what you prefer me to do? Uh, well, it's not like that, though. I, I did tell you, I told you the message. You didn't tell- what? You told me a week later with none of oh, the information I needed. Carl, um, that doctor called last week, that kidney's ready for that, um, little girl that you were doing that sponsored walk for. I forgot to tell you. Oh. I hope it's still all right. They keep it on ice, don't they? I think they do. <laughs> selfish, Carl. So selfish. Well, we went, I went out with drink with Carl in the week and, uh, we went to uh, a restaurant, didn't we, Carl? Good night. And we sat there and next to me, when Carl came, next to me was, uh, um, what's his name? Ross Kemp. And uh, he was sitting there, and I saw Carl, and I I tapped him on the shoulder, and I, him on the shoulder, and I pointed to Carl and him, and I said, "It's nice to see you two back together again." Nice. And Carl was horrified, but Carl didn't know that I'd already spoken to him before Carl arrived. Yeah, so yeah, was, yeah. I thought yeah. it was okay. I thought I could break the ice because I'd met him before. Sure. So he just thought I was insulting him. And in the week we were talking about his head, his little head, weren't we, Carl? And Carl suddenly stopped the conversation and said, "If I had hair, what would we be talking about now?" <laughs> I think he had enough of everyone talking about it. And he looked good though, he had, he had his, his special little do, he had it sort of, you know, cropped a little bit more. I like it when he's just freshly had it done. Mm. Do you like- yeah. has, has that ever happened to you, Steve, when you- if you're somewhere, say if you sat somewhere, does someone sort of, you know, is he anyone else who you look like, or <laughs> would you say you're a bit of a one-off? <laughs> I love these two! But, I, I, but to be <laughs> fair- I <laughs> <laughs> no, but, whoa, whoa, to be fair, uh, he seems to be having a go at me an awful lot more than I do at him now. I mean, he just starts it, you know, he I just think, starts it out of I, nowhere. I th yeah, I think, I think his is sort of a get back for the way you treat him as a producer, not, you know. But he's not a producer! <laughs> <laughs> if he produced the show, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a reason to criticise, uh, I think this is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, seriously, I mean, it really winds me though, because, you know, it started as a joke, but now it's just, it's abuse. Yeah. It got annoyed at Heat because it said Carl's producer, well, not so much a producer, as just a bald mank. And he yeah. went, can they say that? Yeah. Can they say that? See, that's a magazine, an independent publication has identified what exactly it is you do. Yeah. There we go then, go on, bring it on, because here we go, he's looking at me, I know he's thinking, he's, no, I can hear the cogs I'm not, I'm not thinking anything. It's <laughs> vicious. Yeah, no, that, that is true, never <laughs> true a word, play a record. <laughs> Beautiful bit of, uh, Snoop on XFM, yeah? Mm -hmm. Kicking it with, uh, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, 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 sweet, yeah, sweet, 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 sweet. Uh, Steve Merchant and, uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what has happened to Carl? Because Carl, I thought, is, you know, is this sort of sweet little buffoon, almost childlike mm. in his his ways? You know what I mean, like Charlie Brown after some sort of head injury, and <laughs> and now he's and now he's coming back like that, having a go, at, not not caring about voiceover work. It's like because he have written about him a couple of weeks. It's like he thinks he's better than you in no, some well, way. I do care though. You're out of order saying that, right? Because I sorted you out with tickets for stuff. He Carl. doesn't turn up to Carl. I received a phone call, you deleted the message offering me voiceover work, you're as bad as my agent. <laughs> I don't- I'm appalled by it. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. Ah, uh, at least his agent, when he does it, is losing himself money as well. Yeah, he, you, he, you, he, he, you, exactly. You've got no comeback, you're still sweet. And to have a go at his- you- you've got a mank wine. 
right? Her voice. Like a cartoon Gallagher brother on Coronation Street. I mean, and Steve's- I mean, yes, Steve does sound like a, a Wurzel, but that Thanks. doesn't- Do you know what I mean? No, no. A, what about Jethro? Jethro does well. Jethro gets on Des O'Connor any time he wants. Just has to phone Des up. And he's on there. Straight on And there. he's whining like a Wurzel as well. So, you know, to say that that right, is what, a rubbish- Alright, apart from that then, what else have I done? That's wound you up. But that's 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 a that's a good starting point because you haven't even apologised. No, it's a shock because that's the first time I've let you down, and I didn't really let you down because I passed on the message. You didn't. Well, we've been through it. You didn't okay. pass on the message. Saying I deleted a message for you is not passing on the message. Yeah. I mean, I just think what's happened is that you've got a little bit of celebrity now from the show. I, I mean, I've seen you being yeah. recognised in pubs and stuff, where people have come up and they said, "Are you Carl?" Because they've seen Ricky. Now it just seems to me that you are not keeping yourself grounded. You are just—you no. cannot deal with fame. You've not got the intelligence to cope no. with the celebrity, oh. and you're just becoming no, this kind getting. of ego-driven no, monster. Getting. No, it's getting. No, it's getting. It scares me, Carl. Getting you're not the man I remember. Look, a bit I, I put a lot of work into this yeah. on Saturday. This isn't my proper job, right? Mm. Where were you in the week? Oh, yeah, he's got you there. What? Where were you in the week? I said, I said, let's meet up, let's, you know, come up with some new features and that. Where were you? Carl, you phoned me yeah. about an hour before you wanted to meet. That is not what I would call. I is mean, that, that is arrogance right there. That's the way I work. That's arrogance right there. That's ego right there. He couldn't, he couldn't go, uh, it, I, uh, when I came in, he said, where's Steve? I said, Steve can't make it. I had to tell him why. Steve was staying in to tidy up because his landlady was coming. This, this he couldn't get over. He could not get over that you couldn't make it because you had to stay with your landlady. Is is he talked about it for about the hour when we were working? What are you talking? I, I last week I had a bad throat. You yeah, wouldn't what, tolerate what you that. Last week when, that? You had a bad, when you had a bad throat, where, where were you? <laughs> Why couldn't we do any work then? Because you're at home with your mum and your dad. <laughs> you, you were on holiday, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> Why didn't you get your mum and your dad to clean the flat? <laughs> He's done it again. He's hey. done you again, mate. Play a record. How has he done me? What? <laughs> they live in Bristol. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The joke's on you. He couldn't get him to clean the flat. Ah. <laughs> I don't know who's laughing at who then. <laughs> right. Listen. Can right. we just go back to laughing at Carl? Okay. Because I know right. where we stand there. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you okay. want to, uh, That's the natural order of things. <laughs> I know, yeah. The world's gone topsy turvy. <laughs> he's, he's stepped out of the pecking yeah. order. Right, well, someone who I don't let down, right, are the listeners of this show. <laughs> do you want to, uh, read out the prizes for uh, the busters? We'll get, okay. we'll get that one in. Oh, we're are not we not doing, doing rockbusters again, are we? Yeah. Well, it was a shambles last week. We, we cancelled it two weeks ago. What? Oh, it just—I mean, there, there you are, right there, Rick. I mean, both you and I. And let's be honest, we're the guys with, the, with our names on the poster. I know. It's yeah. supposed to be your show and, and yet, our faces. Exactly. And yet <laughs> we have to have—we have to be on tube stations with people laughing at yeah. us. Yeah. Well, they're not laughing at me, really. They're, they're well, a good I don't know. Better, what do you think people think of the poster, Carl? Seriously. Uh. No, I don't want to know his opinion. It's just going to be insulting. <laughs> My yeah, point is this, he was Rick. Looking at you. My point is this, Rick. We used to be able to decide what the content of this show was. I now know. it's him. It's just him. He wants to do rock busters. He gets to do it. I know. And it's it's awful, rock like, like, uh, Tourette's Trent Darby. Not only is that offensive, it doesn't work as a clue. Saying that, have you come up with anything for this week? Oh, he's only gonna write it down for a whole fucking year. <laughs> that, of course, signifies another reading from Carl's diary. This is the last one of both 2006 and uh, on any podcast for a while. Let's make the most of it. Let's enjoy uh, some of the wisdom. I of also Carl think Robinson. it's the last time ever he will make uh, an entry in this diary because um, you're not going to keep another one, are you? Um, I don't know yet. I might just get a smaller one. But I found that since keeping a diary, I've gone out of my way to do more stuff. Well, you say that, but. Well, let's let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. No, I have. I read a bit in the news about people being injured while trying to cut open avocados. Mm. It's a food that ain't worth injuring yourself for. <laughs> if it's a hassle to get into, leave it to the experts. I have never bought one. I have also avoided coconuts and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> The amount of hassle to get into these things outweighs the joys they give. Yeah. It's the same reason I never bought a pair of Dr. Martin boots. Too much hassle when it's time to take them off. Yeah, a lot of my mates used to wear them in like the 80s. You know, the, you can't just kick them off, can you? It's a big upheaval. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've, you've got to un unlace them, you All mean? The, yeah, I mean, I, 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 since I found shoes with Velcro on them, brilliant. Just the way, I, I don't understand why laces- Is it because you can't tie your laces? No, I can do it, but it's wasted time. You're I so lazy. Wasted time. That gives him more time to sit around and look at insects How eating biscuits. How long does it take to take off a pair of boots? Well, it's ridiculous. Seconds. He can't fit his days as it is. No, but I don't understand how some inventions 
sort of catch on and other things don't. But uh, this is what I mean, he's got too much time on his hands. Sitting around at home thinking, why are we not using Velcro more? But why there's one Velcro not? manufacturer going, yes! At, at last! He said what needed to be said! Why don't you get it sponsored? Cause you could wear a Velcro toupee. <laughs> Cause that would be great if we could do that. If someone could invent a little hairpiece for Carl, Velcro's the little bit of fluff he's got on the top of his head, his shiny orange-like head, pop a little Velcro toupee on. I would love that. I would love to get him wearing a wig. But no. why necessarily reduce it to a toupee? Why not some kind of carrying device? You know, he could carry goods and, uh, things around in there, sandwiches. Yeah, he doesn't look like carrying a bag. Well, what about that? A little thing you carried around, a little Velcro thing you carried a pot on your head. For- for your sort of, like, keys and trinkets and money and that. Well, no, I've- I've- I've told you about that idea that's out there but hasn't caught on as well, the- the tie. Right. The tie with loads of pockets and stuff in it. Yeah, but you gotta wear a tie. Yeah, but th but that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I've never wore a tie because I always think, what's the point? It's just standing there in the way. <laughs> Can you imagine this image of Carl walking around <laughs> in his big Velcro shoes, a tie with an apple stuffed in it, <laughs> car keys, <laughs> yeah. iPod? No, but don't you think it's a good idea? Would you wear it with a shirt and collar or just a t-shirt? Um, no, wear it with a shirt. That's what I'm saying. It's an invention that will smarten up the world. Now, a tie, what does a tie do exactly? Yeah. What does it do? Nothing. Right. So I'm saying make it do something. But I'm saying don't wear it at all. Pop your keys in the trouser pocket. No, or because, take a bag. because the world is getting more and more scruffier, isn't it? When you look I back don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. When you look back at, like, Victorian times and everything, everyone wore a hat. Right, they wore a tie, they wore a suit. And it was a nicer looking place to look at. When you see it on pictures, you go, what a smart world that is. Mm. Well, you can't see cholera and things on pictures, but sure. No. No, but I'm just saying it's better to try and cover it up with a bit of, you know... Cloth. Yeah. Yeah. The world looked nicer with, with more cloth. Whereas <laughs> now everyone's rowing about scruffily. So, so what I'm saying is, if we make the tie more useful and give it a purpose, it might come back and the world will look tidier. But a tie... Its purpose is to look smart, really. Well, originally it was because we didn't have buttons, so it kept the collar up at the front. That was the invention. It was a useful invention, the tie. Yeah, it's It was fine. called a tie. It tied together, okay? Yeah. So then, when we, uh, we had buttons that we didn't really need the tie, but it was a symbol of, of smartness, like saying, I've made an effort, yeah. okay? But now, that would go away. So now, you wouldn't look smart with a tie. They'd go, oh look, it's like a bag round his head with his, with his apples and oranges and his, his keys and his sticks he's making a nest out of. So it would- it would be scruffy. It would make the tie scruffy so it would defeat the object. So now when you're carrying stuff round, I mean, crawling on all fours because you're shopping so heavy round your neck, <laughs> they'd go, look at that scruffy fucker on all fours. Oh no, oh no, but look, look at his lovely head of hair. <laughs> it's Velcro! <laughs> it's a hat! Yeah, well that's the other problem, isn't it? I can't go back to a wig now. My theory about reading old news is right. It's less bad when you know it's old. It was a story <laughs> about a weatherman who was fired yesterday for having a nude picture of himself on the internet. But that happened two days ago. He's probably got another job by now. So old news isn't as shocking. Well, old news isn't news though, is it? It's olds. <laughs> what are yeah. you doing? Just reading the olds? No, but what I, what I mean is if, if someone- Stick if the video on of uh, last week's news, I just want to catch up on the olds. Yeah, but but then it's still news. If you, News is something that you don't know, isn't it? If someone tells well, that's you That's everything to you. That's information, Carl, not news. Yeah. But, but news is information. No, and the, what, key, the key with news is the word new. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think it is, is it? It's, 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 is. Just, it's just information, but they tell you at ten o'clock at night. It's like, what information's gone on? Bong. Here's some information. Yeah, that you didn't know before because you couldn't have because it only happened today. Bong. Yeah, but never mind that. I'll tell you in a couple of days. It doesn't matter as long as you get the same info. Bong. <laughs> yeah, we can't call it news though because it's misleading. We'd get done. It's called olds. Bong. Yeah, but listen to me theory. What I'm saying is, is that if someone in your family, you know, I don't want it's Christmas and that, I don't want to bring the tone down, but someone dies in your family. Mm. Now say if you're away on holiday and they don't call you because they don't want to ruin your holiday. And you come home and they go, Uncle Frank's dead. And you go, oh, when did that happen? And they go, two weeks ago. Now, because everyone else has got over it, it's not as bad for you. Because part of bad news is the way everyone's walking around moping, going, oh, have you heard the news? Frank's dead. But because everyone's got over it, time is a healer. That's what, that's what I mean about old news. It's but better you, than new but, news. But, yeah. But according to you, the only news that really matters is stuff that affects you. So it doesn't matter when you, uh, 
There was an earthquake. When was it? Yesterday. Phew, that's all right then. Often the aftermath is worse than the actual event. Two, you only care about things that actually happen to you. So the doctor goes, you got a kidney stone. Oh, when did this happen? Uh, two weeks ago. Oh, that's all right then. Doesn't make sense. No, but the world uh, but you're is- You're not- you're not upset about dead Uncle Frank just because other people are upset. You'd be upset personally. Wouldn't make any difference when you- when they told you. Yeah, but it- it is everyone else's emotions that- that make it worse, I think. Knocking around people who are miserable. What about warnings? What about when they do things like smog warnings or, you know, there may be a- I don't uh, like it on the news when they sort of say, news just in. I think, oh, what's this? You think, oh, what's going on? But it might be useful might to be know it. might be important information. No, it just makes you panic. What? Yeah, but- but sometimes knowing stuff keeps you alive. Yeah, I- I don't know if I like it. It's- it's- sirens, you see, I don't like sirens, do I? I've, I've said to you, I think it's a- a scary noise. Well, it's meant to be, so you get out of the way. No, no, it's not meant to be. It's- it's a sign to get out of the way. I'd prefer it if it- like There's I a said, voice. Oh, Hiya! Could you just move out of the way well, it for it can be us? anything, as long as we know- it can be a chicken noise. But as long as you know oh, that's that chicken not freak noise- people out. <laughs> no, but it sort of make you smile, but you'd- you'd go, oh, let's get what, out of the way. you're cycling along and you hear what sounds like a giant chicken behind you, and you smile, because you know that even though someone is burning to death, <laughs> there's something <laughs> clucking in my way. Do 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 That's probably a guy having a heart attack. <laughs> Going to my mum and dad's today, oh. uh, I'll cut to the chase freak, they basically, it's like, we got about four pages where they drive to his mum and dad's. Oh, Jesus I'll Christ. skip past that, because it yeah. takes fucking forever. Got there, <laughs> mum and dad, his mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just pop that in brackets. <laughs> just pop that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose man was a witch. <laughs> whose man was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <coughs> because it probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't- she knows she's gonna die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out, put it into perspective for her. You <laughs> will be dead when this happens, don't be worrying about it. But everybody worries, don't they? You've got that little sort of hole in your head that you fill with worries. You know, everyone's got to fill that <laughs> little worry- worry hole with worries, and that's us. Worry hole! Everyone's got to we've fill the worry hole with worry- We've got to assume that there's a worry hole. A worry hole. Don't I'm filled with worries. I love the fact that, you know, uh, doctors in a million years would dig this up and go, humans used to have a worry <laughs> hole. <laughs> Went to bed around midnight. Susanna and I decided to sleep tops and tails, because it made me get a bit more room. Me dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes <coughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. Mm. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roll Dahl book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think a anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you, and it normally works. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what, how long that is, but he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain in your nuts. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is he, is he, someone took his brain out of his worry hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He saw the mattress enough. So we decided to sleep tops and tails. It just gets stranger. It's so strange. Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the, with the cupboards on either side. So he sorted a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine how much hard it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What, a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been, yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some, some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So he's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. Unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> man alive. It's like- Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats with better bedding arrangements. Well, we've had a bit of a bad thing in our house about mattresses and that, because when we first bought our uh, first flat in Salford, you know what it's like when you buy somewhere, you, you, you sort of, you haven't got any money, have you, to buy extra stuff that you need. Mm. So, we bought a bed, right, but there's that rip-off thing with beds where you buy a bed, but a mattress doesn't come with it, mm. which I've never understood that. Because it's not a bed, is it? Without that mattress, it's not a bed. It's a car without an engine. You wouldn't go there. You go. Well, that seems cheap. Well, there's no engine in it. So we bought this. We bought this, like you know, uh, flat and what have you. And we bought the bed, and then uh, like, oh, we haven't got a mattress. 
So my dad got one from Uncle Elf. No, well, from that Uncle Elf fella, because he had one in his van that he used to use now and again. If he was, like, travelling round, he'd just keep in the in the back on this mattress. Amazing. A bloke who drove round in a van with a mattress in the back. So Uncle Elf, point. so Uncle Elf, right? It, well, tell me about Uncle Elf. Well, you know about him, he's the one who slept in a dinghy. Because his mattress was in his car! <laughs> no, yeah, why didn't he go, oh, well, Alf, where's the bed? Left it in the car again. Oh, blow up the dinghy. <laughs> blow up the dinghy. I'm not gonna go out and get the- not this time of night. So mm. anyway, it, me, me dad got me- got me his mattress and, uh, and it just stunk a diesel. <laughs> and Suzanne was like, oh, I'm not happy with this. And I think she realised sort of what sort of family- She got herself into. Wow, she landed on her feet when she got you. So initially. now she's always a bit touchy about, you know, mattresses and things. Unbelievable. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Uncle Alf, of course, sadly passed away when he couldn't escape from his sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> the fire engines were too late. <laughs> no one got out of the way because they were laughing too much. <laughs> the mad woman next door saw me and said, Hello, Clive. <laughs> you live in a nursery rhyme. The old man down the road, yes. the old woman next door whose mum's a witch, <laughs> Uncle Alf who lives in a dinky. <laughs> And not a real place! <laughs> it's like fucking Narnia! It's, it's a children's TV program! Unbelievable! Oh god! Oh! Just all of them there on this broken mattress trying to find the golden ticket. Oh god! <laughs> oh god. The old fella down the road talked to my dad a bit. He kept bees in the back garden. Oh, for fuck's sake! Here comes the bee man. His Yorkie dog was knocking about when he was messing with them and it ended up getting stung 150 times. <laughs> oh, little bastard! What is he doing? <laughs> it's oh. not dead, but it cost a lot to get all the stings out. I don't know why people keep dangerous pets and insects. The amount of gear he had to wear to play with them is barmy. I don't think he's playing he's with them. He's not playing with them, is he? Well, he's, what is he doing then? Well, I don't know, but I think he should get the dog the same protection. Yeah, but but uh, that's just it, isn't it? It's like you can't mix your pets. If you've got a snake, you don't have a mouse. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? They don't get on, and it's the same with them. They don't have bees. I can't imagine one bit of enjoyment. The, the, the only thing he does is the honey, and it's like, well, how much is that to buy? It's not worth messing about wearing a big white suit just to get some honey. There's a shop down the road. Bees are kept for a very good reason, aren't they? What for honey? Yeah, no, but like I say. You can buy honey for next to nothing. Where do you think- what do you mean? But w where does the honey come from that you buy? Yeah, from- from some proper bee farm. Let yeah. them do it. All he's doing, he's not making loads of pots of honey. Mm. He's looking after himself. And the thing with honey is it doesn't go off either. No, it doesn't, no. So- so get ten bees, Yeah. get the honey made, kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> but you- you eat the honey, that's the point. Yeah, I know, but it that's doesn't. Funny. You can't eat it, and then it's still there in the jar. It's not magical. Maybe in your world, no. your un Uncle Fred had that never-ending jar of honey. But how much honey do you eat? What I'm saying is, it's one of them things in it that you buy, and you can move into a new house, buy some honey, and when you leave that house, that honey's still in the cupboard. You don't <laughs> eat that much of it. So get ten bees. Get your honey's worth. <laughs> ten bees. Imagine keeping ten bees. <laughs> well, just get them to do do the graft. If you got loads of bees, they're not all pulling the weight, are they? Because they go, well, I'm not doing any, because I'll leave it to the others. No. Like if you've got ten bees, you know that none of them are pulling the weight if there's no honey. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, they don't, no, it's not a workhouse. <laughs> bees don't knock around saying, ah, oh, I've got a bad back. Anyway, back to uh, this reading from the twits. <laughs> <laughs> the news covered a story about a fish that knocked about 400 million years ago. Mm. It was 33 feet long and had a jaw strong enough to eat a shark in one go. Mm. All the dangerous stuff seems to die out, and yet things that you think wouldn't stand a chance, like worms, are still here, yet they have no legs or eyes. I saw a future human in the news article the other month about the future woman. She had three breasts. They looked all right. Well, no, that's not- uh, I, I can't see how that's gonna ever evolve. No, well, they say about how, um, about evolving and that, I read that, um, there's gonna be ugly people. People are starting to go ugly. Yeah, they're still gonna have bilateral symmetry, I imagine. I, I don't know what that means, but well, I'll, tell well. you, I'll tell you now, right? <laughs> well. They're talking about like people who are just like, you know, you look at them and you go, oh, what kind of state of that, right? Mm. And it'll get to a point when we're all so ugly that no one will have it away and we're just gonna die out. Well, that's not true either. <laughs> that's not true either. That, that is the biggest worry. Well, no, so- That's the world's so, biggest so worry. So as we evolve and we change, uh, our mindset doesn't change. We're still going. Oh, I wish we'd. I wish we looked like they did a million years ago. I don't fancy anything. No, but look at um, 
Look how things do change. But why are we all gonna get ugly? I don't understand. It's just the air and stuff, isn't it? It's just, um… The air? Or yeah, the hair? Yeah, you know, the, the air that we breathe and stuff mm -hmm. and, uh, the food we eat. Everything's changing. And we're not gonna look that healthy. And, uh, we're just all gonna go ugly. You've only gotta look at some stuff that's in the sea and you think, look at the state of that. What's and that that's because with the human evolution. But, but the stuff in the sea is still longer. propagating. Yeah, but they've been around longer than us. But it's still reproducing, so your theory falls down. But they're deep down, aren't they, in the dark, so they probably can't see what they're having it away with. <laughs> if they were up on the outside, they'd have died out ages ago. Why? Because they wouldn't fancy the other stonefish or Yeah, because they're really odd-looking. I can't remember the name, I think it was a viper or something. It's to, it was just a head. But Carl, the a reason- A fish that's just a head. <laughs> it was well ugly. <laughs> Watched a program about the twins this morning. It was filmed sixteen years ago. They are mental. They did everything together, including the vacking up. Phone calls had to happen twice so they could both have the same chat, and they said the same stuff at the same time. Well weird. The bloke who I watched it with, I don't know who that is, just some homeless guys that you just invited into the no, flat. just someone I've been sort of working with. Sure, a mate of yours. He said he fantasised about having it away with a pair of twins. I don't see the point in this. If you're gonna have two of something, I would prefer to have two different. Have two different women. If I had two cars, I wouldn't have the same one twice. Same rule with women. <laughs> I don't even normally like buying the same pair of trainers twice in a row. No, if you're gonna have something new, make it- make a change. It's like that fella who was going out with a woman, and then left her and went out with a twin sister. Not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth the upheaval, is it? Cause it's exactly the same model. I watched the final of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It was between singer Jason Donovan, singer Mylene Class, and singer Matt out of a boy band. I had my money on Donovan, but Matt won it. I think it was because of his last task. He ate a fish eye, some grubs, a big fat insect that they have on every year, a crocodile knob, and a kangaroo anus. I feel like That's we've uh, we've we've come there, Rick, to to where we entered. It was this sense. time last year when we first started the podcast that um we were talking about I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And you coined the famous phrase, I could eat a knob at night. Yeah. So it's full circle, which is th th the, the last series, uh, finished recently. And it was astounding that he ate a crocodile knob, he ate a crocodile eye, he chewed up and swallowed a kangaroo's anus, which I, I, to be honest, I didn't know was a food stuff. Could you eat any of that? Um, if I had to eat any of them, it would have to be the anus. What, m really? Yeah, more than the other stuff. I couldn't eat anything that's still alive. No, I agree. Uh, I, I couldn't eat any of that. I don't, I don't know under what circumstances I'd have to go, right, that's it now, we're not gonna survive, the ship isn't coming, there is nothing on this, um, island I can eat, give me the, the cat crocodile's penis. So it wouldn't bother me. Wouldn't I, wouldn't, I could eat anything. I could do almost all of the challenges on that program, but I couldn't cope in the camp. I couldn't cope with the lack of food and the uncomfortable bed. That's all that would do my head, and I'd drive people spare, whinging and complaining. I, I couldn't cope with any aspect of it except the physical challenges. I couldn't cope with sleeping with people snoring, the, uh, things crawling over you, uh, oh, I'm not, 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 not so squeamish about that, like snakes and things, that's alright. But the eating would, is, is ridiculous. It's out of the question to eat a worm or a grub. I, oh. It doesn't concern me. I don't know why it's, I don't see really what the difference in it. The texture's probably the same as lots of other things. What would mean? hunger do to you though, do you think? Would you think I would change? Do you think, if it really was a choice, if someone said, and I knew I would die if I didn't eat worms. I think that. you would, yes. I think you'd complain and you'd whinge for a while and you'd try and put it off and you'd hope a ship would turn up. But when it didn't, you'd start chowing down on a bit of uh, crocodile anus. But then where's the rest of the crocodile? Well, yeah, that's I a good point. I say he's been eating that. How come I've got this? <laughs> you know, you're meant to, you know, work together as a team in bad time and yet I'm being handed an anus. Forget it. Let me starve. Well, thanks for listening. That was the, uh, the Christmas podcast. Um, we should say the winner of the last competition we did. Um, they can win the, um, the podcast book and, uh, Flanimals and, um, the extras book that's out, still available. All available. And the CD. The three, the three CD set of the, yeah, of the best yeah, of the podcast, yeah, is that right? Series one? A, a brand new hour, if you haven't got that, get out, maybe you've got some record tokens. Yeah, if you've Christmas. got record tokens or book tokens, those are the perfect, uh, things to spend them on. Or fifty pounds from your auntie. Exactly. Go and buy one of those. 
Um, and the winner was uh, Stephanie Prowl from the Wirral. Well done, Steph. Well done. Well, thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. That's the end. That's the end of the Christmas podcast and the end of this uh, this team for a little while. Yeah. It's been great. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye and Happy New Year. And goodbye from Carl Pilkington. All right. All right. That was all right, wasn't it? Yeah, it's good. It's all right. What um, are you doing now? You got time for a coffee or something? I can't now. I'm going to the, um, you know, the orphanage for uh, terminally ill kids. Oh, yeah. I'm going down there. I'll go down there every Christmas and talk. Do you? Like, Do you? Uh, entertain them. Oh, stuff, well, yeah. that's lovely for them. Yeah, no, I've uh, actually written a song I'm going to perform. They, they see the office and see that I sing in that. Uh, You've written a song for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, could we hear a bit? I mean, what? I don't want to put you on the spot, but no, you've got, I, you got the guitar there, is it? Yeah. Um, I this for a, a kid. He's a brave little guy. He's only about ten, but um, uh, it's just, it's heartbreaking. He's ah. Oh. Don't cry. It's Christmas. Santa's coming soon. Though you ain't got a mommy or daddy, Santa still loves you. And he's riding on his reindeer to trample down the gloom. So don't cry, it's Christmas. Santa's coming soon. Don't cry, it's Christmas. Santa's feeling kind, though you know you'll never see him. He's not just in your mind, and it's not that he's invisible. It's because you're going blind, so don't cry. It's Christmas, Santa's feeling kind. Don't cry, it's Christmas, Santa's on his way. Though he's got a billion children, and he's only got one day, you've got slightly less than that. If I were you, I'd pray. But don't cry. It's Christmas, and it sounds a little gay. Why oh, isn't that be quite moving for everyone? Yeah, I'm just, I would. I just. I would ask you now to not play that song. Too late now, they're expecting. But I I, I'm not but sure it's going to be as well received no, as you perhaps hope. I think that's better than any gift, and I don't really want to give gifts because they're expensive. So. Sure. You know, speaking of like weird stuff and that, I've got a new. Well, we uh, weren't, but go on. No, I've got a new book. Do you know I had that Freaks book? Top 50 Freaks. Got a new one sent to me. Really? Uh, yeah. And do you know, like, everything um, normally has a name. So, like, if it's uh, the two-headed fella, you know, they're all nicknames like that, aren't they? They've got two nicknames, I imagine. Uh, but this new book I've got, right, yeah. on the cover of this one, it's got, like, a woman with three breasts, right? And she's called the, the three-breasted woman, as you'd expect. <laughs> the one face... Why is she posing nude, though? That's what I want to know. Tart. Well, she looks happy. <laughs> and there was a, a fella with, like, one one face but two bodies. In one face but two bodies. <laughs> One face, two bodies. What do you mean so one weird. face, two bodies? <laughs> Surely you one head, two bodies. Uh, head as well, but it was mainly the face. That was weird because he looked fed up. <laughs> sort of... What are you talking about? How what are you, you talking about? A face a head? How can you have? What do you mean? How did it join to the neck? No, it did. It did have a, a head, but the fact is, it, it was weird that I had one face to me. What do you mean? Well, if you got one he head, had, you'd yeah, have one face. Yeah, I know, but it was just. It was the fact that. He had one face and two bodies that I didn't think... But why do you keep saying one <laughs> face and two bodies as opposed to one head? head and two bodies? We're all the man with one face. Yeah, but now I've got one body. Yeah, well, surely he's the man with two bodies then. Again, the description. You, oh, oh, roll I'm, up, roll up, see the man with one face. <laughs> I know, yeah! So it's, it's full of stuff like that, right? And what I'm saying is, that fella, you know, the one-faced man, the three-breasted woman... He wouldn't be known as the one-faced man, is what I'm saying. Well, they've all... That, they that all, isn't the peculiar thing about him. Yeah, well, they all had names like that. Right. But it was one thing, in it that didn't even have a nickname. It was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It was ju it just said un unidentified. What, what does it look like? Um, Sort of 
sort of testicle size. <laughs> That's, 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 they just reminded me when you were talking about What do you mean, strength. testicles fries? And what is it, do they have a normal body? I didn't even look at that. Oh, for f no, So- that's what I'm saying, though, you're attracted to, to the odd, oddness of the thing. And that's what I was saying about Warren when he walks in. Warwick. You know, it, it, it'll be odd for a minute. And then, I'm sure- For him, it'll for him it will be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'll get used to you. I've got my head round it a bit more, and, and the way that there's loads of people in the world, Mm. And yet, you don't see people with, like, dangly eyes more often. It amazes me. <laughs> I love the fact that he's amazed by not seeing Fritz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. He's walking down the street going, oh, everyone's got one head. That's yeah. weird. Suzanne, I don't see any dangly eyes today. No, me neither. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? What's going on in the world? <laughs> oh, he's only got a really down! <laughs> that jingle there signifying, of course, once again, another reading from the diary of Carl Pilkington. Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints, um, just bring us up to speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital because previously you'd had I've been treatment. in and out, honestly. I've been yeah. in and out of that hospital just with uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you. And, uh, yeah, you had kidney of, stones, all right? No, no, sorted. but seriously. I had a bit of a lion today because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob, but I also have to get up at 5.50. Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but you, you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, okay. I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots, and it's my job to do the washing up. So much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that. People who get their last dinner on death row don't have to wash up. Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other page. You were yeah. five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later I'd been knocked out. I got woke up when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it and there was no hiding place. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. <laughs> it's... it's the Roswell incident. Ricky and Carl are here now. I don't even need to say your surnames. Hello. Hello. Hello, Carl. All right. You're all right. Going? Yeah. yeah, it's Good. going all right. Like Frank and Liza. This actress, Jessica Chastain, who is going to be huge in a year, I think everyone will know her name. And I was at the premiere last night of her film, and I said, Oh, when you come in tomorrow, you'll meet Ricky Gervais. And she started screaming, going, Oh, I saw her at Madden Square Garden, and I've seen all the office and extras. And I said, oh, You'll also meet Carl. And she, she, if anything, she screamed even louder. Oh. She's just screaming all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got her on for. <laughs> God. Uh, <laughs> it might oh, be a condition. Yeah, she can't communicate through words, God. just through screams. We've got something for it though, she, if you take these lithium pills. She's alright for an hour, so don't worry about it. Well look Carl, you've got a following in America now. I think of that. You see, what, what a lovely compliment you just passed on there from uh, an actress who's come to this little island, she's gonna be huge, She's nice, and and you do. Look at you. I wasn't this in her. I just your, said she's coming in screaming. Language. You know when you when you feel so when you go to a some sort of uh, zoo in a country that hasn't quite got their animal rights together, yeah. and you see these old chimpanzees just sitting there rubbing their head, and they've got neuroses, and they're you know a you, bit you, emaciated. I know you. you feel so sorry for them, and you want to like him now. That's just like him now, rubbing yeah. his head. That's comfort. That's what that's what all simians do to comfort themselves. They just touch their head. And that, like, oh, what am I doing here? So how's it going? It's going all right, Carl. It's going all right, thank you. <laughs> he is right. You look as though you've just been See? told you've got a week to live. Because I've been all over the place. Where, where? Where have you been? You name it, I've been. If you had a globe in here and you span it and popped your finger on it, I'd be, yeah, I've been there. France. Well, not for the series, but I've been there. Yeah, well, um, your, your kitchen. Yeah, I've done that. But, no, I've been everywhere. I've been to Alaska. 
Uh, I've been to Thailand. I've been to Vanuatu. What's that? Exactly. That's what a lot of people say. They don't know where it is. I'd, I'd never heard of it. The globe that I've got, Vanuatu, isn't even on it. Yeah, but it's a blow-up one, isn't it? It's not. It's a proper one. It's a proper globe that I've got, and I looked for it, because I always, like, I, I was doing, like, you know, like on Wacker Day, when they used to put stickers on a globe. It's a cracking reference there. <laughs> no, for anyone who had a job in the 80s. Timmy Mallet, he had, like, a map, didn't he, and he'd say, hey. <laughs> I love the fact that your geographical knowledge, up till now, was based on Timmy Mallet's Wacker Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I've been to there. I've been to New Zealand. I've been to Australia. I've been to Japan. Just got back from Japan about now, three days let's, ago. Let's explain what an idiot abroad is. So this is where Ricky, yourself, and Stephen Merchant send him to places he doesn't really want to go to. Well, he does want to go to them because he, he, we drew up a list. Um, uh, I've got we a sort list. Of found, we sort of found the top 100 sort of... Uh, um, people's bucket list, things to do before they die. That's the list That's that, that I okay. I've, been, I've been passed the list now by Carl. Right, and they're, the, they're the, before you die. They recur, they're the 100 most popular things that we could, we could find, we compiled that, and we let him choose seven. Um, that's not to say there weren't little surprises along the way. Why do you pick old ones? Like, in the, in the first episode, you mm. go to a remote island on the other side of the planet, look at the number 65 is Skinny Dip at Midnight. He, he doesn't go nude. I don't do nude. Oh, right, okay. Don't like doing nude. Would you be happy being nude? No, but you could you could knock that off, couldn't you, in ten minutes? Knock what off? <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that uh, uh, he says nude. N-O-O-D. <laughs> no, nude. I'm not happy with that. I know, like, I th would you go nude on the telly? No. I, I think there's I something wrong with people when they do that. I don't, I, I don't think, I'm not happy doing that around the house. Just walking around with out on. You can understand why an actor would have to do it for a part. I don't, I know, I don't actually. What about if the part... We know what's the there. What are they showing us? Why does that happen? It's not. It's not great acting. Taking your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why they have no, to do it. But and it just makes it awkward no, when you're watching some, it with your mum and some, dad. No, but sometimes it is necessary because it would ruin the piece. Like what? Tell me a film where you've gone. I'm glad he got his tackle out. Well, uh, um, no. But when you're showing something, uh, you know, it could be some a uh, form of. Um, degradation or something. Someone going they into prison, have... sometimes they have an important scene where they're yeah. searched and they have to take their clothes off and that might be integral to the plot, so therefore you have to see it. But see you just it do it, you do it, they did... D Look, you've watched Jesus and Nazareth. Yeah. With Mary had a baby. I well, don't know what this is. Is this, a, is this a Boney M song? What, what, what are you I'm talking say, about? What I'm saying to you is, what? you take things as, as given. If someone's pregnant, you don't need to see it happening. Too much sex on the telly. No, so, I agree. I agree. I think ninety-five percent of it is gratuitous. Right, and, like, and that's normal. what I just was but, saying. But so, but we're not talking about. We're talking about um, when it can be justified. Sometimes it would be worse not to. You know, it'd be better not to, to, to have anything than have a pair of pants on something. What about if you're going to uh, stay with some tribe and mm. they will consider it enormous disrespect for you not to strip off? Then well, that in, happened, in didn't it? Well, that happened in this yeah. first episode. Well, in context, that would then be acceptable, wouldn't it? That would be the right thing to do because it would be disrespectful not to do it. It's not gratuitous. No, it's, it's all about societal pressure as well. We, we, we you know. We... Yeah, but at the same time, Richard, that happened, and it's not about Ricky and Steve didn't send me to that tribe to wear a thing called a nambas. <laughs> they just wanted to see me try to get out of me getting me tackle out. Yeah, I don't want to see his tackle. I like him struggling and feeling uncomfortable about the, um, you know. Uh, the chances that you might get it, you know, I, I don't ever want to, I must say, I never want to see him nude. Can you but... expect a lambas? It's it's like pants made of leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Or wicker. Or uh, just you know, anything that's You know dolmades, that Greek dish with sort of rice wrapped in a little vine leaf? Yeah. That's we what it is. <laughs> it's rice ridiculous. A vine yeah. Leaf. I would have looked ridiculous. It, it, just, we're going to play a clip from the first episode in a moment. Just to come up, first of all, at the very beginning of the episode, Ricky, Carl doesn't quite understand the premise of 100 things to do before you die, because he says, no. he's like, why would I want to swim with dolphins if I've only got, you know, a day minutes, Yeah, he thought it was immediately before you die. Like, someone's really sick and ill on life support, and you chuck them in a pond. All right, well, that's saying, then. That's saying, live every day as if it's your last, yeah. like Ronan Keaton sang about. Yeah. I don't think I'd be up for doing much if it was my last day. No. I'd stay in. No, no, again, the point what? of that phrase is that you don't know it's your last. So, because we don't know it's our last, every... But you can't moment. live like that either, because what do you do when you've got bills to pay and you go, oh, I've spent all that, I thought it was going to be the last day. It's well, a that's, ridiculous but thing that's to all, live by. But that's what? all part of it, isn't it? it pension, mean, you get a pension. Yeah, I don't so, know how long I'm going to be around. Yeah, it doesn't mean go and get a credit card and live it up and hope you die tonight so you don't have to pay it back. It means every moment is precious. Our life is finite, so... Live every day like it's your last. Live every 
every moment, savour every good meal, every fine mm. wine, every nice experience, because it might be your last. Carl, if it was your, if it actually was your last day, and you knew it was your last day, what would you? Well, do that's with, different. What, what would you do? With that's it? very different. I'd probably it, just. Um, God. Well, I'll be out the doctors. <laughs> yeah. Well, not if, you, if there's no point, no. All right, I won't do that. What would you do? Just stay in. Just watch, watch a film. Watch something. I, I'd hope it. I, I think I'd hope it was a miserable day. I won't want it to be sunny. I've thought about that. If I was dying, yeah. I'd want it to be horrible and miserable outside. Mm. So I'm not going to miss it. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not bothered. Really, really? Not bothered. Probably eat something that's not that nice. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that thing of your last supper thing when they do that on the you know on, yeah. on death row. Is yeah. there anything more depressing than that? Is there anything sadder and more depressing of someone choosing their last meal? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, let's not get into the humanity of it because it's pretty disgusting anyway. But the fact that they make sure you haven't got flu before they execute you. Well, the, the fact they use new uh, syringes. Yeah. I don't get that. Yeah. Use used ones. <laughs> Yeah. What does it matter? Yeah, good point. <laughs> that is a good point. Brilliant. <laughs> that is a good point. I don't suppose you'd Some have much of an more highbrow discussion on Five Live. <laughs> it is. I don't suppose you'd have much of an appetite for your last day anyway, or you're on death row. Let me just play a clip when you, when you were on last time, because you'd done the first series an Idiot Abroad, which was going to the Seven Wonders of the World, mm -hmm. and um, you were, I mean, you were so adamant, oh, no. so adamant that you wouldn't do a second series. I don't know what I want to do at the moment. I don't know. You're definitely ruling out doing another series of An Idiot Abroad. Yeah, no that's happened. Way. No way. No way. What about if it rates really well? It doesn't matter. Remember, I didn't know what it was going to be like. I thought it was going to be a bit more like a holiday. I now know what it's like. And if you do a second series or something, he's got to get madder, hasn't it? Look at Jack Bauer. 24. It was believable at first, and it just starts getting mad. It was, it was not believable Well, more believable in series one than it was as it went on. That's why I don't want to do, what's wrong with just doing something once? <laughs> right. Carl, what uh, happens? Well, I've got bills to pay, haven't I? I've got bills to pay. So, I've I, got it to do took me, It took me six months, didn't it? Gentle persuasion, every time we sort of went out for a drink or went for a meal. Well, it was meant to be the natural wonders. It was talk of that, I'm going, I'm not doing it. And then they said, the bucket list idea, you can come up with what you want to do. And, you know, I thought, well, I'm, I'm deciding, so I'll do it. Plus, I was in a programme called Idiot Abroad. Options aren't flying in work-wise, Richard, when, when you've got that on your CV. When the idiot in the, it refers to you, yeah. you become known as an idiot. But mainly money, that's why does anyone do anything? Yeah, well, Attenborough messing about in the jungle at his age. He doesn't want to be in there, neck eye in mud. <laughs> He's doing it because it's a job, isn't it? Mm. Why Why are you sat here? <laughs> well, that's not true, is it? Because you could do something else. So it has to be a passion as well. Um, you enjoy, you know... I don't know about that. I think most of us, you don't always, you can't always pick what you want to do. You do it because money. Oh, but, but you're you, proud of the show, though, aren't you? But you are picking I'm what you want to do. I'm happy with it now. It's over. I think it looks brilliant. You said to me before, you said, oh, you watched the first episode. It looks amazing. It looks what, beautiful. What do you say to those people that, that think you're whinging? You've been all around the world. You're getting well paid. You're You're on Sky. You, you know, people are interested in what you say, you, you've written books, you know, you're under the wing of Ricky Gervais. I mean... Yeah, well, that's why it's happened. You made it happen. <laughs> yeah, but what do you say to those people that think you're whinging and that, that you should be oh, grateful? Oh, shut up. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't know, do they? They don't know what it's like. Everyone just sees this 45 minutes of telly. They don't know what I've been through, where I've stayed. I'm not even moaning about it anymore, it's because you... people don't listen. Ricky, do you remember a couple of times ago when you were in and, and we rang Carl and he was at home and he was... You were grouting, I think. I was grouting, You yeah. were grouting. Yeah. How did that go? It's all right, yeah. Yeah, good. Broke the vac doing it. How do you... What do you mean? Because when you're grouting, it all comes out. I had a... I had a what's it in a Dremel. That's what I told you about. Yeah, Dremel, yeah. And it was going everywhere, dust. So I used mm. Henry the Vac at the same time mm. to oh, sort of I catch see. the dust. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blew it up. Yeah. Blew Did up you? a Vac. Yeah. You got a new Vac? Yeah, I bought a Hetty. Is it a Hetty? I have no idea. The pink one. Okay. Other is this this isn't actually going out, is it? it? <laughs> I think it might we can be. edit this bit out, aren't we, to make it a little bit tighter and more <laughs> exciting. <laughs> well, we will do with the podcast. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, Carl, uh, my point was this. When I spoke to you on the phone, you were said that you hadn't seen any money from series one and you said ricky keeps talking about this pot of money where's the pot so i've not seen it honestly have you, have you found you? honest to god unless you know I, I haven't seen the pot and that's part of why it is i don't want to go this is like talking about 
some sort of pension plan. Look, the point is that when you uh, own the format, it's back end, which which means that they see where the profit is, the whole show, the sales abroad, and that takes. We're just. It's only just the the office, the American office, has only just started showing the syndication rights. It's worth waiting for, Carl, but. It's going to be a while, and you, you've got money to go along. I don't know where you spend your money. I know. Last time he said, oh, "This is unbelievable." We we're out to dinner, um, me and Jane, without with him and Suzanne, and he was talking about Christmas, and he's moaning about money as well. And I know how much he's got, and uh, <laughs> and um, he was going, "Well, she's had a flaw." She's had a flaw. He got a flaw in the kitchen, and he was trying to make it that his girlfriend's Christmas present that she'd had a flaw. It's unbelievable. And it's the floor she wanted. I know, yes, but, but you walk on it. You, you, she's not the only one that uses the floor. It's not what you have to. You don't. You don't have to jump to the cooker. She doesn't it's her know floor. what she wants. <laughs> she's had a floor. She's fine. Brilliant. She's well, spoiled rotten. Everyone feels sorry for her. You know, she's she she has got it good. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> she gets what she wants. She's already talking about Christmas presents, and I say, to, I sit down and go, right, what is it? Because that she you keeps want? saying, yeah. Carl, don't forget this year. No, because I just want to know how much she wants something. Yeah. Right. She sits down. I go, what do you want? And she'll say, yeah. and I'll go, right, why do you want that? Okay. And I quiz talk, her on it. Let me talk about two Christmas presents that I know of. Just two Christmas presents. Yeah. One, he gave her the camera that he got at a leaving do, still wrapped up. I said, there you go. You wanted a camera. Well, that's one. Uh, it, 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 it really just handed it straight over to Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. right. Why does that matter? I can top that. Something else you don't know about. Sky, after the last series, mm. gave me an iPad. Right. She got that for Christmas. <laughs> but you're saying it like you're proud of this. I'm not proud. I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with it because she wanted one Did of Did you tell her that it was a second-hand gift? Did yeah. you take the Sky logo off the wrapping paper? No, I don't think I did, but it's what she wanted, so it doesn't matter where it's come from. I think the, I think the, the one she's um, most pleased with was the... Uh, the uh, bumper family pack of condoms, two for one offer you got from Boots that year. Right. There you go. Did that actually happen? Got used. Let's take the travel. We get to base and car. Not with me. I'm joking. Oh. I'm joking. Oh. Twenty past two. Oh. Louise Pepper. Oh. Dig us out. Go on. The West Midlands. Carl's got to go at half past. Um, and uh, what, are you going out to do some? Was it like your boiler broken? No, no. Just things to do. Okay. We don't like sitting around out staying me welcome. <laughs> and you wouldn't be, um, but we'll talk about life too short. Carl, what do you say to those people <laughs> who say that um, it's all planned and scripted? An idiot abroad. That what? What do you say uh, to those people? You've, you've spoken to the people that say that you're whinger. You said shut up. What do you say to the people that think that? I'm not bothered anymore. I'm not bothered. Uh, a lot of people do think that. A lot yeah, of people think that what you do is an act. Don't yeah. they? Forget it. <laughs> whatever, whatever they want to think. Because what can you do when people are like that? <laughs> One, I don't understand why they think it is sort of a scripted thing. I don't know why they think I'm an idiot. That's the first one. Because I'm not an idiot. You wouldn't say that, would you? No, you're not. Of course, you're not an idiot. Right. So we can agree on you that. Say, you say you say you say funny things because you have a different outlook on the world. Uh, Carl's one of the smartest people I know. He's not the most educated, right. and so he's got gaps in his, his knowledge, and that's what's funny. He's also very opinionated, and he's different, right? But there's no way he's, he's honestly one of the sharpest people I know. And also, we put him in that situation to get the best out of him. I know exactly how to get this funny Carl out. He's not that all the time. When we go out for a drink, I'm not. I'm not making him do stuff. Well, I'm not. I'm not. Wow. Well, so, what so, were you doing the other night? Tying a napkin around my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was an experiment. Yeah. Mm. That was an experiment because I wanted to show him the tourniquet. How uh, yeah, if you yeah. tie it and then put a, a, a simple lever in it and turn it, you can get so much pressure. It, you nearly burst, didn't you? Your yeah, head nearly yeah, burst. Yeah. So and you learned something. It's like it's sort of like Blue okay. Peter. I don't want to bring up Blue Peter again. <laughs> <laughs> those days are gone. Those they're a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, Too soon for those jokes. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I feel that um, it, it's. I, I love this ten-year experience I've had with sort of educating Carl. Is Not that in a long patronizing experience? way? Yeah, ten years. Um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Yeah. He's also he's also my best mate. I can't get enough of him. We are mates. We do this, and he knows he knows why I do this, and it. it but it doesn't mean. He doesn't still get angry and annoyed when he's stitched up somewhere mm. um, on a shelf 
on uh, on a Trans Siberian railway. They thought it was in first class, and um, I changed the ticket to third <laughs> at the last minute. You know, so they're still funny. But you do it like mates do it. You do it like mates do it. I, I, I think some of the things you say are really wise sometimes. But then I you do agree. I agree. Uh, but at the same time, some of the stories you tell. Do seem fanciful, so I, he's I, having a go now. No, I'm not. I'm not having a go. I'm not. Having, I'm not saying they're not true. It's just that they seem, uh, yeah, implausible. But they, I, mean, I, I don't think you're. A, I don't think you're a liar. I don't think you even have the capacity to lie. But it, it, there's that story. This might be from your old XFM podcast. Where did a mate of yours or a neighbour keep a horse in the house? Look, what? Y yeah, but what? So hang on, I've just got back from Africa, where someone's got a hippo in the house. <laughs> Do you don't believe me? What, what, what do you want? What can I do? It's not my house, it wasn't my horse. I'm just telling you. Where did you, where was this? In Manchester? Yeah. Yeah, on the estate. Someone that kept a horse in the house. Horse in the them. house and, but you know, they didn't, they didn't have much. They didn't have that much money. They couldn't afford a stable. So it's in the house. Do they have kids, a... kids on estates get spoilt sometimes more than people with money. Mm. So they'd spoilt the kid and got it a horse, but nowhere to keep it. Exactly. So it was in the house. No uh, carpet in the house. Massive telly. They always have big tellies, don't they, in these houses when they got out. The horse liked Coronation Street. <laughs> it was just that one wandering around. I went round because I was flogging um, Dead horse. plants in pots, right, yeah. raising money for uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a horse in the lounge. Was it sitting on the couch? It was just wandering around. Did it go? Hello, can I help you? But that isn't that unbelievable, Richard. I mean, it, no, it's weird. It, it is strange. It is weird. Yeah, but then there's this weird thing, you know, that there are weird things Please. on estates, you know. And there also, are. people have uh, heard the podcast, which is, you know, like 40 hours of Carl talking about his childhood, but he's got, you know, 35 years to tell. I mean, if it happened every day, those weird yeah. things, but, you know, yeah. they're sort of condensed, and, uh, and we've sent him to places where there are these strange customs to us, um, uh, and there's no better man to do it. Could I just say in defence of Idiot Abroad as well? Yeah. Um, it's not a comedy show. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's planned um, behind Carl's back, but everything Carl says is the first thing that he thinks. It's not. It's there's no filter with Carl, and I think it's a really interesting and dare I say it, quite important documentary. It's it's beautifully made. It's I think in terms of uh, comparing the first to the second series. I think it's it's moved up, hasn't it? Good, isn't it, it? It's yeah. Some of the photography is as good as your you know your Attenborough shows. I think. Yeah, definitely. You look as though you're enjoying it more than the first series. I've only seen one episode so well, far. It's over now, isn't it? And I've done it. I've been everywhere. It can't be anymore. So now I can enjoy it. It's what have I got to worry but about? But you had some good times on screen this time, didn't you? Yeah, I, I sort of. Um, I don't know. I think I tried to enjoy it more last time. I moaned a lot and I was trying to get out of it and trying to come home. This time I was like. I know this is how it's going to be. Stop moaning. Get on with it. Let and I, I tried to, yeah, I tried to enjoy my let, moments. Let's play a clip here. You don't enjoy this bit. This is you from episode one of An Idiot Abroad, uh, series two, when you attempt, or nearly attempt, a bungee jump. We could have gone straight to the desert island, but instead we've come all the way here for a pointless occasion, because it's not going to happen. <laughs> I said I'm not bungee jumping. When we talked about the whole bucket list thing and Steve was going, oh yeah, bungee jumping, that's, that's what people want to do. They might, but I don't. And this is meant to be my bucket list. I've been on the world now for 38 years. I don't need to introduce this now. Oh, I'm just creating a new problem if I do get into bungee jumping. I don't want to change. I don't want to get into this. Carl, let it go. Look up. Bring that chin up. Focus on that now. Nah, forget yes. it. Yes. No. And you're going to die there. No, I don't want now, it. Carl. No. Honestly. See, so what was that noise? I just made a noise I've never heard come from me. Yeah. Uh, there's that noise again. No. Yes, you are. No. You have got it, mate. No. Forget it. Forget it. Come on, Cal. Come on. No, this is cute. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. For, for anyone watching online on our cameras, which are at bbc.co.uk forward slash five live, you didn't appear to uh, enjoy reliving that. No, it took place. me right back. Mm. It's weird. Looks it's weird. good on radio, doesn't it? All that HD looks wonderful. The scenery. <laughs> yeah, on you radio. were just saying how good it looked. I yeah, know, <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> it was a mank bloke talking. Oh, here he is again. Mm. Just the same. This looks just as good. <laughs> no, but that's just a small bit of it. I mean, I, I it, quite like the, uh, you know, meeting people and stuff around the world is quite good. Cause we just. It's any experiences same. that he's had that you were jealous of that you've looked back and think I'd, I'd like to do that or I wish I'd done that. Um. Well, most of them. 
really, as long as I didn't have to stay in the same rooms as w that I put him in. Um, but yeah, uh, um, there's some things I agree with him, you know. Uh, in fact, you know, I, I do agree with most of the things he says that, um, but, um, uh, I would, uh, I'd love the wildlife experience. Yeah, I'd love to do that one day. He came face to face with a mountain gorilla. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, the, the guy out there with him said, Carl, you know, I think we wanted an Attenborough moment. We wanted him to say something profound. And, uh, Carl came up with, they've got little ears. <laughs> It's good, isn't it? No, it's, have you ever had to do any presenting like that when you've got to sell a, an important moment? Probably. You did Obama coming to yeah, in charge. Didn't yeah, you? I did. Yeah. Just imagine if you'd have been the first bloke out on the on the moon. They'd, they'd written you a little thing. But he had loads of time, didn't he? Armstrong you was sat in a rocket for you hours. Okay, you've just done it. You've just stepped out on the moon. What's the first thing? It's, no, no. But what I'm saying to you is. He was sat in that rocket doing nothing for ages. Right. He was doing a crossword or something, I read. They really? came up with a pen that works in space or something, didn't they? Yeah, I think- He I, was I, doing I, all that. Apparently. A pencil. Well, no, exactly, no, Russia yeah. did that. Russia yeah. did the pencil. That's right, America spent like 100 grand on getting a pen that worked in space and Russia took a pencil. Whereas when I was sort of trekking for the gorillas, I walked for about eight hours and the guide kept saying, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, all right. 15 minutes. Well, hang on a minute. How long are we walking here? And it went on for eight hours. And then I get there. That's because you were going too slow, so the gorilla was getting away. If you'd have gone faster, you'd have got caught up with him. So I get there, and the bloke with the camera's going, right, quick, say something. Look at the camera, say something. This is the moment, you know, it's going to keep moving. So even though I was there, I couldn't enjoy the moment. They're all looking at the gorilla behind me. I've got to come up with something looking at a camera about this special moment. And it wasn't a special moment. My feet were wet. I ate wet socks. But why was Neil Armstrong had ages in the rocket? I didn't You had eight hours. No, yeah. because it's tricky, Richard. It and was after, up and down. After, you'd, after you'd pointed out they got little ears, what was your profound statement? Do you remember? <sighs> I think I'd, I think I said I say it best when I say nothing at all. So yeah. just film that. He quoted Ronan Keating. <laughs> I don't, but he's he quoted qu Ronan Keating. <laughs> because? After meeting a silverback mountain gorilla. Right, what would you the have wild. said then? Come on. What would you have said? That hasn't been said already. I'd have said, life, did it I'd have said life is a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, you know how to say you're welcome. Do you want to say just like five more minutes? Ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Great. Ten more minutes. Carl Perkins is here. <laughs> eight five. If you put your own questions to Carl, eight five oh five eight. It's uh, two thirty two. Here's Justine Green. Thank you very much, Bob. Bob. But Carl, you look like you're in constant pain. No, I'm just. Um, I'm, I am still jet lagged. Are you okay? There's a text here that Ricky Gervais and Carl Pilkington are here. And when is an idiot abroad two on? When did it start, Ricky? Friday. It starts on Friday. It's it's on nine o'clock. And there's Check a book in. out from series one. Yeah, that's still number, number one. one. It's doing all right, that. Mental. I mean, it's. A, I told him that. I, I, I told him the sales, the DVD, the DVD. I mean, the book and the DVD we sold about a million. Right? Nothing. Nothing. I tell him all the, these people that, you know, like you, these people that I talk to at the Golden Globes and these award shows. They not impressed with it. The only thing he's impressed with. It's being is, paid. That is all no. I want, Richard. That is all I do this for. <laughs> like no, else. no. There's that one. the one no. thing. I love it when I get a check in the post. Yeah. You're never there yeah. to witness no, that. No, you don't. I'm you moan about it because you say, oh, I've got to pay tax and that, I've got to do this, that, guy. Yeah, well, yeah. everyone else sticks yeah. their hand out, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> he, 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 oh. But that is why... But the one thing, we, we um, I'm just working on um, the third series, The Ricky Gervais Show, the animation. Yeah. And we're just finishing it. And I showed him the finished first episode. And he loves that. He watches those over and over again. He, lo he loves watching himself as a cartoon. Why? Because it's not him. It's and not I, like him. Yeah. It's like they've added to it and... It's I, things I, we said. It, you can watch it like it's not. I watch it like it's not us three. Well, I forgot a lot of things we talked about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and they and and they've got better and better. The third series is better than the first two, and it got better and better. But um, I I, I really love those. I think it's a lovely little little gem, isn't it? Carl, like, yeah. How do you feel? Cause how do you feel about getting recognised? The, the the fame aspect of it. Do you like that? No, not really. Why not? Um. I th because I'm not, uh, I'm not that sort of person, really. I just like keeping myself to myself. Does it happen a lot now? Yeah, not, not. I mean, I don't go out. I don't put myself in situations where there's loads and loads of people. I wouldn't go to say a Glastonbury or something like that, just because I don't want to become across I, miserable. No, I, I never, never really cared for it. I mean, I, I knew going into it that 
if you know became a successful actor or comedian you'd, be, you'd become a famous one but I was always wary I didn't want people to think I'd signed with the devil you know make me famous and you can go through my bins I never signed no. that contract and it's you've got to be careful what you say as well because people think you're ungrateful it's like I, I did an interview recently and they said about oh do people bother you and I went no everyone's really nice I said I have to avoid pubs um, sometimes a drunk would come and say, oh, I have a drink with us, and you have to go, oh, I'd rather not, and they think, oh, you've changed, and I go, no, no, I haven't, I never used to drink with strangers. But the headline was, I'm too famous for pubs. I saw that. So, it said it you hadn't been in a single pub in ten years. Well, it, it, it makes me look like I'm complaining, or I, I've started the conversation. Like, I've gone into a room for the journalist said, listen up, put I'm too famous for pubs. I love pubs. It's like, but there, and Carl's very aware of this, people, there are some, and there are a small percentage, that are out to twist your words yeah. and make you look like you've changed. They build you up and you want to bet. And I think Carl's very aware of that, and, and he hasn't. He hasn't changed a bit. In fact, he's got slightly more Carl. The more I've known him, the, you know, um, so, uh... I, I like, you know, it's great if people come up and they just go, oh, I like your programme, I go, cheers, and they wander off. Mm. What else do they say? It, no, it's just the freakier ones where they want to know everything, or they know everything. It's like where they know, know the podcast even better than you do. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't like. Yeah, that. Well, don't but like it's it. the ones that think they know everything and don't. I mean, the problem is that everyone's, uh, you know, I've got a blog. Everyone's a journalist these days. Everyone's a critic. So, um, you, th th there's these conspiracy theories. I mean, people say things that they really think they know. I've heard that. Da -da, I know for a fact that you know. They do. Carl's an actor called Graham. <laughs> that you know they they, they it's, it's, you know they work out how rich you are. And they and it's like, you know, but fans are it, fine. We 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 couldn't do without fans. We we like people that like what we like, and they buy well. Of course we do, you know. But um, I, I think you do have to draw the line of privacy because um, because I, I think it's your right. This you know? phenomenon of people making an informed comments online is remarkable. Now, if you go on one of our f uh, favourite pastimes, I might not be the right phrase, but a pastime is going on the Mail Online. Picking an innocuous story about a celebrity and looking at the Seeing comments. The hatred. That it, it, I love comments. I've done a few essays for uh, the Wall Street Journal, and you know they're probably contentious issues because some of them, I, I suppose, you'd count as controversial, particularly in across Middle America. That I, I talk about, you know, science and atheism and those, and the comments are incredible. I mean, just what sort of things? Oh, just brain dead, ill-informed Ill people like the devil's going to kill me tonight. You want, to, you want to laugh because you want to go, I don't know where to start with that. You haven't read the essay. <laughs> I'm not scared of the devil because I don't think he exists. In it. And th then, then you go to the real hatred of the people that think, you know, um, uh, abortion is wrong even if it's the product of a paternal rape. And you want to go, I don't know where to start. Mm. I don't know where to start with this. So you have to sort of like uh, walk away. I'm intrigued to know. Why you... wasn't he looking both ways? I'm intrigued oh. to know how you uh, how you get run over. And what was it, 1629? Yeah. Well, it's horses and that, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, why wasn't he looking both ways? <laughs> Carl, Carl Pilkington, you are a genius. Um, like I say, it's been a struggle. We'll 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 do that. We'll do uh, cheeky freak of the week. Do you want to? Oh, definitely. Should we do cheeky freak, we of, the freak of the week? I, I can't wait. I've, I'll always do these. I'd start off with these. All right. Well, let's have the jingle for cheeky freak of the week. Oh no. Do you remember it? No. I remember it. Oh. Uh, oh cheeky freak of the week. Brilliant. Something like that? <laughs> I want someone because that was slightly uh, half hour. Oh cheeky freak of the week. Excellent. Right. This uh we're going back again. Yeah, seventeenth right. century? Uh well it was it was eighteen twenty nine, right? <laughs> oh. I'm impressed. Um, yeah. Now the problem is with cheeky freak of the week. Um not so much the week, is it, if you're going back to eighteen twenty nine? Well... Not even of the century. You haven't even done Cheeky Freak of the Century. Mm. There's... What's the problem with Cheeky Freak of the Week? Just because... <laughs> Other than the sort of moral implications. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah! Well, last week, it was a fellow with two heads. Yeah. Mm. We've done Siamese Twins, it's Siamese Twins again. Oh, it's no, Siamese it was Siamese twins, twins, twins. It wasn't a fellow with two heads last week. It was Siamese Twins. Conjoined Twins, sorry. They're two different people. Mm. This is what I'm telling you. But this is the problem, they're going to crop up quite a lot just because they've got double a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? <laughs> oh, uh, please don't write in and complain. He knows not what he does. You understand, don't you? Uh, Carl will actually feature one day in this section. Yeah. So, right, go right, on, well, Carl. We're going back to uh, 1829. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, All the way back there to 1829. This is a retro conjoined twin link. <laughs> uh, a couple of guys set up a business. Uh, they were called Chang and Ang. Oh, they're the first. That's why they were called Chim Siamese twins because they were weren't, weren't. Wasn't that what it was based on? Those two, Chang and Ang. Was it the original? Yeah, that's why they're, they're called Siamese twins because I think they were Siamese. So these are the first ones. Uh, well, they not the first ones, but they're first the ones one. that got to fame, I think, and why people started calling them. The people started calling conjoined twin Siamese twins. I right. think I'm right there. Anyway. Yeah. Um, well, the, the sort of, uh, set up business, sort of going around, uh, the US. Well, both of them. And Europe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what they used to do, people were amazed by it anyway. Yeah. People wanted to know how they get through life doing certain things. That, that you, that you think about, when you think about Siamese twins, you think about, you know, how do you get through a day like that? Yeah. Right? Um, and the thing that cropped up the most with people was how they take a bath. So they used to go on tour around the US and Europe and uh, sit in a bath, <laughs> have, a, have a wash and that. And, uh, Did they ever wash each other by mistake? They go, oh, 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 that ends there, that ends there, like those things in supermarkets. They put <laughs> yeah. one of those down, we go, oh, 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 you, you put that there. What do you mean? You know the things on the conveyor belt, the little the little dividers. Yeah, they but, wind me up those dividers. Now it's Chang and Ang. They're in the bath. They're washing their own bits. They've got one of those dividers, right? They go, "Well, that's that's definitely yours. I marked mine. Mm. That's definitely mine. Mm. Don't wash that, Chang. I won't. I wouldn't, Ang. I wouldn't wash that. Right. So what what are they doing? They're in the bath. Carry on with the story. Uh, that's about it, really. I mean, Jesus. that's that's the <laughs> the fact that people. So two people. Two little oriental fellas joined in the hip, had a bath. No, no, That's no. That's no. your story. No, they didn't have a bath. They sort of, everybody, they must have done some sort of research, right? Who? Changarang, right? And they said, well, what do people want to see? Isn't that Bay City Rollers song? But it's an idea that people have queued up, they've paid them money, they're in a tent, they're going, well, I hear they're going to have a bath, they're going to have yeah, a bath. Two, two Siamese people are going to have a bath. How would they possibly do it? Well, I've heard they get into a bath. But that, uh, that's I don't really know what they wanted exciting. to see them nude and where, where the join was. No. More than uh, how do you get in the bath? I don't know. They just that's that's what they picked. They <laughs> said, "What what would be good to see? What what, what do you, you know? What do you want to see them do? Having a bath? How would you get into trousers? Was there? Was well, exactly. This is all part of it, isn't it? That's why they picked having a bath. <laughs> <laughs> this is all part of it. Well, then once we get dressed afterwards. Yeah. Who was the best out of Chang and Ang? Who was your favourite? Uh, they both look the same, to be honest. <laughs> There's a surprise! One was a short ginger woman. <laughs> oh dear. Is there anything you, you know, what what would be better than having a bath for you and you'd seen them? What, what would sort of make you go, oh, I wonder? Oh, one of them pulling and the other one going home alone. Yeah. They're going like, look, look oh, she's definitely up for it, I'm taking her home. Going, oh, what am I going to do? Can I watch? Definitely not. Definitely not. Look, you go to bed. I want to. I want to wine and dine her. But if they, if they, if he's got her back to their place and they're going at hammer and tongs, but are you saying one of them? No, hammer and tongs were their cousins. <laughs> right. They lived. They lived miles away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if one of them gets knackered, can the other one take over? <laughs> God, I think we can play a record. That annoys me. What? Well, that, that sort of being at it all night. <laughs> what do you mean? Let's put a song and I'll come back. What to do you it. mean? The controversial cheeky freak of the week, where Carl. Um, finds uh, a, a human being with um, some sort of uh, congenital or, or uh, you know, um, imposed deformity, or you know. So uh, and we talk about that in a, in a wry way. Do you think that? Do you think that's big and clever? No, but that's that's just it. It's never about taking the Mickey out of someone, right? It's about it's to make you think. I'll tell you what isn't big and clever. How lucky you are! A dwarf that. with learning difficulties. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> we'll explain it to you. <laughs> Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, he wants you. Brilliant. Of him. Yeah. So, Carl, off you go. Well, we, we, we're we not going to do uh, Freak of the Week here. Okay. Right? Because we've we've done quite a bit of that in the last 20 minutes. Right? You've so OD'd we'll on that. Freaks, you think? Yeah. Sure. We'll just shift it a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I don't like to keep saying, don't want people to be thinking we're sort of taking the mick out of anyone. <laughs> No. Right, because we're not about that. I feel that, like I can do a little bit of it because I work with 
with you, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> right? Sure. It, it gives yeah. me that right. It's like a care worker. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like that thing of, you can't be homophobic because I've got a couple of gay mates and sure, stuff. Sure, sure. It, I think it sort of gives me that edge. Yeah. Right? So, so you're not freakophobic because you work with Steve? No, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, they, but they, by, by, by that token, I should be able to sort of slag off, you know, the mentally ill. What do you mean? At least mentally handicapped. Now, there's a term you don't hear very often. In, in 2003, <laughs> the mentally handicapped. <laughs> the mentally handicapped. Oh, I don't know where to start. But I, I I'd like to apologise for the Lady Diana stuff, uh, the <laughs> term mentally handicapped, um, and any inadvertent racism that we may have stumbled What's over. What's the actual term then? <laughs> <laughs> Is it retarded? <laughs> right, are we oh, having uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week? Do you want to do it? What yeah. time have you got shot? Could do with shooting off sort of soonish. Okay. To be honest. <laughs> this is not radio. <laughs> Have you ever heard that on a radio <laughs> show? Know, Chris Tarrant going, I can't shoot off a radio. I I really, I, I didn't, it's I couldn't get a later train. <laughs> I know! Get a, why'd you get a later train? There, isn't, there, isn't, there isn't a later train. So I couldn't get to Cornwall tonight if I had to. If I had to finish this show, I couldn't possibly get to Cornwall. Rubbish. Oh. Of course there's a later train. Oh, I've, I've, I've booked it now anyway. Right, well, that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. You're not fully Whatever, through. whatever. I don't think the show's lost anything. I think we've still had the, you know, <laughs> Freak of the Week's coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheeky Freak of the Week. Right, well, uh, we've had some, uh, interesting things we've been looking at. <laughs> uh, this week, it's, uh, it's about the strangest couple that ever got married. <laughs> 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 And, I, and we've had two sets of chimps, yeah. so it's stranger than that. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not Dale Winton and Nell McAndrew, <laughs> It's is not it? your parents, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going back again to about, I think this is about 19, uh... <laughs> Something like that. 1940. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, stra strangest couple, a fella, right? He had skin of a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> he had the skin of a lizard, okay. <laughs> And the woman Which who he married- Which he used as a condom. The yeah. woman who he married. Yeah. Uh, airiest woman ever. <laughs> right. Um, and that was their act. They used to, uh, tour the world, and they'd say, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, couple who've met, they're having a great life. Uh, let's get them out on stage, here they are. <laughs> and they'd, uh, they'd What do you out. mean he had a skin of a lizard, first of all? That's what, that's what it said, he, he had some sort of, uh, some illness. So he was called Lizard Man, and you liked that because it was good description. I uh, thought that's good. I'm here. I'm here. Hello, uh, did, did we booked a table for two? Who are you meeting? I'm meeting Lizard Man. Oh, he's over there. Yeah. You know he is, right? Yeah. I'm Look meeting out. the hairiest woman in the world. She's over there. Yeah. Yeah. So what did they do for their act? Um, now, bear in mind that we had some Siamese twins last week, and their act was having a bath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I did, hope it's an improvement so on that. Liz, what did Lizard Man? He came out and ate some flies, did he? I don't, I don't really know. I think, I just think they stood there and that. Yeah, what do you, when you read this and you, it goes, the most interesting fact ever, uh, lizard man, and you go, that's enough, that's yeah, enough, yeah, well, I can extrapolate from yeah, that. But straight away I start thinking, I'm thinking, right, I wonder if they got the wedding photos. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then, like you said, that they had a kid. Oh, what would that be like? Exactly, Arthur, exactly. Arthur, Arthur, it'd be like an ostrich, wouldn't it? It that's, would sort of like. That's what I was thinking. What do you think it would come out like, the baby? I didn't think what that looked like, I just was thinking, oh, parents evening. <laughs> Do you, you, know I mean? you wouldn't want him coming up to the school, would you? <laughs> so, well, that's so little problem. Johnny, who starts off relatively normal, he's quite good at, you know, he's good at nature, yeah. isn't he? And, uh, and, uh, his mum and dad come into the room and they'd be looking round, wouldn't they? Well, it's always like that thing at school when, mm. like, you find out your, your mate's mum and dad are really old. <laughs> Right, have you sure. ever seen that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when you go, have you, you know, your grand and granddad bought you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, mum and dad. Yeah. And you go, oh. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> what was that we were talking about? He calls him mum. What was that? I was sorry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and no, like, that's always strange. <laughs> I just, if you had a, if you had, you know, if you had Godzilla and King Kong as your parents, yeah. uh, and, and it was- And they're like always saying, fighting. They're always fighting, and, and, you know, like you say, if you're in a school play or something, you, you wouldn't tell them, would you? You wouldn't no. want him coming up with the video he camera. He didn't tell his parents what? he was in the- when we were, Well, exactly. You, you did Little Donkey and you didn't tell your dad, did you? And he yeah. came along and videoed it. Yeah. Was kept that- Kept it quiet, kept it quiet, don't want him to know anything. But you didn't- what was it you was meant to be playing? You had a little drum, didn't you? 
Yeah, I was doing, uh, I had a little drum. I think I was meant to be playing We Three Kings. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> we started doing Little Donkey and I thought I can add a touch to this. Sure, <laughs> you improvised. Started playing along with it. It was like the first it. remix, yeah. wasn't it? It went, went down well. But yeah, that's, that's all I was thinking with, uh, the Freak of the Week this week. That's, that's what I'm saying about Freak of the Week, it's to get people thinking, right? <laughs> thinking how lucky they are. That, you know, they, they don't have to... Comb their face. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? What do you mean, Freak of the Week is to let people know how lucky they are? Just... What about the little freak you're talking about? What are they thinking? They're going, oh, he's talking about me. I'm a little airy lizard man. On a stick. Pop in. Give us a call. <laughs> I'd like, you know... That's, that's what I'd like to do on a TV programme. That's what I want to do. I want to go and, like, meet these people and say, right, let's just go shopping, let's... You know, we'll film what your normal day's like. Yeah. Let's pop out. Gross. Nip into Sainsbury's or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, buy a comb. Po pura, park whatever. right up close to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is, is you just want to get a little message out there, which is that there's always someone worse off than you. Well, there's proof of that in this room. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I just think it's a shambles. I've asked for Cheeky Freak of the Week, and it appears that Carl's not ready. He's not prepared. No, I can sort of remember it. It's just that I like to have all the information. Contempt, for the listener. But you just had about, oh, you just had a whole bunch of adverts and placebo and all this We're all chatting, we're having a chat and that. Right, do you want to sort yourself out in the future? Yeah, um, someone emailed, this is what we were chatting about, someone emailed in about they watched the 200 pound tumour thing and, uh, um, when it was removed, um, it was carried away in a wheelbarrow, right? Carl said, what, even when she had it removed, she still carried it round in a <laughs> wheelbarrow. <laughs> and he went, I thought it's sort of like she'd got become attached to it. <laughs> you, I mean, you are, you definitely are my favourite thing in the world. It's great. Look at the way he's looking back. But I think they're all the same. The people, I mean, I have had more emails about people saying I watched the 200 pound tumour. And I shaved me ass. Than anything else. Than anything else. When we ask questions we come about up science, with science we, just, we talk, yeah, yeah. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. High science. concept, we talk about political issues. One person emailed in, they said, I tuned into the 200 pound tumour documentary. It looked disgusting, I couldn't watch for long. What were you expecting? Yeah. That it might sing and dance? <laughs> Do a little show for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, these, so what's these the are really your listeners, Carl. Now I think we've, you know what I mean. You, you sort of, you find your niche. You attract your. Uh, I think me and Steve are pretty much just here. I they, think the people that we had in the early days, Rick, they've long since abandoned us. They jump ship. They've early, got, they've got jobs. Yeah. they've got jobs. They're out now. They've, they've been released. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting yeah. their life back together. Um, Carl, Come so on what's in, Carl. the situation with Cheeky Freak? I've, I've, I've got like a couple of bits. Like I say, I haven't got the in-depth stuff that I normally- Oh no, because usually it's, uh, you know, it's Heavily pretty scientific. Research. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, do the jingle. We've got to move, we'll come up with a new one, haven't we? The Freak! Say chic. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Right, well, uh, couple of, couple of bits. I don't know which one to use as the main feature for this week. <laughs> um, it's that good, is it? Well, there's been another one born. Uh, what? Little kid. New one. Uh, four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Insult. <laughs> it's just a guy who wears glasses. Come on. Four eyes. Uh, four eyes. Uh, two noses. Two mouths. That's weird. Isn't it? This bloke. Did he also have two heads, two bodies? Sort of born, sort of slightly separately. He wasn't uh, stood next to a mirror. No, no. It's weird that, isn't it? That's all you've got. Isn't I it? love that. That's weird. That imagine if the doctor said that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Mrs. Um, Parks, um, kid's got four eyes and two noses. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> Any clues? <laughs> Any clues? So well, that's that's, that's it. it. That's, so that's it. That's all the information. Well, I'll tell you got. what. That, no, no, that again, should be the main one. Okay, no, but, I'll answer but, but like what? I say, this. What's the idea of this feature? What do I say all the time? Don't know. I always say, think about it. Think about what that would be like. <laughs> okay. What? Giving birth to him? It, no, no, no. Uh, Be being, uh, I think it's a girl. <laughs> being like her. Two mouths. Four eyes. What would that be like? Mad, innit? I don't know, I don't know what this feature is. I don't know what do I? Is there another one? Is that, you said that I mean, two? I hope everyone took the opportunity <laughs> there during that silence to just think about what it would be like. I know I was. <laughs> could she, could she talk with a mouthful? What? Is that allowed? Because she's got two mouths. Yeah. Yeah. Would that be alright in her house? She'd be eating Yeah, one she could talk with one mouth and eat with the other, right, I well, suppose. listen, the main one, right, you've thought about that, that's good. The main yeah. cheeky freak of the week, I haven't got all the details. Smallest person ever. <laughs> right. 
What? How big would you say that is? Um, Carl is now sort of like holding his hands up like a fisherman, uh, long ways. That's about one foot. Right. Smallest, smallest man in the world. I, I printed the thing off and I can't find it. There's a little picture of him. Right. Uh, the odd thing was- Cause why- why have you asked me how- did it say or was it a picture of him? I didn't really read it. Of course you oh, didn't. Oh, for- Of course you didn't. Jesus. I just saw it and thought, oh, that's- What, that, you- that, it's that, right, that, 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 assumed it was natural size. No, it was that big. But what do you mean it was that big? Little fella, like that. But why are you doing that? What, what? It was a page with a little fella. How do you know that was natural size? No, it was, because it said it's the world's smallest man. And the funny thing is, I, I remember- I've read the first line, I always read the first line, it said world's well smallest done. man. Well done, well done. The weird thing is, it got an head like a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> the shape of it, apparently. I don't know if that's got anything to do with his shape and uh, size. Oh, but, uh, God. That- that big. His name's Mr. Watts. And, uh, the- the annoying thing is, what got me is, if you're that big, yeah. right, don't have your picture taken next to a fruit bowl. <laughs> Why was he having his photo taken next to a fruit bowl? Dunno. <laughs> Whoever the photographer was, obviously having a bit of a laugh. Yeah. At his expense. Cause you- you would just stand in the middle of nowhere, you'd look normal and that, but he was- he was stood there, <laughs> just leaning on an apple. <laughs> <laughs> leaning on an apple? <laughs> what is this in what world do you have? No, this- this was- this was on- on the internet. <laughs> leaning on an leaning apple? Leaning on an apple? <laughs> was it Tom Fun? <laughs> what is this? Are you sure it wasn't that? Some sort of sci-fi show they're advertising. No, no, it was, it was, uh... <laughs> leaning on it! Can you, uh, sorry, can you just lean on the apple? <laughs> just lean on the apple, then. Do you me a favour, will you stand next to my chihuahua? <laughs> You're not taking the piss, are you? No, not at all, no. Could you, would you mind leaning on this matchbox? <laughs> yeah. Leaning on an apple. And that's what, so, so he just said he's the world's smallest man, leaning on an apple. Smallest man. Said about his head being like a light bulb, I don't know what, what that meant. And, uh, and I just thought, right, that- that'll do. That's that sort of cheeky figure of the week done. I think that was on, like, Monday. Right? I found that, I thought that's done. Printed it off, forgot to get it off the photocopier. Someone's nicked it. Play record. That you got to- You know, it's just- uh, oh, Steve. No, can I just say no, no point. Point. please, no if point. I say, let's have Cheeky Freak of the Week, and you haven't done your research, you haven't got the information, just tell us you can't do it. But don't lead us on. Don't say this not on radio, hold your hand up to me and go, how tall is that? It's nothing, That's this is radio. nothing. It's nothing. Um, I, I think it was that big because he was leaning on an apple. It's not enough information. But, uh, imagine Trevor McDonald coming on, going, some news, some stuff, uh, how big's that? How big do you think that is? Yeah. Because there was a fella, yeah, coming up after t Chris, t well, Chris Tarrant. It, it, Play record. Carl, if you were president, would you sort of make a compulsory to maybe have a little, little monkey? Everyone has a little monkey of their own. Little chimps out and out, old age pensioners. It's not a bad little, uh, it's funny, you know, because there was, um, <laughs> a, s a story the other day, uh, when I was looking for monkey news. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. there's a story about a couple who, who couldn't have any kids, right? There's something wrong with them, but they really wanted a kid. And they got some, uh, dodgy email address where they could buy a baby online, oh, right? Yeah. It was someone who would have a kid and you could buy it for three grand or something, right? Yeah. So anyway, they got one, they got picked and they're like, brilliant, there's the money. Got the baby and everything, they were loving it. Um, you know, playing with it and stuff. As he got older, feeding it. <laughs> he got area. <laughs> oh shut the f oh car! Turned out they've been sold a chimp. <laughs> you you maniac! You stupid mank twat! How Don't on earth? talk shit. That is as if. <laughs> Uh, uh, what? They didn't know it. Oh, don't talk! Oh. Are you are you mental? <laughs> you I love the fact stupid. that that didn't make it into monkey news. I know. Yeah. Uh, they- well, that's a bit sad though, we don't like to bring- They bring bought- the feature down. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway. how long was this into- uh, It got hairy. They're born hairy! <laughs> no, they're, they're not born like humans then develop hair! Cause they go, hold on, we better chi we better get the chimp stuff kicking in now, cause we're in the jungle! School photograph, do I like, hang on a minute. <laughs> it looks a bit weird. <laughs> oh, you are just the- mad, the, the rubbish. Mad, innit? it? Mad, innit? it? <laughs> mad, innit? it? Imagine, oh God! But Just anyway. imagine if he was in charge. We did put him in charge of the country. Just, it's terrifying. Wouldn't it be amazing? Let him run the country. Just for a week. Or, or the mayor. What would you do if you were the uh, the president or the I Lord Mayor of London or the prime, prime Minister Carl? I, I don't wouldn't know. do it. Like he's going to be off on it. It's a hypothetical question, Carl. No, but Su Suzanne was uh, right, me, me missus. If you're a new listener, you keep her. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, help her. 
She was she was watching the news trying to follow some heavy stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, The weather? What? You know what I, mean? <laughs> I, I just was like bored and I was reading about that mouse that had an ear on its back and stuff like that. <laughs> So she said, "Will you take notice of this? She'll be, you know, you know what Ricky and Steve are like. They, you know, they try to teach you stuff, and you don't even want to learn. Mm. <laughs> so to try and get me interested in it, yeah. she was like saying, what would you do if you're president and stuff? Yeah, and I, I can't be doing with any of it. That's what did you come up with? You must what have would you been, slogan what, what would you? What did you come up with? Did you come up with anything? I had a little um, the design of it. Right, I yeah. said I'd, 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 I'd have like red and blue, <laughs> sort of. Do you know what I mean? Both." Sort of major sides into one. Yeah, yeah. Well, well that's broken the back of it. That's that's a pretty good manifesto so far. Uh, um, anything else? What's on the second page? I had like uh, KP looks after me. <laughs> that would be the badges, would it? Yeah, that's um, good. I'm a KP nut. Yeah. <laughs> um, KP looks after me. Yeah, brilliant. That's about as far as I went with it. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? What about you know policies, transport, um, crime? Uh, uh, you know, just just law and order. Um, yeah. How would you? What would you do? How would you deal with crime? What would your initial approach be? Would you introduce guns? Should police carry guns? Nah. No. Yeah. Um, would I have to worry about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no. Good minister? point. Good point. No. What um, I'm saying is, though, I mean, Tony Blair isn't sorting everything out, is he? No, but he has a say in most things. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. Then what? What are the problems at the moment? I need sorting out. Well, generally, how would you, how would, what's the best way to combat? Would you, uh, would you bolster up the prison system? Would you, uh, introduce more community service? Would, would, you, would you make, would you make, would, would you go harsher for say, for say, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, drugs. Would you go harsher or, or less harsh? There's, there's pros and cons of both, isn't it? Because, of course, you, ca you can't see to condone it, but some people, you know, you don't want to go through the court system and cost taxpayers thousands of pounds of money for someone, I don't know, the difference between smoking a spliff and dealing crack. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You have to all these things, have, to, have I lost you? Yeah, I'd, I'd just think about it for a bit, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> You'd think about it for a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Probably ask Suzanne. <laughs> 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 this is amazing. Get her help on it. Yeah. Can now, what about the foreign situation? Would you uh, would you have supported Bush in his war on, against, on terrorism? Um. You're well, aware of this war that we had recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. I mean, if I was new, though, couldn't I just say, "Look, new slate"? Do you know what I mean? Let's start again. Yeah. Right. Of course you can. I'm in charge now. Let's you know. Let's see if we can sort this out. What would you do then? And see what happens. <laughs> just leave Brilliant. It. Just leave Suck it. it and see. Brilliant. Brilliant. This, yeah, this is excellent. Now so this is uh, this is not really your jurisdiction. This is not really your area. But you, I imagine you'd have some powerful friends. You might on, have a say in it. Go on. Yeah. Would you? Uh, what would you do about uh, single sex marriages? Same sex marriages. See, this you... has got ca Cameron. I thought Cameron had blown it on Big Brother because they said. Um, you know, what do you think about, um, uh, gay fellas getting married? And he went, oh, no, in the Bible it says, you know, a man and a woman. And I thought, oh, he's put off a lot of, yeah. I don't mean think many Christians tune into Big Brother, but we know the gays love it. Yeah. They love Big Brother, don't they, the gays? Yeah, so interesting. But, uh, so, uh, what, would you know, you, what would your take be on that, same-sex marriages? Um, and then what, having a kid? Well, just let's start off with, you well, know. that's all right, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just let them get on with it. It's sure. not affecting anyone else. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Right. But it starts getting tricky. Right. When you get a kid. Okay. Go on. Why? Well, it's it's just tricky, innit? Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, you could be right. I'm not giving any. I mean, you know, uh, we're not. There's no right or wrong it's answer. It's all right if you were in like if you lived in the jungle, right, with no one else. Yeah. Right. And you just had these two fellas, right. Yeah. Looking after you. But because you got no one else looking in on that, saying, "Oh, you're a bit weird, aren't you?" Do you know what I mean? But right. as soon as you come so to- So what, what, why have the, they got married? The, do you think the gay people turned to a bloke because they couldn't get a woman? Um, If it, if you live- if, if there's two fellas go away and they're in the jungle, they go, we're definitely not gonna find a woman here, we might as well bum. That's not how homosexuality starts. People don't- It makes don't, you wonder No, if... no, it does make you wonder. Gays don't go, well I'll tell you what, I haven't seen a woman I fancy yet, I'll try a bit of knob. <laughs> no, 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 but what I'm saying is, right? If you're brought up in like a little jungle, right? Yeah. Uh, you How are you it? brought up? Someone just puts you there. Right? <laughs> I don't know what. I don't I know what this is Steve, I can't be bothered Go running on, the country. Go on, mate. I'm listening. I'm fascinated. <laughs> I can't be bothered running the country. Like I'm too much trouble for you. KP 
takes care of me. Right, yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, what okay. I'm saying is, right, if you're brought up in a jungle, yeah. Right. Right. Bro, what own. do you mean brought up? Just let him finish. What does he mean brought, brought up though? Like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to tell me what you mean by brought up. Just Wolves? <laughs> chimps? What? Right, well there's a good example of what I'm saying to you. Right. Right, what I'm saying is, there's a fella, right, he's brought up in the jungle. <laughs> Shut up, just let him finish. Let him finish! There's no women about, he doesn't know about women, he doesn't understand what women are. Right. Right? But another fella walks in, in the scene. Yeah. And he gets pally with him. <laughs> what does he talk about? Then they've both got needs. <laughs> this scenario <laughs> is ridiculous. What? How has he lived? Or, or do you know what's his reference I points? I can't be bothered with this. Honestly, Saturday should have been, you know, day off and that, not worrying <laughs> really about <laughs> problems. So, uh, there we go. Carl as president. He's still, he's still confused, aren't you, Carl? Just a little bit. Just a little bit sort of amazed. Yeah. By the body. Yeah. You're just in awe the, of it, aren't you? Just the way- I'm amazed how two people can buy a baby on the internet for £3,000 and not realise it's a chimp till it goes to school. No, 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 but seriously, what we were, you know, talking about there during Elbow and Fallen Angel, <laughs> uh, we were talking about that I think- Yeah. If you're locked up, well not locked up in a room, you've got a normal life except there's no women in it. Yeah. Right. But how would that happen? What would this point of reference be? How'd you bring right, up a person just and you totally- Go on. How can infinite monkeys and a typewriter? Right, again, I've told you before, right, that is not- you don't actually have to test that model. It's- it's, um, basically a model for the- th that explains the nature of infinity. Okay? Yeah, yeah, but... I've told you before, it- mm. it works because of the definition of infinity. There's no- there's nowhere in the world you'll ever be able to get an infinite amount of monkeys and typewriters to com- But anyway, all I'm saying yeah. is, I think if- if you don't know about women, would you crave for a woman, even well, though you, you don't you, know her you, 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 When you hit sort of puberty, your hormones will kick in and you'd- you'd start getting urges. But for what? If you don't know about it? You don't have to know about it. You don't- when- if you grew up and you started feeling hunger, you wouldn't go, I wonder what that is. You'd go, get me a sandwich, I'm starving. It's different though, it's different. But I'm not, um, but, but we're not saying it's, uh, it's all hardwired or people are, can't change their, their natural state. We do it all the time, we fight nature all the time with conditioning. That is weird, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well that's that I, one, I'll tick that, it's weird, isn't it? No, I'll the body is, there was something, yeah. did, you, did you read that thing the other week about, um... Man with two penises? <laughs> no, 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 we don't need that, we don't need uh, that. Uh, lawyer who got in office realised he was actually an orangutan <laughs> and they just shaved him, put a suit on him, from Hugo Boss, <laughs> and the funny thing is, he won the case and the judge said, well, <laughs> don't send him back to the jungle, let him set off on his own, bodge it, wibble and podge. <laughs> <laughs> You'd make the best judge in the world. No, there's a fella. Here's a banana. I remember, um, and I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and I, I, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, Cigars uh, and dildos. And one day, right. Same thing. Uh, that me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right, well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway, my mum sees me, she, she don't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round. What have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh, God, I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like, what? So oh, not, not big stuff, I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I'll just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Works out at 7.2 per day. So, um... How so, many calculators do you need? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it was when that phase... You failed maths, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um... <laughs> so, anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed to like... Computers will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confess to There's magic in the back <laughs> yeah. of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confess to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. She's really oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. Bloody <laughs> that's great.
And it's a similar oh. sort of thing to yours. And did you- And um, he went, hold on, I'm let's just work out the interest on that. A <laughs> bank <laughs> uh, uh, 10%, she'll owe you £4.40. Yeah. Oh, did, dear. So, so, your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and, uh, I, did, 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 uh, did she mention she that went, you I just, I just stuff with your, with that other- Because yeah, what I'm saying is, presumably you got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 right, you know. no. She went, no worries, I'll just go and get my purse, it's on the dressing table. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Carl! Do you want a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> what other things you used to give away at your disco then that you'd find on the dressing table? You used to go into your parents' room and go, "What can I give away it was, tonight?" It was stuff like a c cigars, and yeah. the hard light cigars. Yeah. Uh, I had a pair of tights. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Unopened. You know, you get them in like a long. Who did you give that to? Just whoever did the prize. It was stuff like you know, we we did like a little raffle. <laughs> Who's going joyriding this week? Pretty Polly, sheer. Exactly. Yeah, who's yeah. doing a bank job this exactly. week? Exactly, that's what it was used for, yeah. Just little bits of, you know, unopened makeup, just stuff like that. And did right. their parents not notice? No, nah, because it's stuff that you're not that bothered about. And if a telly went missing, they'd notice it. <laughs> they would, wouldn't they? They'd be staring at a wall for three days. <laughs> but a pair of tights and a cigar and that, yeah. get away with it. Yeah. But it's it's funny as well, because like, you, had, you had two names, I just like remembered. I started <laughs> off as, um... Dazzling Darren's disco, just because the first lights I could afford belonged to someone who had their name put in lights. Right. So I went along with that <laughs> you had name to for pretend a bit. you were called Darren. That's lovely. <laughs> That's crazy. Is it worth it? <laughs> Brilliant. And then it went on to Pilkins making music. Yeah. 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 That's great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah. yeah we've been on. waiting for what, what are you going to play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, brilliant. Up. You and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Yeah. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch them in the actual act of violence, which is what they've got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So, and they, they don't know who to turn to, really. It's rather like when a little old lady went and got the A-team, you know. The it's a, it's show. a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird, because now, now it has got out of hand. Do you know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, the summers were nicer as well, weren't they? Well, <laughs> it did seem that way, didn't it? Yeah. Right, and- Police are getting short or anything. But you that. yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tear away. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I mean, here, the but- the thing is, I was, I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge. And sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed himself <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door, and I thought, <laughs> oh god, this is a fellow who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how I could throw it. <laughs> of course you were. It came... Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down. Chucking a, a stone in the air, love it! <laughs> see how far I it's throw. brilliant. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you invent it. that game? Right. Did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. He gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> yeah. no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun, funny angle, and it ate, of course it did. It ate the back of this uh, car, and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it. Yeah. In case yeah. you got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked out the door. <laughs> Genius! It's a brilliant to plan. Sleep. It's a brilliant plan. Went to sleep. I couldn't be guilty, I'm asleep. So, so <laughs> I love the idea. So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of, you could, you could see in from the door, right? So this family, who, uh, <laughs> have saw me do it, let, saw me asleep on the settee and my mum said, go and get the door, and I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. And went to the door, like, rubbing my eyes, and, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And... I didn't see me dad, I went out, it was when he was working sort of evenings, so I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said, all he, he said. looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid, now, the thing Carl. Right. He, he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like, I knew I did wrong. Uh, 
and I was scared that my dad was gonna belt me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll be more careful next but time. But that was that. clearly good parenting on the part of your father, because these young tykes, that, clearly they don't have the, uh, what the, do you the, do? the father's support. I don't even know, I, I don't know if, if I you were living in that street, very quickly, what would you do? What, what, would, what would your approach be? If you were living in his street. What if, the, what if they'd come over and they, they just vandalised all your pebbles, right, yeah. that you'd been saving over the years and just threw your gravel away? What would yeah. you do if they just- I'd probably clout one of them. So you'd use violence? I think it's the only way sometimes. Sometimes it's the only way. I don't mean, you know, really bad, but I'd, I'd show them that I'm not putting up with this. Right. And th then the problem is you've got their family coming round and they're probably quite- Go to sleep. Yeah. If you hit a kid and the dad comes down, just go to yeah. sleep. Yeah. Just <laughs> so, yeah, Equally, um, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, yeah. a bank job yeah. or a murder- Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. It won't work. Bit of David Bowie. Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon, then. Educate me. Right, so, um... I've learnt that you can, you know, fiddle around with your brain when awake. That's brilliant. I've never been a fan of Doctors, though, so this was a good one for me to, yeah. to look up, cos... Yeah. Did I tell you the time when, uh, <laughs> the Doctor said uh, I was gonna die? All right, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, must have been about fifteen, right? And uh, at lunchtime there was this. We used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have um, like a like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at, and uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So. Um, she used to like bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because, you know, they, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate and eat a load. Brilliant. Scavenging, yep. eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really, it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays, but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean, it used to be a chocker. Uh, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, have a cake. <laughs> the headmaster called <laughs> yeah. fighting the kids off. Right, so I'd have, uh, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon, really, right? So you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven uh, jam donuts, a few Congress tarts. Uh, <laughs> Oh. Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. <laughs> uh, uh, and if anyone maybe... can get a Congress tart, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd, once yeah. or twice a week, you'd have a load of cake. In your life, yeah. yeah a so normal anyway. day in your life. Uh, were, were the frog boys there with the, with the webbed hands and the big heads? So, and the horse in the set, uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Right. Yeah. I was like in agony, could yeah. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh. <laughs> You could hardly stagger to the free cakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is, I can't walk. She gets the doctor around, uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My mum was panicking. Sure. He went, my dad came in from work, she said, oh, something's really bad with Carl, I think it's serious, it's, you know, the doctor said he ain't got long left. So he said, what, he said that and just left? So she said, yeah. He said, oh, I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, <laughs> Carl, I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. She yeah, didn't go into detail. Well, no, no, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, no, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? I had about six cream grounds. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea of your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, well, yeah. I'm not gonna probe him, he's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in, 
Hi, honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's gonna die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. But anyway, that's why, uh, these sort of things fascinate me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? If Tony Blair came to you and he went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've tried spin. I've tried being tough. I've tried backing down. I've tried getting other countries involved. They don't want to know. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, you don't know. Tricky one. I don't it's get, tricky. I don't it is a tricky involved. one. Yeah. I don't worry about it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in the bath, put a mattress on the on top of you. That's it. Sorry, wh why are you doing <laughs> that? Ooh, slow down. Why are you doing that? That's what they say you do, isn't it? If it kicks off. If what uh, kicks off? If, if there's if there's a war and that, you you get in the bath, put a mattress on top. Right. Did they do that in the Second World War for six years? Was that make, making bunk beds? That's what I read somewhere. Yeah. Get, is the bath full of water? Uh, no. no. No, no, no. No. That'd be daft. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, think that, I think they were enamel baths then, though. I think they'd stop a bit of shrapnel. I think the plastic ones you get nowadays would probably melt on you. And the mattress where your dad has cut it in half, all the foam would come out and the springs would get you in the eye. Oh, talking about me dad. Steve, you'll love this, right? Go on. Um, my dad hates, uh, he hates being ripped off, right? Yes. Well, no, I can relate to that. That's important. Um, hates coming to London now. He always wants me to go and see them rather than come here because he just thinks London is like a big rip off. Mm. Uh, last time he came, he got annoyed because I bought him a scone and a cup of tea for like three of us and it was 14 pounds and he just yeah. was livid. <laughs> and then, uh, we had an argument about that. And then we went to the Millennium Wheel and I said, do you fancy going on this? He said, oh, all right. And then he saw the price. And it was something like 20 quid or something. And he said, 20 quid to go up in the air to look at stuff that's on the ground. So I might as well stay on the ground. Brilliant. Right? Thought, good point. His logic is impeccable. So anyway, this is going on. Anyway, he spoke to me the other day. I said, how are things? Are they all right? And he said, oh, being ripped off. I said, why? He said, he ordered, do you know the place where he got a new bed from? Because he cut the other one of course, off. Of course, yeah. Right? He, uh, he got this bed out of a catalogue. So, uh... So he sorted out a payment on the phone. He said, look, you're ripping me off a bit here on the interest thing, but, um, well, let's do a deal. We'll sort out a new monthly payment. That's different to the, what it says in the catalogue. And he said, yeah, we'll go along with that. Anyway, so he sorted that out. He was happy. The bed arrived. It's a nice bed. He said, that's great. So anyway, uh, he got the bill for it and it was the original price. Oh, I thought it might be the case, yeah. Right. So he called up and said, I'm not happy with this. He said, we, we said a deal and I'm like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, right, don't send me your catalogues anymore. He said, I'm not, I'm not buying anything from you, you're a rip-off merchant. Uh -huh. Right? Um, so anyway, a few, few weeks go by, post comes, only another catalogue oh, in the post. he's livid. Right, so he was well annoyed. Yeah. So he looked on the back and it said on it, this catalogue will always be property of, you know, the company that, that does it. Um, if we, so you can't throw it away. If if we request to have it back, we've got the permission to, to get it back off you, right. right? So he thought, right, well, they're out of order. I told them not to send me one, and they have done, and they're saying I can't chuck it away. So he called them up and said, uh, all right, Mr Pilkington here, bought a bed off you, you conned me and that. <laughs> but, you know, forget that. We've, yeah. we've dealt with that. you sent me a catalogue, I told you not to. It says on the back here that this will always be yours, yeah? So, in a way, you're using my house as a warehouse. I'll be charging you 26 pence or something a day. Brilliant. He said, you already owe me six pounds 28. <laughs> something like that. Genius. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorted it out. So again, you know, it's- it So hang on, but of, are they going along with this? I don't know what happened. He said they sounded annoyed and said they'd get back to him and they haven't, but he said, I'm not bothered. They can take as long as they want because the money just keeps going up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, what sort of profit has he made so far? Well, when I spoke to him in the week, it was like six pound odd. Yeah. That was, I think that was on Tuesday. So, so he's, 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 you know, he's just leaving it. It's like an investment. Yeah. It's like an antique. He's it's forward. just, yeah, yeah. It's just going up every day, so, uh. Well, keep us posted on that. That's yeah, dynamite. I, I, one day we need to speak to your father. Yeah, I think so. So many questions I need think to be do. asked of him. But I might say, and give you a letter to take home. <laughs> yeah. Dear Mr. Pilkington, <laughs> your son Carl. <laughs> New single from uh, Nick Cave, I think. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Can Carl do something to prove you are on live and not recorded? I'm sure that will tax his little bald head to bursting point. Um, what's his name? Jason. How can you prove that we're live on air? Come on, how could you prove that we're live on air?
Happy Christmas Eve, Jason. No, we could have recorded this a week ago. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be Christmas Eve. No, but- <laughs> Happy Shit. Christmas Eve, innit? No, but we didn't no, record Carl, it and pre- think! Think! Alright, it's, uh, it's- it's nearly quarter to twelve. Yeah, but we could have- we could have started with the clock knowing that we were gonna record it as live. We could have done this last all right, Wednesday. Alright, right. Uh, it's Radio 2, it's a nice day out there, sun's out. That's a guess. And, 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 do you think- oh, it is sunny, yeah, it is, it is sunny, but yeah. Generally but, it's but, but, but hold on, wait a minute, we're in London. Someone listening in- in Manchester, it might be raining. It probably is raining. Um, Look, he can't work out how to make sure it's live. Look at him looking up in the sky, look at him! His head is gonna burst. There's a little bit of blood coming from his <laughs> ear. How can we prove we're live? My mum's budgie died last night. <laughs> but <they're- laughs> Don't laugh about burst. it. Don't it's laugh. only your mum that can confirm <laughs> that. I bur- uh, yeah. No one knows whether your uh, the budgie died or not. Was he was he was he pictured holding a copy of today's paper? Uh, what are you talking about, Carl? I can't I can't prove anything then. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. right. Next question. Oh, that's amazing. Oh God. You Sorry. you gave us the uh, devastating news last week that just before Christmas, your mum's budgie died. How was Christmas in your household? Was it? Um, little bit down. Little bit down, you know, with- with any death it's always sad, isn't it, no matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly um, budgie. Well, I mean, how long she had it? I, probably lasted about eight years or something, which is pretty good, isn't it, for a budgie. Right. Yeah, I think so. Um, came unexpected, wasn't ill. Um, <laughs> right. And, uh, what she- what- I spoke to her the other day and I said, you know, how's it going? Cause on Christmas day she was down. Yeah. Been calling her off every day. And I spoke to her the other day and said, you know, how are things? And she said, uh, she said, well, the other bird that's in the cage, she's got uh, some sort of parrot that's in the same cage as it. Right. It's been a bit down. Sure. It's missing its mate. So what she did, she kept a few feathers from the budgie that died, right? right? She got a rock, a couple of uh, sandwich fasteners, <laughs> stuck the feathers on the rock. The other bird's happy now. Wow. Now I know that your mother explains everything. And if you ever die, we just get a tennis ball, stick it on the end of a broom, she'll be happy. Steve? Yes? I think, uh, Carl's gonna put most people to shame. We were talking about generosity earlier. Carl is a nice, generous bloke when it, when it really comes to it. He's paying for Father's Day, he's paying for the cottage that he's going away with his dad. Are you really, Carl? Yeah. Right. Well, there's no way of us proving if that's true or not. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> well, you could be lying. <laughs> But why would I do that? Well, because you want to show off. I didn't do it on air, you mentioned it. <laughs> I don't want people to know how generous I am. <laughs> I just, <laughs> right. just do it, just get on with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like charity yeah. work and that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Do you, do you, do, but I, I'd have thought that you wouldn't have fallen for Father's Day. I'd have thought you'd have known it was like... Well, we don't. I mean, to be honest, it's a bit of a coincidence, because I paid yeah. for it anyway and it's happened to fall on... Right. On Father's Day, mm. right? Don't I mean, buy a card. Not don't, that don't, don't fall for it. It, it. I mean, obviously that and Mother's Day, and a plethora of other things were, I mean, literally invented mm. by card companies to make more money. I know. Uh, yeah. That's that's that's. Uh, I mean, my dad always says, "Don't don't get him a card or anything," because um, he hates it with all these things that I'd like, you know, rip off times really, just ripping people off. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit stingy, that. But- well, no, no, I mean, he's right. Yeah. He's right, it's just, uh, because feathers aren't bothered about getting cards anyway, are they? But the the other thing that he noticed, um, you know, helping out the flower companies, the Princess Diana thing, when she... Oh, f- Sorry. Yeah. No. Jesus. Cry- God. So when, yeah, when... Carl, when... what, what, what do you mean? What no, do you the... mean? That's- that's what he said, he said, oh, I a- nearly swore then because I was- uh, you surprise me all the time. No, no, but just- that is incredible. Sorry, what- I don't understand what you're talking about. All the about. flowers that were sort of sold that day. Right. What, right. for people to leave as a commemoration or Yeah, they, they- they made a- made a mint, didn't they? Who did? Flower companies. Right, so what so are you saying? saying so he's saying- he's just saying, you know, makes you wonder. <laughs> what, whether- About what? Whether it was in the floor or behind the hit. Oh. So it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy by the flower companies. I would love to see you and your dad just sitting at home watching a bit of Channel 5 when apes go mental, right, with your- with your roast dinner. When's that dinner. on? When's that on? <laughs> <laughs> and then talk like, well, yeah, well, you know, you know, kill Diana, don't you? Flower company's son. 
Right, right. Quite right, Dad. You're not wrong. What are you talking about? No, no, I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, it's, it's like you were saying about the cards, <laughs> you know, on Father's Day and that, it's, it's, it's just a bit, it's too much a of a weird. Too much of a coincidence. I'd be interested to see sort of, you know, like the business graph. Sure. <laughs> yeah. On how the companies were doing, then suddenly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <that's what I laughs> mean. yeah. But then, but then by the same token, uh, Elton John, you know, he shot, he had the biggest selling hit record, didn't he, off the back of that? Mm. I mean, so, is he incriminated as well? If you want, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's a conspiracy there, theory you've not kind of analysed terribly closely. You've put it out there and if people maybe who are investigating want to kind of add that into their inquiries, then they can. Yeah. Sure. But, uh, no, that's, 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 that's all I'm saying. I'm just, you know... Because it's always the same thing, isn't it? Like, I was out <laughs> shopping the other day, uh, you know, treating Suzanne like I do. <laughs> you know, I like, I like spending money and that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I was in W. H. Smith's. Yeah. Um, oh, classic. The, what, the, uh, was, it, was it a big birthday? Was <laughs> you, it? You, you, was, you it a was it a thirtieth? No, I was. I was getting a. Uh, was it two biros for the price of one? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting. I was getting a card for my dad for Father's Day anyway because yeah, sure. I'm yeah. seeing him. Yeah. Uh, big Toblerone. Yeah. There was a who, is it, who, who is it who said Father's Day? They love a love a Toblerone. I've never understood Toblerone because the only time I see Toblerone is in airports. Yeah. Right? And mini bars. Mm. <laughs> that yeah. is what the the, the, the small Toblerone is for the mini bar in a hotel, yeah. three star upwards. Mm. And the big Toblerone. Well, it's the big is, Toblerone is a gift, isn't it? It can uh, only be a gift. You wouldn't uh, buy a big Toblerone you, for yourself. Uh, yeah, a duty free gift. The Toblerone. It's next to, um, you know, uh, Chanel number no. five, Toblerone. <laughs> yeah. And a bear. <laughs> but it's, who specifically yeah. would you be buying that Toblerone for? I don't know. Someone who's clearly never had it before and would think it was interesting novelty. It, uh, yeah. Well, this I, gift's interesting. I'll tell you what, though, Toblerone is brilliant. I mean, if, if whoever makes that, if they want to send sort of, you know, some Toblerones, I, I mean, I, I will eat Toblerone. Well, I, yeah. I think very much the same and, uh, about, um, I think very much the same about fags. And of course... Just cigarettes. If you've got any boxes of cigarettes and, uh, that you don't want, you know, <laughs> duty-free or whatever, I, send them. I'd just like to say that, uh, in no way do, do, do I endorse Carl's dad's theory that flower companies will hide the death of Diana. No, uh, well, Maybe I could say that on air as well. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> someone's left one of those little things in here. It's brilliant, it's isn't amazing. it? It's amazing. What are they called, those things? I just, I imagine that just then I was thinking of being in the front row at a Morrissey concert and going, oh, I'll just, can I just play along? <laughs> <laughs> they are brilliant. I uh, don't know what kind of sign that is. I don't know. I, it's only used for when Kenneth Williams <laughs> yeah, exactly. sees someone undressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only time that yeah. is used, that noise. <laughs> exactly. That is brilliant. But it's like it was specially created for the Carry On films. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need, I don't know what it is, but we need something when I walk in and see someone changing. Well, what about this? <laughs> there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Um, I phoned, uh, Carl up in the week, yeah, and, uh, I said, uh, what are you doing? He went, well, even though it's one of my days off, I'm just doing some research on the web. When I found anything, he said, yeah, I'm doing science. And then he said, you can get wigs for dogs in Tokyo. <laughs> That's his scientific fact. Yeah. And I went, what do you mean? You, you, dogs, if they need a wig? I said, if they need a wig, what, dogs going <laughs> bald? And he went, like, this is fine to him, he went, it's a stressful city, Tokyo. <laughs> the world's all right with Carl. He's always got an explanation. <laughs> I've only ever seen him confused once. When, in Edinburgh, he looked out of his window one day and he saw a bloke putting a parking ticket on some rubbish. Yeah. And that genuinely confused him. Yeah. He couldn't work out, could you? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> but, but the and, the and the woman breastfeeding her eight-year-old child. Didn't, you didn't like, did you? No, I don't like that. But, um, the what's the name? Animals with wigs. I kind of thought, after I put the phone down to you, I kind of <laughs> thought about it, thought, yeah, it was a bit daft, that. Are you sure he's not the, the ageing pop group? No. The but, animals? But when you think, have you ever seen, like, a bald pet? No. The, the, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Cos my mum, um, we had a cat, we used to get through loads of cats cos we lived there. <laughs> Oh God! What do you mean? No, we lived on like a main road. Oh yeah. Right? 
So yeah. we used to get through a lot of them. Dad kept there saying, is. you know, stop wasting money, you know, it's, it's not Stop good. wasting money, not wasting yeah. cats! Right, so, um, anyway, we had this cat that was ill all the time. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> it's just bag of noobs, probably. <laughs> yeah, Malingra. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrified. I'm going to witch house. Vroom. Oh God, bloody hell. Vroom. Don't, so, don't let me go to the Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 for some reason, it kept being sick all the time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that is nice. That's definitely nice. So my mum thought, kind of thought, oh, I've had enough of this, and she yeah. shaved it. What? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> whoa! Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I know, I know you're not vets in your family, but what correlation did your mum think there was between you being sick and shaving it? Because it kept being sick and it was a pain to wash because it kept getting So she off. wanted a dry wipe cat. So. <laughs> Why didn't you just varnish it? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's weird, but, it's weird so, so, now, so now he's cold and sick? No, but do you, no, not, I mean, not all of it, she left sort of the back half, but sort of from, from its waist, sort of- I love that! Shave it, cos it's sick on itself! Mm. And, that uh, is it's, it was the weirdest looking thing, I mean, no, normally I like cats, I'm always like giving yours a stroke on the head and that. Yeah. But as soon as she did that, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Can't thing! Can't touch it, and then- So now it's sick, cold, and hated. Yeah. I love- I, I- Carl! It must have, I mean, other, the other cats must have been taking the mick out of it constantly. You're just making things worse. Did it get, I'm hoping that it got run over and was put out of its misery. No, I think it, I think it got alright, that one. Or is that the, yeah, it did get run over. <laughs> <laughs> it did, it. Ah! Oh, God! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, dear. How many cats do you say you've got through? I'd say when I, whilst I was living at home, I mean, it's, it's still on the increase even though I'm not there. <laughs> so, uh, whilst, whilst I was there, probably five. Oh, God! Yeah, oh! Yeah. And were you upset each time, or you just got used to it? It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? Like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. Yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, not being funny. Do you remember the, f the, the, the first... Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, then you get used to how people look, and you don't... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you... I'm gonna burst. Yeah, I'm, you've got to play a record. No, but... Cos I just see Steve's face. No, but I've got used to it. Shut up. You see, sex on films and all that, right? When I was growing up, and I'd go. be watching... No, I'm just, just saying an example of this, really, right? When I was growing up as a kid and I'd be, you know, watching films with my dad, mm. right? He'd really be enjoying a film, yeah. right? And then a sex scene would happen. Right. And he'd go on film. On, uh, or just film. behind you. Yeah. In the yeah. film, a sex scene would happen. <laughs> Your brother up his old tricks again. <laughs> and he'd he'd get up and go and make a cup of tea, right? Right. Thai food that he'd stolen from <laughs> some sort of telephone box. <laughs> and like even recently, he'll he thinks it, it ruins a film. Do you know what I mean? Because there's no need for it to happen, is there? Really? Yes. Why? Sometimes it's it, what it's warranted. If the film itself is yeah, no, some about films it isn't though. Some uh, some no, films not, it of isn't. Of course, some films it's arbitrary. I think I think the films that um, him and his dad watch together on Channel Five. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably not. Is it only on Channel no, Five in your you house? Not, it, yeah, if you're watching, you know, I don't know, a late night Friday night, you know, from 1983. Thriller. Yeah, illegal briefs. <laughs> 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 a beautiful lawyer has to defend a man who may be a killer. She falls in love with him, but does she does she know a real man? <laughs> oh, oh dear. You know, you know what I mean, though. Lest you forget, of course, that I uh, love heat <laughs> with the bloke that is now in. Go on. You know, of course, that I, according to the uh, Internet Movie Database, I um, once appeared in one of those films in the film Killer Image, a Canadian film, I believe, from 1989. According to that computer, uh, it's, it's all wrong. Website, isn't it? It's all wrong. It's, it's all wrong. wrong. Of course, it is. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I was in that, and I played the role of Kirk. Was it a porn thing? Uh, no, no, no. I think it's just an erotic thriller. Oh, right. I suppose you only had a very small part, though, didn't you? Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, do, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you don't need to go that far. Say, like in this Jesus program, right? <laughs> Film. What's it called? The Last Temptation. <laughs> <of Christ. laughs> Talking, you know what? What's his name? Is it Ralph in The Simpsons? Yes. I draw the kitty cat. It's like talking to that. Yeah. No, but right, this temptation thing, right? <laughs> 
you know, the, we, you know, often we don't get that many complaints on the show. We don't get very many complaints, and I think that's either because there's no listeners, or B, it's because most people agree with Carl, and that terrifies I know. me. Or they let him off because it's like you know, you can plead insanity, you can go mental and yeah. kill a few people. They go, oh, he's he's, he's a bit bad. Exactly. No, but was, was it because like they're saying that he was having it away? Or is it because you saw it? it? What got the complaints? The complaint was the very suggestion. The suggestion. That it was it was a blasphemous sex. thing, not the fact that you saw an actor's knob. So what about if they just cut it down a bit and you you like saw the little stable door closing? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the baby Jesus having sex. <laughs> it was the grown man. <laughs> the stable door shut in. No, but oh, you know what the nativity scene. <laughs> Ah, oh, that is brilliant. That yeah, is then, the wise men saying, I can't believe we brought murder, we should have brought condoms. Exactly, no, no, yeah, yeah. There's two for one offering, Boots. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what we were thinking. Oh, no, it, 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 it's just, it's always awful. Awesome, should we apologise now to the Christian, Christian church as well? Yeah. So Sorry, we, the little Chinese fellas, uh, little Welsh fellas, and the little Christian fellas. Well, we haven't yeah. said anything wrong. No. No. It's like, you see, when I, when I was growing <laughs> stable up- Stable door. <laughs> I love the idea that in Carl's world, he was born in a stable, just thought, well, I yeah. love this place. Yeah. I'm just gonna stay here the rest of my days. <laughs> this is good here. Oh, brilliant. But, but when I was watching telly with my mum and dad, I mean, it still happens now, right? My dad will sort of go, oh, ruined. Good film ruined. Yeah. Right, if, if some sex scene happens. But, why but what are we talking it? about sex scene? Are we talking about kissing or are we talking about, um, uh, penetration and looking at the camera? Going, just, just, are you enjoying this, Pilkingtons? Just, what are we talking about? What is sort of extreme levels are we talking about? Right, last time I was down there, right? Yeah. Um, what was it? Uh, meet, meet Joe, meet Joe Black. Meet Joe Black. Meet, meet, meet Joe Black is a terrible yeah. film. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> uh, there was, it's good film, and then, you know it's gonna happen, cause like the music comes in, Brad yeah. Pitt's keeping quiet, a woman's eyeing, eyeing him up. Sure. So <laughs> imagine- <laughs> Ah! My mum's- my mum's worked it out already and she's going, uh, anything on the other side, love? She knows, she, she knows. She knows it's, you know, something's, uh... uh well, and so you could be enjoying a film and you can be an hour and ten in, and then some spidey senses of one of them can go, should we turn it over and the other one goes, well, yeah, right. Are you sure it's not them protecting you? from scenes of sex, so that they're, what they're thinking is, what if Carl gets the idea to have sex? Yeah. That could lead to procreation, we don't want any more like him. We've yeah. got to, we've got to end the line here. You sure it's not the doctor keep calling out going, you are keeping away from <laughs> yeah, exactly. women, aren't you? He must never find are out Are you sure they're done. not embarrassed because they're watching yeah. a sex scene with their son? It, it happens all, every time, right? There's two things that my mum does, right? It's that, if there's sex scene on the telly, she'll go, mm. uh, you know, anything on the other side, love? Uh, and the other thing she always says, if ever there's anything on the telly with Elvis in it, yeah, she goes, oh, I like him, right, and we all know, we sat there, we know what she's gonna say next. Yeah. So you don't even bother saying why, right, and she goes, uh, he likes fat, ugly people. He what? He likes fat, ugly people. He didn't always go for, like, the good-looking fans in the crowd. What Elvis did? Yeah. Right. That was always the thing, and she- I'm like, sorry, no, hold on, I- I don't know what we're doing now with our lives, Steve. Right, oh, wait, wait a minute, right. So, your mum says two things. Right? She either says- Is what, there anything else on the other side? Say, or, I like Elvis, there's a pause because you know what she's gonna say next, she says, he liked fat ugly people. How often does this occur? Well, th because they've got like, you know, Sky, there's a lot of those channels on, they like the music channels, so Elvis always comes on, there's either an Elvis film, there's like, you know, a classic hit by him on And she'll go, I like Elvis, he likes fat ugly people. And what do you mean he likes fat ugly people? Is she a fat ugly person? Because there's that special Vegas show, isn't there, where he's dancing about, right? Mm. And he's got loads of scarves around his neck. Towels. Yeah. And like, he always hands them down to the fat ugly ones. Right. And I always say it's because they're the fat, you know, they've got a sweaty face because they, they can't, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know how we've gone to this what, is, what sort of world are you going when you're watching this <laughs> And what do you mean fat ugly ones? You mean they're in the front they're sweating a lot cause they're uh, a bit yeah, chubby. Yeah, so she thinks, you know, it's giving them a towel because but it's he's really going, wipe your face, you're putting me off, you yeah. fat cow. Stop sweating near me. There's another one. What? So, hairy Chinese kids. Yeah. Jesus. We haven't slagged off hairy Chinese kids, we, we, we slagged off Chinese- we didn't slag anyone off, we just said they really haven't got a town as such and they wear shoes. What do we say? Yeah, little wooden shoes. And what the way- I just don't know how we got onto Elvis and big fat ugly women. I don't know where we- I don't know how we sidestepped from see, the last temptation of Christ. Did you see that fat, um, girls and feeders Go program? Go on a minute. Eh? 
What's on Patty first? Oh, brilliant. It's a great song. Breakdown. How many Tom other Patty. radio shows have talked about Last Temptation of Christ, China to Home, yeah. Fat Ugly Women, yeah. in 60 Minutes? Exactly. Incredible. <laughs> Sony Award winning.